Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to another FFA tournament. So it should be quite a bit of fun today, man. Very hyped for this. I have an incredibly strong pod. We have myself, Patty, Ravity, and Sai. So four very good players. So uh, yeah, it's go time, man. So the initial pods are going to be four player pods. We have eight four player pods, which is awesome. So we managed to get 30, uh, 30 plus signups today. And uh, the winner of each of those is going to be going to play in a grand final. So for example, if I win this pod or if you're Ravity, whoever wins it, Sai, Patty. Uh, they'll go on to play in the grand final pod, which is going to be for all the marbles. So it was kind of the best way to get eight pods in total. We could have done, you know, four smaller pods and just kind of worked it out that way. But it's kind of hard to work out like top two. So um, four player FFAs are very different. It's a very different meta, but even still, it should be fun. So uh, everyone ready? Everyone ready. I think we're going to go with the Byzantines. Um, Part of me wants to play English because that's my like best defensive sieve and who I'm safest on. Wonders aren't as common in this in this one, and Byzantines are yes. pretty good all around. Yeah, they're a solid sieve that can get good units um, in perpetuity. So um, somebody took purple from me. I'm I'm betrayed. So we're gonna have to go orange. Orange Byzantines. It's not quite the same. Let's get it started, man. Really wanted to play, but work. Yeah, the next one will be on the weekend. I just have some other stuff going on this weekend, so uh, that's why it was during the week. So. But yeah, in the future, we will do these on the weekend. Yes, yes. All right, let's get it. Yeah, England's really good. Your Avity's on team one. Wait, what? Oh my god, your Avity, dude, of course. Oh god. I think I think he's going to be... <laughs> Hopefully, it's not like all of us against him. Yeah, sometimes it's a little bit weird. He, he forgot to switch off the team thing, so... Play a Basset? Dude, I will never play a Basset while there's a Japanese player in the game. There's no way. They're going to just like two-shot your Hall of Wisdom, right? It's going to be bad. Anyways, yeah, we should be fine here. Looks like it's okay. So what's cool about this is everybody should get a little like corner spot for themselves, which is nice. Uh, let's go ahead and get that going. Go grab some sheep. Call it a day, man. Look at that. Nice little run there, right? We're doing all right. But <laughs> he's repping team one. Yeah, it scared me a little bit there as well. Byzantines, I haven't been, I've kind of been switching off them a little bit in 1v1. Um, in 1v1, I've been playing a lot of Roos. I've been playing a ton of... Um, it's like here. Okay, so that looks good. And then after this, we can go up here and set this up. Uh, I'm friends with anybody who's friendly with me. So this is this is like where I need to politic. Um, I need to try and be friends with Sai. Because uh, I don't want the Lord of Ozutsu to come into my base and just absolutely steamroll me, right? Yeah, that's a little bit frightening. It is a smaller map, too. So the resources are going to be scary very quickly, and everybody's going to be fighting. Uh, good friends. <laughs> All right, so we're laying down the foundation of our uh, of our of our business here. We've gotten pretty good sheep so far. Uh, your avity is pretty good. He is. But, you know, I feel confident that I can hold pretty much anyone for a while. It depends on the timing, of course. If they hit me while I'm building a second TC or something, that's not going to be the case. Um, okay, we have a nice little woodland corner here, which I'm liking so far. Let's get another one on gold. And um, I'm thinking of a two TC build. Done. Let's do a base building, um, a base building <laughs> simulator. Oh my God, that's pretty funny. Yeah, the Palantine School is really good. That's my favorite landmark. The foreign engineering is pretty good also, you know, but um, like a Mangonel is fine. Nesta bees are good and all, but like I'd rather send my olive oil on my like troops on like the Streltsy or whatever else I decide to go for. So, all right, so we're going to move this way. And uh, so far, so good. We're going to go for the Grand Winery right here. I believe this is like a choke point here. So let's go see who's around us. We need to watch out for aggression coming in. Yeah, man, your Avity is going to be coming in like a wrecking ball for sure with that Chinese. Uh, trading on this map is going to be trickier. It's a bit of a smaller one, so. Okay, so we just need one more turn in here. Get a couple of you guys to do this. Come over here and just get ready to party. Oh, wow, okay. So there's water on this map. JG's. Okay, that's interesting. So let's go ahead and set you up like so. Water in north. Water. I, I have to sound the horn and hopefully it doesn't like aggro onto me, right? That's the that's the, the game plan here. I don't fish, no threat here. <laughs> the non-water alliance is starting. <laughs> All of us parched and famished people are gonna gather together. Okay, so there's water in the north as well. Okay. Gotta put some respect on that. Let's see if anybody's even up here. It's a great spot by the way, geez. Uh, do we see any water? I don't really care about relics as much with uh, Byzantines. 
Yeah, I don't care too much about them. Uh, we got Sun, we got this being built. We're gonna go for our second TC here because I think two TC is... Okay, so we see Sai, he's going for a two TC build, which is, which is fine. Which is all good in the neighborhood. Turn playing attorney. We are, yeah, we are. I'm a little bit tired. I just woke up not too long ago. I was up really late. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I, my favorite time to record is at like 2 a.m., like 1.30. I don't know why. Just everything just kind of clicks then. Okay. So that's unfortunate for Sai because that can be used as a political chip against him. Sai, is, Sai seems to be kind of peaceful, though, like, you know, the way they're kind of talking and whatnot. So I'm kind of like, part of me is like, I'm just going to... Be all peaceful with them for now with old Sai. Uh, yeah, that looks good. All right, let's do that. Let's do that. Come down here. So we know where Sai is. We need to go see where the other players are. We need to see if anybody's doing any like heavy aggression play, right? That's going to be pretty important as well. So let's do that. Okay. Head down this way. Let's go explore like our neighborhood a little bit as well. See what's cracking here. And um, cool. So we get the cistern going. We got the stone going. And then you guys need to switch on to here and here. Do that, and back on a stone. All right, so it's not going to be a fast 2TC build. It's a little bit of a slower one, but yeah, it's flexible. The olive oil is flowing. It is. The Byzant Byzantines are uh, they're rolling. We're gathering olive oil. Um, it's going to be lead to a little bit of a slower TC since we have so many on here. As a matter of fact, we should probably cut some of you, switch to there. Uh, drop off these sheep because they could matter at some point. And go and go. Dude, yeah, I'm so excited for the Dune movie. Gonna go see it tonight. Yeah, we got tickets, man. It's it's, it's party time. Wouldn't it be funny if somebody like Jugnu rushed me or something? Oh my god, that would be that would be pretty hilarious. Okay, so it looks like you didn't end up building the cistern. We could go for like a heavy greed cistern opening. Gravity's reached feudal, so he's probably gonna go Song Dynasty. Like it, it makes sense for China to do that, right? We got nine on uh, freaking stone. I think that's more than enough. We should have our second TC in a moment, and we'll probably set it up just like back in a really conservative position because we're going to be going into farms very quickly. Byzantine farms are, I think, 15 wood cheaper than basic farms, the, the olive orchards, so that's kind of nice. All right. Uh, you know what? We can gather more stone for cisterns, right? So who do we have down here? We have Gravity. Okay, Barbican. So he's clearly going Song Dynasty. Sai is in here. Um, I'm not going to watch your scout, Sai. Yeah, see, I'm going to, like, extend an olive branch to try and show that I'm not always evil. <laughs> and let's grab you guys, do this, and we can set up a, a TC back here. Because there's, oh, there's actually a deer encampment back there. Right. He says gracias, look at that. See? I can be friendly. They said it couldn't be done. But that was that was not true. So this will be an interesting build to try. We're not going to get fast castle or anything. We're going to get a second TC. And um, in the meantime, do we want to wall off? We could wall off here. We actually have a very nice little choke point, potentially. Wow, okay, yeah, we actually have like a natural forest barrier here, which is going to help us uh, from getting karate chopped too quickly. We, of course, do need to move out on the map and grab some resources there. And just, just to prevent some funny business, I'm going to wall like early and early. Sick wonder spot in the west corner, says your avidity. Yes, your avidity already politicking. I, I respect it. I respect it. That's pretty cool. Let's do that, and then you can start on this. And we go from there. All right, so I think just one extra TC is going to be enough. I don't think we need to go too bonkers. Yeah, so let's get you, and then you guys can go here. And uh, cut, cut, all right. We can get on the olive oil, the grain winery. And now we need to start getting on gold again, too, and just age up from here. Uh, let's get our mercenary shack, our first military building, at the dreaded uh, seven-minute mark, classic FFA games. Turn is always a conqueror and monster. Not today. Well, I think in this game it would behoove me to play some politics because China is a pretty easy sieve to politic against. So I need to take advantage. Four-player FFA, I'm telling you, is a super different beast. It's very, very different. So we're going to be in for uh, in for some fun times for sure. So we got the walls being built, so that should make us uh, you know resilient against any early raids. All right, let's do this. And we're we're staying on the cisterns because I want to get a maxed out cistern network as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, it could it could pay off. I don't know. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it in some time. All right, so let's do that, and then do this. Cool. Get on the tree line. Uh, Sai, let me out. Okay. So nobody's fighting yet. I, I suspect your avity is going to be the first one to attack. Maybe we can be kind of peaceful. Now, do we want Strelzi, Keshex Ghulams, and Tower Elephants? I really like the Keshex one. The Tower Elephants are just so cool. So, man, but the other Mercs are so nice for... Um, like, getting late-game handgun units might be the way. Yeah, I think it is. 
And longbows aren't like a bad unit to get early either, right? So we're gonna get the we're gonna go for the full on just wild hogs, triple cistern like early on. Patty living in the Dark Ages. Uh, the reason why he was in Dark Ages so long is because he was um, it's because he was probably on um, yeah, let's get on that deer. He was probably on water, so he's fishing. He probably found some water of his own. We need to go scout. I should probably keep tabs on Uravity, though. Like, the other players, the, the person who'd be likely to attack me here would probably be Uravity, because he's so close, you know? And um, now we need, what, 250 for that? Okay, we should be there relatively soon. So let's jump on gold. Got a lot of food coming along. Let's get on the berry bushes of the gods. And we can start making some longbow mercs, because they're free, basically, right? It's not going to eat up any of our castle age resources. And um, I would like to get some relics if we can. So let's come out here and do this... This, oh my god, I hate when that happens, okay. Collector and win for us boomer gamers. This is a tough lobby, for sure. We have a, a couple really, really, um, you know, savvy, savvy veterans in here of the FFA world. Okay, so we're going to wall that one in, and we do have the fourth one now, so we can go ahead and do this, and uh, I believe they can go over gates, right? Should be able to. We'll double check this in a second. All right, so the cistern's going to go through here, yep, and go here. Almost have enough. No problem. So let's wall some relics. Might as well while we're at it. We have a couple Strail Bora now, so that's great. Um, so one, two, three. And let's get the border defenses. Get ready to age up. And yeah, if we can get our clutches on a couple relics, you know, I'm going to be super happy. So Gravity's moving in with the scout. And we got our cistern coming. He's not going to be able to scout my base. But we could see a palace guard rush coming in. But I'll, I'll be Castle Age here pretty soon. So I'm not terribly concerned about it. Um, but yeah, he could do some sort of palace guard crazy rush. You never know. Alright, so let's get military and military. And then we need to get some archer ranges as well. Cool, so that's going to be our basic military tech. Um, you finish that. So now we can go ahead and get some eco upgrades while we're at it. This is going to be finishing, so let's head over here and uh, guard this one for now. And uh, cool, man. All's good in the neighborhood. Yeah, we're hanging in there. All right, let's uh, get our wood back online. Grab a couple of you guys. Switch on over. So turn in the berries and go here. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we can get our clutches on. If we get like two or three relics, man, that's uh, that's enough to you know call it a call it a good successful day. I would say. Me too. So we're heading that direction. Let's get the Lima tonight upgraded. And uh, cool. So now we're ready to age up. So let's get the Golden Horn Tower which is my favorite landmark for the Byzantines. So we're going to age up there. And yeah, we have a almost level 5 sister network. We just need to connect this one, and then we should be golden. Great. So that's going to be a lot of efficiency in terms of uh, our economy right now. We see a relic up in the north. Um, the only person who's castle age is Uravity, which makes me think he's going to go try and squash somebody here. I think there's going to be some evil Uravity plays. I mean, I could die quickly, which would be totally fine, because then we would just go cast another game and have some fun. Uh, all right, and then for you, let's go up here afterwards, do this, 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 and this. Secure those relics, and ah, uh, ah, oh, you son of a gun. Okay, Uravity grabbing relics. I should be politicking that a little bit, maybe, maybe. But we do have one secured, and hopefully that other one will get secured as well. He, he didn't into the relics, and we're about to be castle, but it's still a little ways off, so let's get on this. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can head over to these berry bushes right here. We do have level 5 cisterns, so our people are going to be quite hydrated. Okay. Then we need to go grab what relics we can. Okay, so immediately make that guy. You jump on trees, and we need to get start working on the olive farms soon, too, if you can. Let's make some more longbows. Let's make some of these, some Brangians. Just make some like core units so we don't get like bull rushed. And then we just go like, we establish a farm economy and then we go to Imperial Age basically is what we're going to be doing. All right. So yeah, we're getting that all secure here. You come down here, buddy, and grab this. So we'll cut the wheelbarrow and do that after. Um, probably going to get an early keep in the base if we can. So I'm going to go grab this stone over here. And um, yeah, and then we're going to just slowly kind of set up some lovely farms around our... Uh, or grand winery here. Cool. So two relics are going to be ours at least. The other ones are being taken off the map. Uh, let's get you. Go up here. We have a decent little army now. It's 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 something. It's not insignificant. Okay, grand winery. Go go go. Yes yes. I want to get a keep up in my base asap. I you know you must become like the porcupine. Although if China comes in imperial, it just doesn't matter, right? Imperial China though, Byzantines could probably fight them pretty well. I would say you probably could. Okay, so back you go. Let's do that. 
Go return the relic, escort the homie. We are able to turbo build houses, which is incredibly nice. We see Yuravity is going to be grabbing some free real estate on the map, which is very good. And let's go set up some stables now, too. Stables are obviously always pretty good. That's probably one of my biggest weaknesses as a player is I don't use stable units enough. I always like kind of get a bit of a hard-on for, um, you know, infantry units just because it's my, my preferred play style here. All right, so let's expand that, fix that up. Eventually, we can get that keep very soon. We've got a lot of Strelbora. Uh, let's go ahead and upgrade our mercs to the next age, and then we head up here. You get that, buddy, and you bring it back here. Well, Lolo's going down to the map. We definitely want to take the Sacred Sites if we can. At least one. Yeah, see, he tried to come for it. I don't think he's going to get that one. That's good. So we did manage to get two relics after all is said and done. All right, so now let's just turtle up in our base. Patty has reached Castle Age. Um, we have pretty much all the eco upgrades of the age. Horsemen are coming along. All right, great. Um, that's going to be a lot of horseman production because I think they're going to be pretty good for diving various artillery. And uh, let's set up a keep here because this is like a choke point into our base. So I think if we just get a keep right there, it's going to be pretty cozy. All right, so we're going to head over here. We can't let your avidity have all the freebies. You know, we got we to gotta keep them honest a little bit. All right, so let's uh, move this and we can do, do, do. And yeah, looking fine. Let's move here, take this bad boy down, and you're going to get the relic, drop it off here, and then we can come out and grab this. He's so, your Abedi's so greedy, he's such a villain, look at him, dude. Grabbing all these sacred sites, he's trying to at least, and we can get a little tower on each of these. Just as like a forward observation post, and uh, obviously establishing some sort of trade soon would be good too. They're adding F uh, FFA to quick match? I didn't know about that, are they? Is that true? That'd be pretty cool if they were. All right, let's get you and you for the double speedy research. And the olive oil empire is growing. Yes, let the olives flow. So now I'm going to get one of my own here. I don't know if he's going to try and kill this unit, but we need to be careful. Uh, we should be fine on military production for now, I think. I don't think we're going to have any issues. That's for sure. Let's do this and this. Byzantines are really good at rapid, rapid firing units out. Like, really, really good. All right, so let's come here. Set this up. Grab that. Trading uh, is going to be something. We definitely want to grab the sacred sites. It's a lot of free resources. A whole lot. And we'll go down here and grab this one too. Although grabbing that one does kind of make us a little bit of an enemy. I think people might get a little bit, you know, aggro about that one. We'll have to see. All right. So now we're just going to try and get up to the next age here. Get a lot of wood. Um, we have a decent little food economy going. So let's go here. One, two, three, and four. And we're good. I never played Age of Mythology. I've only ever heard, heard good things about it, though. So, yeah, it's something I would like to get into at some point. Well, let's get as much stone as we can off the map. And then we need to stonewall our empire. Not that it's going to matter against, like, Japan. But um, I, need to be, I need to be homies with uh, Japan. I'm actually legitimately not going to be aggressive here because I feel like in a four-player pod, it's a little bit more dangerous. One, two, three, four, five... Yeah, we have a good position, though. The fact that we have, like, a choke point here and a choke point, like, you know, it's a very, very kind of high and tight base there. All right, so we got two sacreds, which is cer certainly going to make us a bit of money. Uh, let's just do arrow slits there for now. Yeah, we don't need to, like, get big fancy. And uh, we'll do that. Looking good. You guys need to go find some more food on the map, so let's go get the olive oil if we can. And uh, let's get some land snakes as well. And yes, we do need more mercenary houses. That's something else that's going to be very important here. So let's do this and this. All right, outstanding. So upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. We'll get all those, and we're going to switch to Dialectus. Looks like he's going to come down with a bit of an army, actually. Okay, so he's, he's, he's wanting blood. So we need to get some units here. If he's just taking the sacred site, that's fine. I don't think he's going to be able to progress into our base very well because of our defenses, but... Two, three, four. All right, let's go get those. Get these. Yeah, we need to get some houses. Damn. Okay, it looks like he's just going to take the sacred, which is fine. So let's pull back. We do have the upgrades coming. We need to switch it to Dialectus so it's super quick. We got the Strelbora coming out in numbers, and we could probably take his army. I don't know if he wants to move in towards our uh, our glorious keep here. That's going to be fine. Uh, he's got one nest of bees and a bunch of palace guard. Okay, so we need to get crossbows, obviously. And uh, let's do another keep in the base. Do we want to? Probably another keep back here wouldn't be a bad idea to protect the farms. 
But overall, I don't mind just kind of chilling for now. Let's get some land snakes, some crossbows, and all of that goodness. And you guys, let's set you up and get one, two, three, and eight. All right, so he's looking like he could get a little bit crazy here, a little bit crunk nasty. Um, we need to get another set of farms down here. Is he going to attack me, really? He's going to discover I have a keep here. Probably going to force him back. And um, as far as this goes, we could do another set of defenses back here to prevent raiding. So we're going to do that. Because that's where they would raid into, right? So he's coming for it. We're just going to build up a big army here. We're almost supply capped, which is pretty good. Um, he does have a lot of Nest the Bees, though, and I don't have a ton of anti arty so that's kind of stressful for me. But there is a chance I could overwhelm his army, so let's move in here. All right, let's go here, here, and here. All right, so we're going to charge down there and potentially get some of his Nest the Bees. Nice. Classic. Okay, and can we get it? Yeah, let's pull back. And horsemen are going to keep lurking. And we need to get some... Um, all right, so let's get you to come in here. Let's attack. And that's going to be one Nest of Bees down for the count. So he only has one now, which is fine. Let's go get on the other one. And I think we're going to just crush this attack, right? Yeah, we got all of his Nest of Bees, and now his army here is going to suffer pretty bad against mine. My army is much bigger. The only advantage he had was artillery. So we need to get a couple of artillery buildings here, if possible. So let's uh, do this, this, this. Yeah, I mean, our army is pretty fat, boys. It's pretty fat. And if he tries to do any, like, trolley raiding into me, I, I'm very secure in my base. The dreaded Uravity aggro. Yeah, I have to let the map know that I'm being attacked. You know, so then they can politic accordingly. But that was a pretty crushing defeat for him. Mistakes were made, yeah, no kidding. He's going to come back in Imperial Age, though. Okay, let's do that. So we were able to crush his attack pretty hard. Yeah, is, and any Merc post? Yeah, so what do we got? We got Horse Archers. We got Arbalist there, which is pretty cool. We could probably have a decent chance of killing Gravity now, maybe. If we just keep the pressure on him here. He's got Mangonels for artillery, but we don't really worry about that too much. That's why I need to spam more horsemen, yeah, like hardcore. All right, so, yeah, that's going to be going down. Let's set you up here, and then you can connect here. All right, let's get you. Get a lot of horsemen coming out, and he's going to be forced back. He's going to be able to rebuild an army here soon. We need some, like, proper, like, anti-siege to defeat him, so let's get some uh, spring ults in there. And my army's very beat up. Uh, do I have any religious characters hanging around? I do. All right, let's get those guys to come in and heal the army here. Upgrades. Yeah, let's get all those upgrades popping, and let's go get a little bit more of this. All right, so let's go do some raiding into his lands with the horsemen in the meantime. Let this priest sit here and kind of heal the boys up. Let's get the eco upgrades. And um, you guys head over here. Get that. And we're going to go raid into his lands. I don't know what the other fighting looks like, but, you know, we're, we're soon going to find out, I'm sure. Got a wolf chasing us. Nice. And uh, this needs to be rewalled. Not that it matters too much, but... Yeah. Really? Is that that low on wood? Okay, so he's got his little corner spot. We could just, like, kind of keep him off gold. That's going to be pretty good. Um, and let's go. Do we want to, like, tower some of these resources in the middle? I'm not sure. I assume he's walled everywhere. I assume he has. I, I would like to get Imp instead of fighting him. So we're just going to go decap this for now. Yeah, all's good in the neighborhood. And we have a couple more uh, yeah, lumber workers. Let's come down here and let's get this keep set up and just have, like, that be our, our forward operating base from which we can fight. Siege engineering is, is still useful. Yeah, so the other players are going to be getting imp, which is a little bit unfortunate, you know? I assume your Avity's on 2TC as well, but now that I have Spring Alts, I'm not too worried. He's just spamming Palace Guard, and, you know, Palace Guard aren't too hard to deal with, so. For the old Bizen memes. Uh, let's get the Siege upgrade, and we have the Stone Walls there. We do not have the Stone Walls here yet, so we're going to work on it. Those should be in range. Cool. And we got, um, I don't know why I'm making basic archers. That's weird. Let's get some land snakes. I'm 200 supply. Man, we, we got a big army. We could definitely go put some pressure on him. Let's go see what it looks like at his forward operating base here. Because we can replenish pretty quickly, right? We'll keep you guys like in the wings here. Yeah, so we got a lot of units coming. That's going to be very good for us. Let's just like push this back and keep him off gold if possible. 
Okay, so he's got a decent little pocket here. A Vils, yeah. He's gonna have some artillery. We're gonna have issues actually like getting through him here. Okay, so let's pull back to our key. We have the cavalry to flank, so we're gonna go do this, 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 and this, and then we can attack. Oh shit, I just I just maybe got myself in trouble here. But the cavalry flank's gonna be pretty clutch. So that's gonna be one, although they do get last samurai and they're pretty good. All right, so let's get some more of you and then more mercs and um, now you guys can do the Palpatine school So we want the Palpatine school back here is fine kind of in the corner. Let's do that We need some proper like siege We're at 119. We have a fat military Your avity is obviously cackling on those golds pretty well, but we're gonna be imp here So let's just like kind of bide our time a little bit you know, wait till we're we're all set. And once we get the Palpatine school up, we, we can consider pushing. Now, we didn't lose any of the springs there, which is nice. So let's actually repair those. Don't know how the fighting is going elsewhere on the map here. But, um, yeah, we seem to be okay. Mango towers are good. They're very, very good. They are indeed. I could hold for a while, I think, against him. Even if we if we, if we fall in. Because late game China should be pretty good against Biz and memes. I don't know. We'll have to see. I could be wrong. It's not like they're sushi or anything. They don't have like big AOE, OP, you know, tricks and whatnot. But we are going to be getting the Imperial advantage and we can whip out some bombards, um, which would be nice. So you guys were a little bit overkill on workers for now. So let's get rid of some of those and we can just start building, you know, houses all over the map. All right. So let's get the elite mercs. Uh, let's get our crossbows elite and um, we can go ahead since we're going to be spamming probably limas. Uh, horsemen are pretty good to get elite too for the old Byzantines. All right. So we got a lot of upgrades coming together. It's just going to be great. So we're going to be spamming out elite horsemen. Uh, our gold income is all right. We got 23 on gold right now and we're taking a lot of the map and the thing is with even without gold we can do well so let's get a cannon in placement here too and we should have more springs on the way okay so what is our villager count 112 right now it's a little bit steep and um, do we want to get army tactics first or biology hmm, good questions good questions ringing the doorbells on his neighbor's bases well the thing is I was actually very peaceful this game to be completely fair uh, but then your avity attacked me he came at me to, with the intent of killing me for sure uh, We need to get the uh, spring old upgrade. That's like one of the most important ones for early Imperial dueling He's m2. So Imperial China is very frightening We do have double sacred sites. So we got that and we got houses being built everywhere uh, I don't know who's fighting on the other side Patty's playing the English so his likelihood of going wonder isn't super high um, We do have elite horsemen now we can sell a little bit of wood and get some uh, biology to make our horsemen a little bit... Actually, you know what? We should probably get the incendiary arrows since we have so many freaking archers, right? That's going to be pretty important. All right. Do we have any more space for farms back here? We probably have a little bit. So let's get some uh, old farmville back here. Yeah. That was a nice cozy little spot, wasn't it? All right. So we don't have any horsemen at the moment. He's going to have like 500 nest of bees. Um, you guys, what have you just finished off? Some gold here? All right, let's go grab another big gold node out of the map. Mistakes were made. Stop stealing my gold. Who is stealing it? Let's take down... <laughs> Finish him. Uh, hey, hey, Hammond. Hope you're doing well, man. All right, so we got bombards in the wings. Um, our mercs are going to be elite now. We can go ahead and get gunpowder too. And um, we want to get some ranged armor upgrades or arrow upgrades there. Looking good. He's only going to share until it's it's convenient for him, right? That's what, that's what Patty needs to learn the hard way. Okay, so we got a bombard cannon. It's only one though. Not going to be enough to really knock down the Chinese keep too hard. Yeah. We'll see. Our house is being attacked here. Get the lumber camp going. Um, we got our nice little corner farms. We need to get all of our imperial farming upgrades. I'm actually feeling pretty confident in defending here. Although, you know, Byzantines have made that mistake in history. <laughs> we sure know that. Um, probably walling the river here would be a good idea as well to make sure, you know, we don't get any surprise attacks from Japan. Okay, so they're currently, you know, we're going to set this up. We have you. Springalds. I don't know if that's enough Springalds, honestly. 
And upgrades should be uh, pretty close to being fully upgraded. The Teal Tyrant. Yeah, see, this is good. They're already kind of like looking at Uravity as a villain, which is what I need. Which is what I need. Okay. So we need to find a way to like stonewall this if possible. So let's get you and start like reinforcing our empire's uh, great palisade wall here. So this is like a little bit of downtime right now. We can kind of take it easy. Man, I hate when that happens. Okay. And what are we stuck on here? We're clearly stuck on something. I'm not sure what, but we'll figure it out in due time. Houses are getting popped. Let's get battering rams. The Greek fire upgrade doesn't seem super relevant for us. Let's just get like a big bank before we decide to get a little bit crunk nasty and attack, right? Is there a hole there? Oh, man. Okay, I can't get through there. Good. And this is like a weird one, too. It's like... All right, so we're just going to have to figure this out. Yeah, I'm going to go help. I'm going to knock down this keep real quick. All right, so we got a bombard there. We're going to get our longbows to start picking off the villagers. Take this keep down. I can't let him get a foothold that, like, obstructs me from getting resources. You know what I'm saying? You're going to try and repair it, are you? Okay. Okay, so he's attacking here. He's probably going to get on the arty, unfortunately. Uh, so we need to start pumping out army stat. So let's do this and this and then this. Yeah, we got some nest of bees down. He does stabilize the keep, but, you know, we do kill a lot of his army. Which is fine. We needed to refresh our troops anyways. Okay. Keep scooting and shooting. Keep scooting and shooting. Let's get some horsemen. Come up and under. Do this. And we need to get, yeah, a lot more um, archer ranges, actually. Alright, so where is he at here? Yeah, he's pulling back. So we're going to knock that down 100%. We should, shouldn't have too many problems with it. Um, and this, for some reason, we can't connect over it. You can build stone walls through aqueducts. Yeah, I'm trying to. Kind of weird how it's working. We'll, we'll we'll fix that later. It's no it's no biggie. Okay, let's delete the last of these palisades. Let's get our army together. Take down that keep, no problem. And prepare for round ten. All right, we'll fix that at some point. I don't know when, but okay, let's get back obviously because that's not a great little fight for us, and we're gonna go over here with our dudes. Okay, so gather up the arty. Let's get some mangonels. I don't know what the pathing is with these guys. A little bit problematic, of course. He's coming with uh, with a decently sized force. Let's go up here and get on the wood. How are we looking supply-wise? Okay, we're taking a little bit of damage. Okay, so now we can move in and maybe get some of these. I'm not sure. Let's actually just go hunt these bills that are on gold here. And uh, you guys gather here. Let's delete some of you guys. We have too many. And attack in. So we're getting a little bit of damage onto those. Yeah, good, good. And then we need to get the Bombard Cannons to start thumping through these. No problem. We can definitely take the Attrition. We have a very good eco right now, so I'm more than happy to. Let's get some Streltsy, Hand Cannoneers, Spearmen and whatnot. And let's get back. All right, so we did good. We killed a lot of those. He is sieging down my, my beloved keep, though, which is unfortunate. So we need to keep that pressure on, if possible. And um, cool, we got a lot of mangoes coming. He doesn't have a lot of diving potential, so that's good for us. He does have a couple springs, I guess, but yeah, nothing we can't like focus fire down. And yeah, that keeps gonna fall, nothing we can do. Okay, so we get in, we pound a lot of those guys down. So let's get these and uh, let's get some more horsemen coming. Horsemen can go over onto his gold. So far, I think we've been doing pretty damn well in these trades. Um, although his springs, yeah, he does have a lot of springs, but we basically dealt with all of those, okay. So that's fine. We got more horsemen on those. Let's pull you guys back up this way. Just get more of these. He's switching into mostly a um, archer-based army with like hand cannons and stuff. So let's knock that keep down with those guys. Hopefully we can. Maybe he's not paying attention. And then we can go back here and dive. Okay, so let's mass horsemen out. Yes, please. Is that keep going to go down? Maybe. Let's get you guys there. He's got a good little army here. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. Ah, oh, right before we get the keep, man. What a shame. All right, so let's get you guys back, gather up, get our bearings, and um, we can set up another one of you. Let's do this. Okay. 
We do manage to force him off gold there for a second. Definitely stifles progress a little, which is good. And now he's got these guys back, so we're going to set this up, and then we can go ahead and get you connecting to this. All right, great. Hey, free artillery, I'll take it. Oh, never mind. It ain't free. It ain't free. It was just kidding. Just a prank. All right, so we have Mercs. Let's just get Streltsy and um, probably Springs. I don't know how this is going to go. I'm hoping he'll get attacked from the other side as well. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. Um, gold is going to start running out pretty soon here. So let's come down here while we can. And you guys gather up. All right, so I need to get these stone walls here too. So let's get this, do this, secure the south. It's got a random ass villager poking us there, no problem. Bombards in springs. We could bum rush the keep maybe. The fact that I'm still getting gold on the map is very nice. But I am Byzantine, so we're gonna be okay. Because I think they're just banking. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, let's see that. Japan is scary late, he, he so, so he says. Uh, I feel like we can get this keep here, though. So we're going to just thump on this. And uh, we're going to try and party here soon. All right, so we got a lot of stables. Um, cataphracts are not worth our gold at this point. Just probably spamming horsemen. And did we get biology ever? We did not, so... Pretty newbie. All right, let's get all of our key upgrades here. Yeah, that's a pretty juicy gold node. Okay, so let's get on you. One down and another one down. Nice, we got we got the keep down, which is great. So mission accomplished. And uh, let's get some more Streltsy coming out. And the keep is now vulnerable, so let's fight here. We might have a good trade against his army, I'm not sure. So let's uh, go here, here, here. Oh yeah, we're going to get a bunch of these. Alright, excellent. And let's get our Spring Alts and have our Spring Alts focus fire a little bit too. Nice, we get another one. And we're going to keep moving in. Yeah, our Streltsy Blob is, is developing well. And yes, 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 yes. As long as we take the Nest of Bees out, we're basically chilling. Yeah, basically chilling. So let's get the Lima Tanai. We've gotten most of those down. He's switching into very potato units, which makes me think he's maybe hurting a little bit. Not sure. But, you know, I'm going to be switching to potato units soon as well, right? So, you know, the, the, it's all fun and games for now. Okay, so he does chase down my artillery. Well played to him. And um, we need to get another one of these if we can. So let's get you here and do this here. I need to, I, I need to fix, like, all the slumberjacking and get a lot more military tech. All right. Great. So, yeah, all's good in the neighborhood. We're just going to spam out horsemen now and, you know, get elite archers and start relying mostly on our olive economy. Uh, you guys can go ahead and just power grab the stone and a couple of you can jump onto the trees here. Our food economy is kind of whack, honestly. It's not great. I don't know how much gold he's got left. He clearly has enough for a little something something. So we're going to ride past him here, the classics. And uh, get on that. Great. If we can just get, like, the one nest of bees, we could probably trade just fine. And, uh, yeah, just the olive oil. So we got one. He's only got one nest right now. Which isn't too scary. Uh, we probably need to get our, uh, yeah, the problem is gold's going to become a big issue for me soon. All right. So we got you guys. And let's go ahead and get some, uh, some olive farms going. Oh, wow. That was a really ugly farm, juice. All right, so how are we looking here? We are being camped a little bit. Uh, Patty's getting a little bit crazy. And um, are we fully walled here? Just about. Yeah, then there's just going to be this little opening I need to fix. So we're going to torch this tower down here, which is pretty funny. <laughs> He's having it, getting his jollies. Okay, we still have a gold node outside of our base, which is really good. So let's grab you guys, come down here, and just see if we can get that. And... Um, we need to get some net, uh, some of these too. So we're going to sell a little bit and get some spring alds. And um, try and get this gold if possible. We might want to just set up a keep here to be safe. To make sure we can really anchor that. Because he's going to run out of gold too. Eventually. And Byzantines do pretty well late game even with no gold. So, uh, Alright. Chop you down. Yes. The old Byzant meme empire, it rises. Disgusting farms are being laid all over the place. Alright, so the keep is going to protect our gold here, and then we're mostly chilling. 
Because he's, yeah, he's only got like two nested bees. It seems like he's hurting financially too. Not financially, but um, in other ways. Okay, so he moves in to fight, and we're going to get that keep up for sure. And let's come around the back of the army, and we need to get the olive oil boys out now. Let's get you shooting, and then you guys garrison. He doesn't have, like, proper arty here, so he's not going to be able to, like, actually actually kill us. All right, so we flank in. We get the nest of bees. That's really all that matters. Without the nest of bees, he can't really do much against us. Yeah, you can see we just, you know, basically our armies are just going to bounce off one another, and then we just secure this goal. Call it a day. Uh, so, yeah, it's cool. Been fun fighting with your avid. He's, he's a worthy foe. It's a, it's a good little duel. I don't think he's going to make too much progress here, though, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe he's going to fish out some good arty here soon. I'm not sure, but we need to just get on this gold. Just grab the goodies. Uh, that cistern should be increasing the gather rate of all those dudes. Patty's playing what? English? Yeah, it looks like he's playing the old English. And do we have full upgrades here? We do. Let the spears feast? Yeah. Biz and memes are good. They're a solid, solid sieve in the late game, for sure. They can, um, they can hang in there like champs. All right, so let's do this, and let's go ahead and wall this too. He's going for my old uh, dudes here. A little bit of haggard raiding, gotta love it. I mean, I got a full army again, so I can definitely do a little bit of raiding. I'd like to bank some olive oil, though, before all is said and done. Okay, let's get some springs, and for you guys, we'll do this to make flanking a little bit harder. We don't want to be sending our cav right into the front line, but we will if we have to. <laughs> Get you around the flank, and uh, yeah, make you guys, you guys, uh, Streltsy, and all this. We get a couple of horsemen back here, and honestly, the trading is pretty even. I do have a lot of free hand cannon units, which is really nice for us. So let's just pull them back and try and salvage those bad boys if possible. All right, so we're getting the sweet gold. It's definitely going to be a forever war. It feels like it. Like, neither of us are going to have much resources, so it's just going to be a, a brutal grind here. Um, our eco counts at 100-something. So, oh, wow, he's actually coming in with rams to try and do something. That's probably not going to work out. Maybe it will. I don't know. Yeah, he's losing a lot here in the front. Um, we don't have enough for archers. Let's get our archers fully upgraded. Yeah, those Streltsy are just Giga Chads. They're just doing so much damage. And we're getting gold again, which is really good. So, let's do this. Let's do that. And uh, the Sacred Sight's being contested in the middle. Eventually, he's going to probably get attacked by somebody else, I would wager. Yeah, but the Bizen memes, we get a lot of free units from the Palpatine school, too. But his food economy is probably better than mine. So I, I should probably watch out and not like, get too crazy. Um, but we are out trading his military, 100%. Um, we have trading near me. Okay, so here's our politicking of the gods. Uh... We'll see if they take it. Okay, let's just keep this ugly trading going. And yeah, I mean, attacking into a keep position is going to be tough, right? It's going to be very tough. Our keep holding on like an absolute champ. Uh, those walls are being built. We have double sacred, so our passive gold income is quite good. We need to get... Do we have, we have 55 on food right now? I don't remember putting that much on food. I guess we do. Um, Japan is making like random towers. As long as they don't upgrade them, I'm not going to antagonize him. And we seem to be chilling here. All right, so let's do this so we don't get flanked. We're taking this gold. He's he's admitting to his trade, or to his villainy, which I love. Two and three. Uh, I think we're okay on vills. As soon as we clear this out... Okay, there's a couple of random Japanese villagers here trying to build a keep, but they're coming very close to my base. I wonder if some mad crypto is going on. That's yeah, been good though. This has been a good fight. I don't know how it would go if we just kept grinding. It'd probably just be, like I said, a forever war. Some reward for coming to help, he says. Not sure. You attacked my keep with them. I didn't attack them. Yeah. <laughs> your Avity is always really treacherous, though. I do have two relics. Um, they're generating olive oil for me right now. So it's something. I both think we're kind of broke. He is speaking the truth in that regard, uh, 100%. So where can we get... Yeah, let's get some more mercenary shacks down here. We have the Palpatine school here, which is my favorite. 
I'm happy to chill in bank resources for now. Uh, get this gold, kind of secure our land a little bit more, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, let's fix this up. Okay, why can we not connect that? Is it because this is in the way? We need to fix this. Because I can't be having this fat penetration into my base. And then we can build a little uh, gatehouse area after and then build over that. Okay, so you guys have done that. We don't really have access to any trade that isn't going to be like really, really obvious and haggard. Um, we have passive gold from two sacred sites, which is 200 a minute. And the thing with the Byzantines, as long as we just accrue a lot of olive oil, we're going to be okay. If I donated 10 bills to me, can I have one of the sacreds? Blood tax? No, no, he's, he's going to have to, he's going to have to fight that. They are ancestral relics of Rome. There we go. We got to get into the flavor, into the role playing a little bit, right? Uh, all right. Shouldn't we be able to go through there? Through the old gatehouse? Yeah, like, I always thought you could build, like, over these. And then on the other side, we just build it like this, right? And that should do it. I'm not terribly familiar with that. That usually doesn't come into me as well. Oh, I know there's a gold node in my base. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was one from earlier right here, yeah. We'll get it. We'll send some boys over to grab it. Uh, he's not upgrading those. We'll go get this. The middle, um, what kind of mercs would we want to get? Like some arbalists would be fine. Your avidity's trading here for 30 a pop. 37. So on that note, I'm going to do the same thing and see if we can make that fly. So we're going to set up some trade posts here. And I'm going to try and accumulate some wealth. Okay, let's buy a little bit of stone. And then we need to wall off, like, this portion of the Empire too. So we're going to start on that. Patty is fishing, he says. Nice. He's not going to get our Roman landmarks. Yeah, that should work. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it worked. It's kind of a weird thing. Looks like it should be a little bit more clear with the tooltip there. Uh, somebody is buying... Someone is buying fat stone. I feel like it might be Japan in the north. Oh boy, I don't know. Uh, the thing is, it just won't be Anatan in this. Uh, it won't just be Anatan uh, scary in the finals. Yeah, finals are going to be scary, for sure. Yeah, it's not. It's uh, so. It's either the English or the. Um, I I doubt it's your avidity buying. I doubt it. Okay, let's see what this trade route looks like, right? Continue building this. I wanted a little bit of stone so I could, like, wall this. Uh, let's get some horsemen, go chill over here, take out these, like, random-ass towers in our base. Uh, you know, because that's just that's just a little too much here. Build another gatehouse there. We're fully upgraded, and the, the best thing is we're stockpiling um, olive oil right now, right? Those never got finished. Oh, that's a, that's a shame. That could have been bad. I need, I'm going to need those mercs at some point or other. And uh, our military is decent right now, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of the spears. And see what these traders look like. Uh, it's only 17, so not super good. Ah, that sucks. That's not very good. Patty got all the middle resources. Okay, so probably these traders aren't even worth it. Uh, all right, so that's cleared. Let's take that down. And I think there's still a, st there, there's still a stone node here. That's going to be pretty sweet. Let's move over and secure that if that's the case. And we can use that to finish walling our empire. So we're going to set up some walls. And um, I can't let your avidity have that trade for free, I don't think. Oh. Okay, there's nothing there. We do manage to kill a couple traders. But I think I'm just going to wall it. It's a little bit less angry. You know. My trade is 19. It's super haggard. This could start a war. It could start a war. We're going to have to see. Okay. So he sees that coming. He stops it. Uh... I will go back to war with you over this. <laughs> oh my god, look at the haggard battling, dude. Alright. So handguns. Uh, let's start making some mercs. Yeah, let's get some streltsy out here, dudes. And we need to finish these walls. 
Do I want to go to war with him is the question. I mean, I'm feel, I feel confident I could fight a forever war very well. And it would maybe force the issue. Um, I don't really have any good angles on it. As far as trading goes, I could actually probably get better trade out this way. Let's see what that looks like. It's only 37, so I think I'm okay with it. Set up the mer- yeah. Oh, you won't regret how fast you produce 150%? That's pretty fun. Yeah, that's pretty fun. So this villager needs to finish these walls. Um, currently we're at 92 eco. We do get all our Streltsy coming out, so now we have a good army. Hand cannoneers, other things like that. We're gonna try and finish these damn walls without getting just blasted into the Shadow Realm. Yeah, I don't mind him getting just 40. Uh, it is 45 now. It's a little bit dodgy, isn't it? Okay, so let's delete this. And we're gonna go ahead and do that and test and see what that looks like. I'm getting 18, but I also get olive oil from mine. So maybe, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. Yeah, Streltsy are pretty great. Uh, we'll get the Vrangian upgrades. Somebody's gonna pull the trigger soon on a wonder, I would wager. I don't know who it's gonna be, though. That is the great mystery of our time. If I wanted to go into a forever war with your Avity, I'm gonna want definitely a bigger bank of resources. Although, arguably, I mean, the trading was going very well for me earlier. The olive oil makes a big difference. It's a lot of free units in those forever wars. But I wanna see what this will look like, this route here. So let's see what that looks like to that. Uh, probably not that much. It's 18, I think. Is it? Okay. That's something. How many traders do we have? We have three traders right now. Uh, size massing, mass chopping corner with stone walls around it. Yeah, well, um, I can't really... I mean, Sai does have the busted spot, but I feel confident, like, if he goes up here... I'm right here, like up in his face instantly. So I'm with good supply lines and everything, right? So I'm not too concerned about that. Like, I feel confident we could handle that. Yeah. Hmm. Your Avity, is he gonna? I mean, he's got Corner China, which is a little bit scary. Patty's on English, chilling out. Um, I do have the double sacred site, which is really good. As far as like a forever war goes, I have some decent gold going. Oh my god, they never built it. <laughs> They've been long distance mining that gold for a while now. Yeah, let's get the mango. Do we want the Greek fire upgrade? Probably ain't worth it, to be honest. Alright, let's seal that wall and get the openings. Just continue to fortify our empire. I don't mind being like a counter puncher here. In the situation- oh, oh. Patty walling that sacred. Nice. <laughs> that the only reason you wall is sacred is if you're going for a wonder the only reason um so here's what our game plan is okay i know it seems a little bit weird to let your avity trade but it's very little trade and on that same note when we eventually go after patty together i will then deny his trade when the fighting is heated i'll, I'll just like wall that and take care of it Thanks for the stonewalls. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, and top we got uh, an entrenched Japan player who hasn't been um, who hasn't been fighting the entire time. So he's been pretty peaceful. Let's go get our horsemen and go run around the map. Go see what's cracking. Uh, we got this almost fully walled. Just need to clear that out. Our wood kind of sucks. We got 55 on food, though. So the olive oil is going to be flowing. Okay, I think... I don't know if that will affect that. Yeah, so he's walling this. Let's go, like, torch some of these, like, buildings with our horseman core. Stop chopping into my base, please, he says. <laughs> Somebody's chopping into his base. That's hilarious. I love it. All right. Yeah, so let's get that. You need to move. I have let every aggression go so far, but can't let you into my base. Okay, so Sai is truly, truly peaceful. Uh, I don't know if anybody's lumberjacking into my base here. We're going to go scout. This is my corner. Okay, so that's on fire. That one's going to go down there. Um, these walls are being finished. And now we need to find a nice secret and safe tree line with which we can lumberjack. So the middle is just dodgy, but we have this one in our base, which is pretty good. So we're going to go there. And I'm just going to go scout and clear and see what's, see what's going on. Yeah, everybody's chilling, of course. It's a scary situation because... 
Like, stone right now is 410, so nobody's bought stone in a hot minute. Uh, let's go get you guys back on lumber. I probably want to just sauce up my eco and delete some of my military now, so we're going to delete the uh, Limitani for now. And just go bigger into mil uh, eco here. Uh, trade is how much? Okay, he's not attacking. And um, the market, let's see how much that ended up yielding. 22 isn't bad. It's probably worth it, to be honest. So let's, uh, let's go there. I mean, at this point, it's worth it, right? Yeah, so he's about to go for an English wonder, which is good. So I, I need to let Yuravity get some money so that he can, um, so that he can uh, you know, help deal with it. Okay, you ready to get some money? Money, money, money. Money. <laughs> Expilatores. The Byzantines get money for killing villagers, so. I am farming random bills for money. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's keep our haggard hunt going, boys. What is he doing? Oh, he's, he's just, uh... I don't know why he's sending bills into my base. Okay, let's keep exploring here. Uh, if we can actually just get into the English corner, that's gonna be pretty nice. Let's go see what it looks like. Alright, so we got a lot of lumber villagers now, which is great. And we're basically out of gold, so let's just hit lumber hard. I'm gonna go see what the English base looks like in the corner, if we can. He's not fully walled, so I'm able to kind of sneak by here. Uh, I believe we're fully walled at the moment. Raiding his farms is one thing. Oh. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. Guys. He has a... A corner island. <laughs> oh, no! He's got a corner island with Berkshire. Oh, no. Okay. Wow, dude. Coincidentally, I gotta leave in 15 minutes? Oh yeah, let's go! Alright, this is gonna be fun. I love it. This is like when the villain has been discovered. You know? Uh, but honestly, I can probably get that sacred site pretty quick, too. Alright. So there's gonna be Japanese Ozutsu going bananas. Like, all that stuff, right? So, as far as this goes, let's cut a bunch of our traders. We're not gonna need them. And um, you guys can go ahead and start setting up some chair sea phones and uh, let's set up the chair sea phone here. And uh, we can go for the counter sacred. Yeah, we're actually getting a lot of damage here as well. My villagers do get pops, but yeah, we're, we're doing a little bit of farm raiding going. All right, let's get the chair sea phones here and get the religious character out to the middle. All right, so we're gonna just brute force down this keep and uh, we're gonna just torch down the walls here. And we could grab the counter sacred. Okay, so these are my supply line builders. He's he said he has to go in 50 minutes, so it's pretty pretty perfect for sure. The wonder has been built. He's building another keep back here. I don't think that's gonna help him too much. Uh, let's take down the keeps first. And um, I could try and set up like some towers here, maybe just to help a little bit. Gravity is gonna be pouring into his main base for sure. And here it goes, man. Yes. He's offering me villagers to kill as an offering. I know he is, but I, I gotta I gotta focus on it. It's not that much gold. I gotta focus on other things. All right, okay. So we got some bombards coming and whatnot. Let's get into the army here. The horsemen will ride into the hand cannoneers like the Salmon of Capistrano. Let's go ahead and get you coming out and uh, get some more religious characters moving over because we might need them. And uh, now he's up on the walls. Extra evil. Extra evil, I'm telling you. Okay, can we actually get on the walls here? It's kind of like a weird, weird situation. All right, so we're doing some damage. His vills are moving in. We need to get the chair sea phones in there, but they're a little bit awkwardly positioned. So let's buy a little bit of stone. Oof, that feels bad. So expensive. And I'm just gonna, like the thing is, even though, yeah, the wonder is ticking down, which is a little stressful. I'm gonna set up over there for the inevitable siege as well. Um, do I have the religious character that can knock the door down here? Not sure. Have you guys helped towards that tower? We almost got this one down. He's only got a couple units here, so we could probably move in and grab this, to be honest. 
Although he still has the hand cannon here, so let's wait till they're cleared out. All right, so the keep is almost down. We got 13 minutes. Ooh, going for a sacred victory is very greedy here. The other players might stop helping, and it could cause discord and let Patty win. Is my only concern. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna maybe maybe think about playing for it. Oh my God, his his like guys here just. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna grab that. That's gonna be a sacred timer. And we're clearing out the middle. Double, triple cap, he says. I will leave, uh, double, dump, double? Not sure what he's talking about here. Keep two, he says? We'll leave mid open for counter. Uh, I will leave mid open for decap. All right. So we're heading over this way now. So um, unfortunately, like, I don't know, the Byzantine supply lines might just be better even from home. So we're just going to move into the English base now and start steamrolling. Um, we got the Vils nearby. Let's get you guys to go here. They can just set up at the very least siege workshops. I think that's going to be helpful here for just like ram spam. And I'm going to leave this open for the decap here. You do see his like guys still in the walls there, which is pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to leave this open here if they want to. Um, they can do it. We're moving into the English base. We definitely want to kill the landmarks if possible. Um, all right, so let's get you guys to do this. Let's get some bombards coming out. Uh, traders, we can probably just delete the traders, to be honest. They're not really going to do much for us here, so that's fine. And we just kind of progress through the English base. We do have the sacred, which is kind of funny. Uh, I mean, we could pull off a cheeky win with it, for sure. That would be really funny if we ended up winning that way. Yeah, he left some hand cannons, but I have a cannon tower, so it took care of me. Yeah. And I could wall that now, too, to cut off that gravy train, which would be really funny. Uh, but yeah, let's just keep cruising here. Our passive gold's, like, not terrible, all things considered. Okay, so let's get the horsemen, go artillery hunting. We're gonna get all of his landmarks to make it. Oh, he's got some Rebalkans here. Oh boy. Okay, that's scary. We need to get those down stat. So if we kill his landmarks and then Barkshire dies, he's just dead, right? So he's got three landmarks right in his main base. So what we do is we kill Barkshire and then just make like 50 trebs and then we just move up and, uh, you know, do that. So, yep, looking fine. Looking fine. Let's get you guys on the berry bushes. You know how much the Byzantines love their berry bushes. Uh, three landmarks dead in base. Now we can just snipe Bark. Not to give away our strategy or anything, but you know. All right, so let's get our horsemen. Oh, that's a lot of free money right there. We gotta, we gotta go get that. And then there's gonna be three players. Um, I highly doubt I'm gonna be allowed to keep my my goodies. Okay, so let's hunt those bills down. And um, let's keep rolling through his base and just get ready to party. I have no idea what he's doing here, but clearly he's up to no good, so we need to delete this. Shit, I don't know if I can get through there because I might have screwed up my... Uh, it won't let me delete my wall. Hmm. Yeah, so he's going to get the decap here, unfortunately. Which is fine. It's actually probably for the better. Alright, watch your units. Yeah, no problem. No, he might not get the decap, actually. Those bills are getting karate chops. Yeah, I think we might be okay. Yep, no, he lost all those bills, so he didn't get the decap on us, <laughs> despite that haggard gatehouse. So now we just need to get Barkshire. Uh, we got seven minutes on that? Do we want to, like, try and make a little, like, cheeky play for that? Like a last stand there? We could be very, very slow on trying to kill the... Oh god, the Armada. The Armada is here! Alright, let's get some traps. That's gonna be the only way we can reach Barkshire without dying. The English Armada is here, baby. Gravity's trying to decap that right now. Yeah, you can see he's watching it. Uh, the Royal Navy will hold. I don't know about that. <laughs> We're gonna see. See, they're starting to get a little bit nervous about that, which is good. Uh-huh. And let's get you. Do this. 
Keep moving over. Your avid is going to probably bring something over to try and decap that soon. Let's get the trebuchets to nail down the Barkshire now. And uh, did we make a hold on that sacred site? Are we going to be able to? Yeah, he's going to bring some rams in. Part of me wants to just like try and hold that now. Okay, so we've got the bombardment going on the Barkshire. So now we maybe go for the dub here, right? Okay, Barkshire is going to get it. And he's going to be dead. Uh, I got my Trebs helping there. Come on, finish it. Oh shit, maybe not. Ugh, that's going to be tight. He's got Rams coming into party. We got you guys pulling back. Is it almost dead? Man, it's almost dead. It's so close. Oh. Okay, won't let me delete that damn wall for some godforsaken reason. He's almost toast. We got, what, five minutes left on the sacred here? So Yavity is going to re-rally his horses. So I think this is the perfect time to go full heal. Patty maybe will get the dub. Who knows? Uh, but I think we, we just got to, you know, go all hands on deck here. All right. So what, five minutes and 25 seconds? Ah, uh, this is dangerous. You know, because he's going to he's gonna get the frickin'... All right, we need to get the traps there to just make sure it doesn't happen. And Sai is going to come across and probably probably do something about this. But it is five minutes. Yeah, five minutes is a long-ass time to hold against China. It's a long time. I'm going for the win, baby. Win or lose, we're going out on our shield. All right, so he's losing a lot of hand cannoneers here, which is great. And let's start nailing down all these, and then you hit this. Perfect. Outstanding. All right. And we got trebuchets popping out here. Barkshire is still being attacked, so your avidity is going to be coming to uh, try and stop me here. Okay, so we need to get the olive oil mercenaries coming. Get the flamethrowers of the gods on the way, horsemen spam, and uh, spearmen, Lima Tanai, and uh, just everything we can. It's pretty close to our base. We might be able to hold it. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm still going to help with the wonder a little bit, or with the, the landmark. So we're going to grab you guys and do this, and then this. I figure, you know, worst case, like, I think we still get the wonder. Yeah. And your Avity and I have our Immortal Wombat going again. I'm, I'm farming his, his other guys. Okay, he actually might be able to get this. Huh. He's got his, his, his dudes here. Okay, so we're not going to get that. He's going to decap it. We did manage to kill pretty much all of his trade. And, um, alright, so what do we got? Five minutes left on the Wonder? Oh, that's plenty of time. That's plenty of time. He's got some spring alts out here. We're pulling back to the base. It was a good, it was a good attempt. You know, it could have been cheeky. Let's come down this way. Uh, your avidity's heading back to the wonder now. So that that was a good attempt, though. It was very sneaky, but I think it was the play. Uh, do we have more trebs here? We have five. Back to wonder we go. Back to. Wonder we go. Yeah, he had a lot going on there. I did also kill a shit ton of his trade, which is good. Uh-huh. This damn, like, like, breach here just can't, straight up cannot be sealed. I'm getting some good damage on the Wonder. Should get my army over here to protect. Damn little spring alts are going to put some problems on us here. Uh, I don't know if he rebuilt any of the main base stuff, but let's pull you back. No, oh, you're Avity. Don't do it. You actually need me this time. Kill the Spring Alds, if anything. You're going to be helping here. There's no chance of getting a Sacred now. Let's wall that out to deny gold. Because, you know, I can't be the only one who's super gold for here, so... Okay, so he's going to protect the traps. Good. He's paying attention. boy. And we come from across the river. Yes, yes. Now, let's go make sure the English player didn't get anything back here. He didn't. Okay. 
See, so our, our greedy gambit um, worked out, right? Like, we didn't really suffer any political repercussions for it, and we still get to besiege. And we have, what, three minutes left? That's more than enough time. With Japan and gravity helping, it's going to be it's gonna be a okay. Uh, all right, so somehow, have they returned? So, like, these walls are just so janky. Oh, my God. Gravity, protect the trebuchets! What are you doing? Don't send your whole army into their boats. You had one job. It was to protect the trebuchets. See, I'll protect them if I have to. I'll just run in there and do it. Okay, so we got the one here. We got four of you guys coming down. Let's get you guys around. Find some wood. Whatever. Japan is coming, and we're going to continue hammering the Berkshire. So let's hammer the Berkshire Palace down, and we got more traps on the way. We probably delete some of this army here to open up for more. Yeah, it's getting hammered pretty good, man. Oh my god, if Gravity accidentally kills my traps here, I'm going to be so sad. He's got his own traps coming across right now, too. They have all Cindy. Everybody's been sending in this game. I don't know how he's getting through there. That like the new mechanic with the fallen fallen business is, is tricky. Who's gonna wonder next is the question. Where are they getting through even? How are they getting through there? What the hell is this? Alright. So now it's back to just pure chaos. Alright. Let's roll, Sai. This is going to be fun, man. Your Avity's got his wonder, but I'm more than ready to party. So we are going to start spamming out the old uh, pressure down here. Let's get you guys and you guys, and we'll move this army this direction. We'll just take a little fight here. So your Avity probably gets this. I think he's he's been able to accrue some decent wealth. I mean, not as much. He was only trading for a little, but he must have, he must have a lot of relics, something. He was waiting for the dreaded patty to go. Okay, so let's see if we can save these traps. In the meantime, just keep popping these traders down. And um, we need to sell some of this. Looking good. This is where the foreign engineering school could be very good, though. If we had a little bit more dough. We need Sai to get here quickly also. I don't know how quickly Sai will mobilize. But we're going we're gonna to see what happens here. Uh, all right. Let's go Mercs. Sai is coming across with an army, but he's got to be pretty fatigued at this point. The middle is something we could play. Um, it is an option. It is certainly an option. It's like janky ass berry bushes here. All right. So we're going to start pressing down this direction, but we need to gather our forces first. Looks like his army's coming over here, and we're going to just go ahead and do this. Then this. Maybe, maybe that's a play once Sai arrives. Because China's going to be very frightening. Yeah. Yeah, foreign engineering is good, but the Pal the Palpatine school was maybe one of the reasons why I was able to hold earlier. The Palpatine school gave me a big army when I needed one, because um, I was being swarmed pretty good. Do we have any religious characters? We do. He could probably easily decap one of these, is my concern. Okay, let's make a gatehouse here. Side's going to be rolling. So I need to get those dreaded Ozutsu blobs on the way, but he's like fully on in the corner, which is tough. Can they? Oh my god. Look at this like just shit pathing here. Oh my god. Can't even get through here. Can they now move through? Okay. I have to straight up delete my own gatehouse. Uh, I'll delete those. Get them out of your way. Let's get the flamethrowers on the Great Wall Gatehouse. It's going to be a tough fight here. We're definitely going to take very heavy losses. It's going to be uh, very good for my opponent. Yeah, those things are getting wrecked. Deleted those, and um, we're going to just try and grab this. Maybe surprise him a little bit. However, this is like so vulnerable, right? Like, that's so easy for him to take. Oh, we actually trade well into his army. And believe it or not, that went decently well. Uh, do we have any way of getting out here? Let's go ahead and just do some towers around it. Sure, why not? Keep trading in. Uh, we're trading in uh, southeast. So, gonna grab the sacreds again. Okay. If you help me defend middle, I, I promise to let you decap. 
Okay, so I'm laying in the ground uh, groundworks of some politics. We'll see if he does. Because I will stay true to my promise. I don't know if he trusts me, but it's it's uh, I will. He says that's the plan. Okay, so I'm going to legitimately let him decap. Uh, no schemes, no palpatining. Okay, so we need to be careful here because he's going to probably break his way in and maybe, maybe threaten this. So let's get some of you guys do this. And can we get this wall sealed here? We need to. Uh, but keep attacking. He's pushing me with China late game. He must have money somewhere else too. He must have money somewhere else. I don't know where, but it's definitely, definitely coming in. He's got some goodies laying in reserve here. All right, let's go dive those. I don't have enough money for like anything outside of all of units really, which is fine. So we're going to get Streltsy, I guess. Uh, let's get you guys up in the walls. And um, yeah, it's going to be nice getting some sweet archers up in the walls here. The trading isn't going super well, but you know, we do have this option in the middle. So there is a win con for me on the table, but I'm not going to be treacherous and uh, backstab Psy. Although, to be honest, I probably lose to Psy 1v1 because he's playing uh, Japan. It, it, it's not impossible that we can stop beat them, but it, it's a tough it's a tough one. It's a tall order. All right. So is there anything we can do here? You know, let's just get some towers there. And uh, let's get some Streltsy up on the walls. Yeah, you guys can get up on the walls too. I don't know if they can, but we need to get as many gun units up on the walls as possible as we can. The nest of bees, though, quite nasty. I don't have enough money for springs, which shucks. So let's actually sell a little bit. Try and pump out some spring alts. It's the only way we're ever going to make any progress against this damn army here. All right. So we need to pump and pump the jams and um, olive oil, yes, and launch necked and everything. All hands on deck here, man. All right. So we need to also do a little bit of ram split pushing. I think that'd be a good idea. Just into his base here. So let's see how this looks. Yeah, a little bit dodgy. A little bit scary, uh, but we do have the spring alts coming now. Perfect, finally. So we can get the spring and then do this, 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 and this. We are going to be reinforcing in here. So let's go, boys. Let's go. I have a little bit of wood left, but yeah, our northern army is being uh, pushed pretty good. So here, here, and here. And he's probably going to get this sacred site down. I don't see too many ways we could uh, defend this. So we're going to need to uh, continue pushing into his base here. Man, that, that late game China, he's getting gold. I wonder where, he must be trading in, oh, he's probably trading somewhere in Patty's dead base now, is what it is. Yeah, I would wager there's some funny business going there. All right, so let's get you guys to come around the back and target, 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 target. And are we going to be able to hold this? I don't know, we do have the shield wall. And olive oil, let's get some land snakes in there too. All right, so we have managed to get up there. Mostly hand cannon units. Uh, did our other spring alds ever come in? I don't know if they did. All right, let's gather you guys like here and then come back in here. Man, those nest of bees are just wrecking us so hard. We can't, don't really have too much counterplay for them. If I only I had like a keep here or something, that would be really nice. But we're hemorrhaging resources right now. All right, let's sell some food and uh, get you guys to start pumping out the uh, rams because we need to play for the wonder too. Yeah, he's going to get it. Hope you're making progress on the upside the good thing about this is is that um this is like your avity's probably entire army he's at the wonder nice so this this whole play has worked because we've we've potentially um you know potentially bought time for our ally just need to break the wall and i'm in great so now we just kind of keep chasing here we know the ozutsu overlord is nearby and um we can recap the sacreds potentially versus japan Okay, so we got the Greek fire pouring in like the salmon of Capistrano. Uh, let's make some rams. Man, I wish they didn't cost gold. This is when like you really suffer from the chair of seafones costing gold, right? So yeah, Sai says he's at the wonder. He just needs to break the walls and he's in. So that's pretty great. That so many trebs, says your avidity. Yeah, it probably is. And let's make some horsemen. And you guys need to come down here and do this and uh, update that. So we're just going to torch landmarks in case it matters. But yeah, we've done our uh, we've done our part. We've done our part. And um, we need to grab this. I queued too many and forgot, he said. <laughs> That's pretty funny. We need to get the sacreds back. It's literally our only source of money. All right. Okay, so take that down. And now we can move in and take down this. That's going to be going down there. God damn, these rams kill. Kill faster! 
I feel like maybe Sai isn't going to make it, based on what I'm seeing here. We can try and fight our way through. He said he was like at the Wonder, which made me think maybe we had a decent chance there, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like progress is being made. It's not heavily entrenched. Yeah, yeah, I see that. All right, let's go team. Let the olive oil flow. Uh, and we get the Great Wall Gatehouse down. Unfortunately, we can't like ram spam as easily. Yeah, this is like too bad. We do still have the double sacreds. Um, we can go and grab this one. So that is going to be the Great Wall Gatehouse going down, which is going to allow us to get some momentum. I will keep bashing. But the Nest of Bees are just really doing so much damage to me. All right, are we going to get that keep there? Maybe. Uh, horseman spam, horseman spam all day. We got the Sacred Sites back, but obviously it's not going to win us the game now. Or uh, stop the wonder. He's got like, this like Nest of Bees block, which is just so gross. And uh, we got these guys moving in. Yes, good. So we'll just start torching our way in. We might need to grab some bills. I need all the olive oil I can get, though. That's the problem. Okay. So how are we looking? Sai's coming with a, a lot of elite Yumi, which isn't very good here. Uh, they won't do too much, unfortunately. Let's go see if we can get a little surround -a on those cavalry. Or on those artillery pieces. Like, I can't afford to make springs, which is the worst. So we're just, like, paying the troll toll here. Having to fight him the old-fashioned way. Uh, go ahead and decap mid with one unit. All right. Yeah, he can decap the middle if he wants. I'll delete this. And uh, I believe I have a cannon tower back here, so we'll delete that too. I'm not trying to even hold those at this point. Okay, your avid has got five minutes, guys. I think unless Japan gets some really crazy progress, he's going to get it. Okay, so let's get target all these down. Yeah, can we get any rams? Let's get what we can. Enemy neutralizing sacred site. Okay, he's just neutralizing with a couple random ass archers. Uh, the Great Wall Gatehouse has not been rebuilt yet, so that's good. So it's still, still, uh, you know, not an operational battle station. We need to re her up, but now I'm like straight up just like out of resources, guys. I think Gravity's got this one. He played really well, you know. I, I wonder where he got his money from, because I felt like he was trading for very little. It was only like 30 gold, so that's not enough to really sustain a lot. Sai so might be able to get in there. We'll have to see. Uh, the Great Wall Gatehouse probably is going to get rebuilt, unfortunately. God, he's like. Where is he getting his... He's probably trade. Oh! He's probs trading with Patty Dead Doc. Yeah, that's got to be what it is. He's got to have some witchcraft afoot. Uh, all right, looking good. Where is Dune 2? Tonight. Took care of it. Got it. Oh, so he was at one point then. Ay, ay, ay. How are we going to get in there, man? Uh, all right, let's do this. Sell some food. Where's Japan attacking from, by the way? Uh, okay. So let's kill the nest of bees. He finally blundered. That's how we gotta get him. We gotta get him to type, and then he's, he's gonna go down. All right, so get you on this. And uh, he's got a decent little uh, core of units here. Hopefully we can get this keep down, because that will be permanent damage. We can spam out wood units. And, uh, all right. So that keeps down for the count. That's good. We're making some minor progress, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if we can take some pressure off our Japanese ally, we got we got the old Rams of the Gods getting in. Let's go take down that village to try and supply block him a little. Great Wall Gatehouse is in danger. Let's get these bills to uh, or these guys to snipe the bills who are trying to repair it. Get in here. Yes. Sneaky, sneaky Cherif Seafone Rams. Oh yeah, he's got a big army. Is Japan? Does he have forward infrastructure? Because if he doesn't, that, that we're definitely not going to make it in. All right, let's keep it up. Yeah, the officials also generate you gold. That's true. That's true. Come on, buddy. Get that Great Wall Gatehouse down. Maybe that'll open the floodgates so we can do some horse ride buys or something. Byzantines are really able to muster armies like pretty non-stop, though. It's, it's pretty great. I think they're a really good FF basic. Not like S tier or anything, but definitely solid. Um, but not having gold is making this really hard to fight. This like artillery blow. Just kinda, so in retrospect, maybe a mistake to let him trade. Even if it was only for 30, it did add up. But on the upside of that, you know, 
he might not have had the resources. If I had been in a forever war with gravity over that, then Patty probably would have won the game because he wouldn't have had the money to press Patty. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, there's certainly merit to both sides. All right, let's flank around the side. We had our advantages uh, against China in the early game, but yeah, it's one. And can we get the other one? Oh, yes, we got two nest of bees down, finally. Just keep grinding into the, the pure suffering. Age of Empires 2 is, yeah, it's a great game. Great game. It's one of those games that's like hard to just jump into though if you didn't like haven't been playing for a long time, you know, in my opinion. Uh, all right, so we're not gonna be able to have much success over here. Our only hope was on that maybe Sai was making some progress, but I don't know if that's even happening here. It's a good quality army. Dude, he's got so many nest of bees. He's Nicholas caging us pretty good. All right, let's uh, charge there, charge here, charge here. Yeah, like we're out of everything. We only have food at this point, boys. Yeah, the fact that we can't spam rams is tough. That's one downside of Byzantines, 100%, is, is that. He's mostly here. Uh, so this is all on like the Ozutu blob at this point. Let's make some rams. Just just some last minute rams. Just try and ride in there and do what we can because we're basically out of steam here. All right, so we're going to go run some interference with what little cavalry we have. Make some chair sea phones. And we'll be moving on to the grand finals pretty soon. All right, man, how is he? Really, that was only 30 trade. How is he getting so much from that? Usually that's not like too significant, but in this case, let's go see what old size up to. Every handgun killed makes a difference, right? Okay, so we got the Great Wall Gatehouse down. Can we make a mad dash for the wonder with what little army we have? Maybe. Come, Rams. Come, you never know. You never know. Go, Rams, go. Yeah, I didn't think that little 30 trade would give him that much, but geez, it really did, didn't it? We had our moment of maybe getting it with the sacreds, but he, he was still very rich at that point, so let's uh, kill these. Maybe it'll supply block him. He only got 30 seconds. GG, well played, though. Looks like he's got it. Turn, your, your pot is last. Going to have Nanny already set up. Yes, perfect. Perfect. So then we'll get to our grand finals after. Good. Smooth tournament today, baby. That's what I like to see. The Bizen memes. They tried. Oh! Oh my god! Oh, look how beat up it is! Oh my god, get it! Please! Please! Come on! Oh my god! Damn, look at that! Oh! Look at that! Look how close that was! It must have been trebuchets. That's why there wasn't consistent damage. Man, how good is that? I just want to uh, see that map so hard where Japan... Japan has got a good spawn. Japan would be a tough foe, but if I could... If we kill your Avity there, then we um, maybe we're okay. Okay, so it looks like your Avity arrived. Something was almost killing the Wonder. I think there was a couple of trebs. Uh, Japan, yeah, well played. Sai's a very good player. Holy shit. Oh, so Sai had a Wonder spot. I was the only one who didn't really have the Wonder money. Sai was probably trading. Tried to screen for Ozutsu, and you ran right through them. Yeah, yeah. GG, man. Your Avity wins that one. Scout Blob could have done it. I don't think so. Man, that was close. GG. Solid game, lads. Yeah, pretty much everyone had their moment of like almost being there, getting there and getting the dub, right? Like we had the Sacred Cheese. Your Avity had the Wonder, obviously. So I, yeah, we had the, this is, this is the pure filth though. Are you seeing this? Like the English player could have potentially won this. If he didn't, he had to go in 15 minutes, he said, so it didn't really matter, but this is the best spot, hands down. Uh, is the English player on the west? The trade was here. He was trading here, but also to these docks. So he was trading north to south this direction. He deleted it at the end. It was Maso Zutsu and Rams. That's pretty good. That's a scary blob. But this is the hands down the best spot. If the English player had maybe been slightly more prepared, maybe the Berkshire was like back here, I think he wins the game. Because if Berkshire is sitting back here, then uh, nobody's going to get to that. I wonder if Patty had corner landmark. Yeah. Instead of on water, uh, he would have won a thousand percent. Yeah. So if, if Patty just puts his landmark like in the corner, like here, and then walls around it, he wins. There's no way. So Patty, I think, it had that game in many ways. He just he just had to leave. So I think he didn't prepare super well. But uh, that was definitely the English player's game to take. Uh, aside from that, yeah, Uravity had an okay spot. It's a corner, but it didn't have any natural terrain. Uh, I had some natural terrain, but we didn't have the stone or anything to do that. GG, well played. Let's get that finals lobby going, baby. GG.
That was a fun one. Now it's time for the grand finals. So we're going to have uh, the lobby getting set up. And let's see who's there. I'm quite curious to see who's in the lobby here. All right, one sec here. Chatting with these guys. And let's see who's in the grand finals here. <laughs> All right, uh, Nanny. Invite, uh, what's his name? Gravity, yes. The Lord of Scotland, the Highlander himself. Yeah, I mean, if here's the thing. If we fight a forever war, I think it's like if I had kept fighting Gravity, neither of us would have won in a 1v1. It would have just been an infinite grind. He wouldn't have had trade, but neither would I, and it would have just been a wood grind. Um, and then Patty drops a wonder, and Patty probably wins. Because with Gravity and I depleted of resources, that's pretty much a guaranteed win for the English. There was no real good way for me there. I kind of felt like I was always chasing. My only chance would be maybe if we defeat Gravity on the Wonder, then I can... Um... But he wouldn't have been dead, even if we killed the Wonder. He was pretty... So it would have been back to maybe we killed Japan then, and then... I don't know, maybe. Patty's corner position looked like something out of a single-player mission. It really did. Uh, sounds good, Dave. Aqua, do you have to go or something? Yeah, it was a great game. It was. It was a very, very tense one. All right, so checking here. Excellent. Good, Anakin. Good. Flock of bees. <laughs> so yeah, they're setting up the Grand Finals lobby right now. Let's check it out. Yep, looks like they're here. So we're going to see. I know we have the dreaded Anatan playing here today. He's a pro player. He's been playing in our 1v1 tournaments, but it's cool to see him joining some more casual events, too. It'll be fun to see. Uh, I had Wonder ready to pop as soon as Gravities went down. My resources weren't great, but I had a chance. Yeah, so Sai, I think if you drop a Wonder after Gravity actually dies, I think you would win. I don't think I would have the tools to kill you. Um, between your excellent Japanese food economy and your Tanegashima, I think you would beat me. So if we stop Gravity's Wonder there, you have a decent chance of winning. Pretty respectable. Although your Avity still had a huge army, so you would have had to deal with him too. You would have had to deal with him too, but I think you had a really good chance of winning. I haven't seen the new Shogun series yet. I haven't watched that. I do uh, I do want to see it, but I'm going to let every episode come out first. And then we're going to go through and check that out. So, all right. So yeah, they're just setting it up. I'm curious to see who won all the pods. Let's check. All right. So yeah, a lot of great players in there, man. A lot of great players. Who's it going to be? Who's, a Scatterbrain is also... Yeah, we have a lot of Conk 3 players in this Grand Final lobby, I think. I think there's a handful. I'm a couple games away from Conk 2. I, I'm, I literally, the other night, I got one point away from Conqueror 2. I was at um, I was at 14.99. Oh, God. And then I played a, a like a Conk 3 Delhi player, and I was like, no! <laughs> he just, like, steamrolled my, uh, my English turtle. Yeah, it was bad. So we're going to try. I think I can get it before the season's over. I'm going to make, at night, I'm going to be, like, making plays for it. My spot was close to you. Yeah, I think you would have held, though, Sai. Because the thing is, I had no gold whatsoever. So I couldn't make any, um, I couldn't make too much. Yeah. Winner's list. All right. So Gunhound posted the winner's list here. We can take a look at who's in there. So we have Anatan 1 Pod A. Ventus 1 pod B, Nomad 1 pod, pod C, Nanny pod D, Xerenium, Tron, Uravity, and Scatterbrain. So I know Anatand is Conk a million. He's like Conk 100. Uh, Nomad is Conk 2, I think. Nanny, I don't know, but I, I Nanny's a great player. So Nanny's probably like, you know, somewhere in the in the Diamond uh, diamond Conk range. Uh, Xerenium, I know, is Conqueror player because they beat me on ladder the other night. <laughs> Uh, Tron, I don't know about Tron's one. Tron, I think, is a Conqueror HRE player. Uravity's Conk 2, I think. And then Scatterbrained, I think, is Conk 3. So yeah, it's going to be a pretty sweaty lobby. It's going to be pretty sweaty. Yeah, the Free Siege, it kind of makes me think, Dandy, that, you know, I, in 1v1, I think the Palantine School is better, but I think maybe in FFA, when you're out of gold, it could have been nice to have, like, some Nesta Bees popping out or something. I don't know. Oh, Xeranium is gold? Okay, I'm thinking of a different player. I ran into somebody on late ladder the other night who has a uh, the exact same name. Yeah, maybe it wasn't you, Xeranium. It could have been somebody else. I played against somebody who had a very similar name to you, and they took me down on ladder the other night, so... Okay, you're gold? Yeah, okay, so... 
I don't know why Nomad's inviting me. Uh, <laughs> got them FFAs. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right, so they're setting up the grand finals. Thank you guys for joining. Hope you're all doing well today. Yeah, camel support is very good. Camel support is nice. Um, I love getting Strelty though. Getting Strelty as your endgame mercenary is very good. It's very, very good. Although getting Grenadiers is also really nice too, like the Chinese grenades. English longbows also scale pretty well. Yeah, no, we got to root for Gravity. He's our pod winner, you know? We got to we gotta root on the guy who won our group. Yeah, it's got to be fun, man. Uh, the final map is not water, no. It's going to be a mega random, so there is a chance it could be water, right? Like, you never know. But it's going to be eight players, so it'll be large uh, size, and yeah, it should be pretty wild, man. Going to go watch some Dune afterwards. Pretty excited. Uh, if you luck out, you can get them from the trade post. Yeah, that's true. Smeagol, why, where have you been? How, how dare you not play in our events? How dare you? You've, you've, you have abandoned us. Where, where have you been? We, we need you back. We need you to be playing in some of these uh, glorious duels we have. All right, so have they started yet? No, I think they needed a couple minutes. Some of the players needed a break to stretch their old decrepit hands. Let's check. All right. <laughs> That's funny in Discord, and Ilex is like, hey, turn said you're conk. And then he's like, oh, never mind. He took it back. <laughs> yeah. I got things in an hour. No, I meant like in general. I haven't seen you around. I have to root for Nanny. Of course, he, yeah, Sai, you have to root for Nanny. Of course, family, he's your family. You know, it, it would be heretical if you don't. No, I hear you, Smeagol. That's fair, man. That's fair. That is completely fair. Marilyn says hello. Well, I say hello to Marilyn. Hope you're doing well. Yes, yes. So we're waiting. We're scheming. It's time to party soon. Time to party. Any thoughts on a 1v1 Nomad tournament? That could be kind of weird. I don't know if that would be that exciting to watch, um, in my opinion, but yeah, it'd be all right. Yeah, grand final starting soon. And once again, thank you guys all for joining. If you're enjoying the stream, do drop a like. It helps out quite a bit. Helps me gauge what you guys are interested in. Um, by the way, uh, for anybody who's interested in Dune Spice Wars, uh, there's a big update coming uh, in the next week. So I think on the 7th of, uh, 7th of March, I'll be out of town, but uh, we'll stream when we get back. It's going to be a... Um, it's going to be uh, the Dune Spice Wars update. So they're adding Ix, I believe, or Vrenium, or House something. Yeah, and then there's, I think it, there's something of Ix. And they're adding, like, hero characters and different things like that. So that'll be very fun. Just started playing the game, been watching for a long time. Hope to be able to join. Yeah, join us. Join, get in our Discord. We have a, we have a great community. A lot, of, a lot of solid people. You know, I've seen a lot of communities in Discord, especially, you know, they, it can get... There's some toxic communities out there for sure. And, you know, even though we do have some salt in our community, when it because FFA, you know, it, it can bring out the salt in people, right? When you're getting teamed up on or, you know, you feel like you're always the one getting targeted in games, people can sometimes take it personally. But for the most part, we don't really have too much of that. It happens a little bit. Um, you just got to learn to take it as a compliment, right? If people perceive you as a threat, um, you know, just, just roll with it, man. It's going to be okay. I want to see an old school priest conversion build mass solo lows. Ooh, the problem is you'd have to bring relics. If you're playing as the Abbasid, you can do it without relics. You could do like single target Wolo lows. So if you're playing against Delhi, you could like steal their elephants, which would be really funny. Yeah, starting now. All right, sounds good. Grand final time, baby. Uh, we have a bit of a delay. I believe it's going to be a five minute delay. So uh, we'll just kind of hang tight until then. Dune belongs to the House Arconan, yes, of course. So here's our lobby. We got Tron on the Chinese, Nanny Ori on Jean d'Arc, uh, Nomad on the Order of the Dragon. Wow. Holy shit, we have an Abbasid player? Who the hell is going to play Abbasid in FFA in a competitive match? Uh, okay, we're going to see. We are going to see. And yeah, so China apparently is really, really good in FFA again. I've, I've been seeing a lot of people winning FFA matches with China. So we got Uravity, Tron, and uh, Anatan on the Chinese. I feel like China's like food economy is insane and their military quality is really good. Um, they just are such a powerhouse late game. Once everyone is targeting you, it's time to start cockroaching. That's right. When everybody starts targeting you, that's when you switch to Mongols and you start becoming a Mongol main. Because then you could just relocate and run away and like, you know, 
Yeah, China's really good. I mean, you saw how good they were last game. Fire Lancers are amazing. Um, Nesta Bees and their artillery is really, really good. So, oh, they're resetting. Had a crash restarting. Okay, no worries. So we'll just, we'll just quit that match then. No problem. But they're going to be on the same sibs anyway, so it should be fine. You should always target gravity because teal is associated with winning. Well, we, we were fighting quite a bit early. We were having a very even fight. I think I was actually, eh, I was even. Neither of us were really taking any ground and just taking massive losses. We both ran out of food and wood, basically. So then we agreed to a bit of a peace because we suspected the West wasn't fighting, which we were correct about because then a wonder came down. Uh, but then Yuravity had trade in the meantime, uh, and he was able to jump ahead. And we weren't. We almost got him. We almost got him. Me and Sai almost had him. Yeah, so they're resetting the lobby. They had a little bit of a crash, but it shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, Nomad's a great player too. I believe he's uh, he just recently got Conqueror too, so shout out to him. Hey, Tyrone, I'm new to this, and I'd like to be in one of your FFAs one day. How do you quickly mass produce units of different types, spears, archers? So what I do is I control group all my military units in one hot group. So I will get all my archer ranges, stables, barracks, siege workshops in one. So usually for me, it's control five. I'll hit the five button, and then to switch between different military building types, you hit the tab button while you have your hotkey selected. So you'll have all your military units hot, uh, hotkeyed and then I hit tab and that'll alt uh, switch between your different production buildings. And then you just hit the hotkey that's associated. So once you get really practiced at that, you can pump out units very efficiently. Yeah. I haven't played Age of Mythology. No, I never played that. I know there's some new hype with that as well. But yeah, that's how I do it, Josh. People have different systems, but that's that's worked very well for me. And if you go and like watch the games I'm playing in, you can see me like tabbing between to produce units. But yeah, typically I'm just I'm just spamming the the keyboard key to uh, produce those units, right? So yeah, they're remaking the lobby right now. They had a crash, so hopefully it won't happen again. But we'll see. It does happen. Oh my god, that will help so much. Yeah, it's it's like a game changer. Um, there's a couple little tips like that, like shift clicking buildings. Like if you hold shift, if you want to build like a bunch of military buildings, you hold shift and then just spam click on the ground and it'll build like a ton. It'll queue up a bunch of them. That's a really helpful tip as well. Um, learning how to shift click like scouting and, and movement patterns is good. So you, when you have your army selected, you can shift click to different locations and they'll run in that pattern. Like, so if you're trying to flank with horsemen or something. Uh, hey, how's it going, Daythwin? Glad to be back. Sorry for the off topic, but are you planning on doing a head-to-head -head campaign? Yeah, I think I will do one again someday. I don't really, it's not something I do a lot, but yeah, we will. Yeah, F2 works also. Everybody's Everybody's got their, you know, different cup of tea. So they're getting the lobby back together now. Shouldn't take too long. Shouldn't take too long. Hopefully no crashes in the uh, finals. Yeah, some people are stuck still loading in, it looks like. All right. I force quit it and rejoin. All right, cool. So let's hope for the best. Let's hope we don't have any crashes. It's also how you end up destroying all your military. Yeah, well, in my case, I you know I get a little bit impatient sometimes with deleting units. So just play Japan and spam infrastructure. It's the best strategy. Japan is good. I find that Japan they're they're really good at in FFA. Japan is like S tier. Um, in 1v1, I wouldn't say they are. In 1v1, Japan is pretty predictable. Um, I mean, if you let it get to late game, but Japan's feudal can be a little dodgy sometimes. If somebody puts a lot of feudal pressure on you, uh, it can be scary. Will you do more 4v4 Warhammer? Yes, I will. I'm going to be recording some soon. Yeah, but Japan and spamming infantry is pretty good. Let's actually look at that on AoE4 World while we're waiting. I'm kind of curious what the win rates are looking like right now at the highest level. I have my my theories. If AoE4 World. So this is a nice website that has like all the stats and everything. But Japan is a really good like like lower level stomping faction. I feel like when you're like in Platinum and Low Diamond, you can really crush people with Japan pretty well. Okay, ranked 1v1. And let's go to... Uh, I want to look at Conqueror. Yeah, this is expected. These three sieves are the scourge of high, uh, like, whenever I'm tr getting close to Conqueror 2, this is what I run into. It's Ottomans, Mongols, and Delhi. Delhi is, in the hands of people who have good micro, people who are really good at early army micro, man, Delhi is just the karate chopper, dude. They come in and they are so disgusting. I, don't, I honestly do not know how to beat Delhi easily. Um, it's very hard. Uh, we do also have the Mongols. They just tower rush cheese you and then do whatever they want. And then Ottomans are just freaky strong. 
Like they don't have any weaknesses really. Ottomans feel like they're just very, very powerful. Um, English is steady. Jean d'Arc makes sense. Ayubids make sense. Japan, yeah, it's about right. And yeah, you can see the French are, the French are, uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, what I've noticed is when you get to Conk 2 and like, you know, Conquer in general, early game skirmishes in feudal become much more common. And John Dark is way better at that than the French because you get a hero character that can AoE down spears, which is insane, right? Yeah, nothing too surprising here. Rus and Malians, I mean, these civs are fine too. Like China, 49% is a solid win rate. Um, so yeah, it's not bad. You can actually see Rus have a 58% win rate against Mongols. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Don't show the French. You can see them in the pits here, yes. With the Byzantines. Now, so we've seen those win rates. Let's go down to the um, the general win rates. So if you look at any sieve, you can see you now have a bit of a different picture. John Dark becomes more oppressive. Delhi actually only has a 50% win rate when you include all the ranks because you, they require a bit of micro to play. Uh, so I think the lower ranked you get, like I bet you at bronze, Delhi does not have a good win rate. Let's look at bronze. Man, Order of the Dragon is the bronze faction. Look, the bronze lords play order. Oh my God. In bronze, Order of the Dragon has a 60% win rate. Holy shit, it's probably because they can't micro around those elite units. Um, in Delhi, yeah, Delhi's way lower. They're at 48%. So my theory was close to being correct, but I'm not surprised to see Order of the Dragon being the Lords of Bronze. Because like those big powerful units, like you can own them if you have good micro, but if you don't and you're maybe, you know, slipping up, they can... Uh... Oh, I love it. That's really funny, actually. Okay, so anyway, so let's uh, switch back to this. All right, and we should be ready to get in our game now. Here we are, starting. Thank you, Tron. So they should be starting right now. Yeah, Byzantines are uh, hard to play. I, I have been wrecked by them in 1v1 a couple times. Like, I think Mass Lima tonight with uh, Longbow Spam in Feudal Age can be really scary. Javelin throwers are also quite good too. Yeah. Lord of Gold, more like Lords of Bronze. Byzantines 1v1. Oh, uh, they're all right. Yeah, they're all right. They're hard to play. Byzantines are very hard to play, but... Like, I'm a very good Castle Age player. Castle and Imperial Age is my biggest strength, but um, if you put me in feudal fights, I fall off really hard. Like, I'm really not very good at feudal fighting. Like, I'm Conqueror, you know, I would say, like, maybe I'm, like, a Diamond 3 player when it comes to feudal conflict, but when it comes to, like, uh, Castle Age and Imperial Age, like, trading and, and raiding and stuff, I definitely go up to, like, Conk 2 level, so it kind of averages out at Conk 1, right? Um, all right. So, we got Ventus on the Abbasid, Anatan on the Chinese, Tron on the Chinese, Xeranium on the Byzantines, Nomad on the Order of the Dragon, the Bronze Faction, uh, Homs Scatterbrain is going to be on the English, and then we have Uravity on the Chinese, and Nani Yori is going to be there with Jean d'Arc. So that's it. Let's go time, man. Let's have some fun. Uh, $50 prize for the winner today, so whoever wins is going to be winning a $50 cash prize, so pretty fun stuff. We got some, uh, some new contenders coming in, some 1v1 tournament players arriving as well, as well as some uh, new familiar faces, which is fun. All right, guys, let's take a look at the map and let's see who got the OP spawn. So spawning on the north side of the map, it is going to be Scatterbrained on the English. Uh, he has been playing in our 1v1 tournaments and typically makes it to the top four. He's very, very good. So we'll see how that goes. Sounds good, Gunhound. Drive safe, man. Drive safe. Yes, yes. And down to the southwest, it is going to be Nomad. If you guys uh, don't know Nomad, a very active player and tournament host in our community as well. And uh, yeah, it's just a great dude. You find him. I believe he streams over on Twitch. I'm not sure if he's streaming a lot these days, but he is uh, very good. I believe he's currently ranked at Conqueror 2 and 1v1, so we'll see how that does for him. Uravity, the winner of our pod. we got to be cheering for old Uravity here. The Highlander is uh, certainly due a win, but he is going to be on the Chinese and is going to be supervising that mill, making sure his people eat quite well today. Now, really, really bad spawn for Anatan. This is probably one of the worst spawns in the entire lobby. Um, he spawned inland and is sandwiched between two players. So that's going to be tough. I suspect that Anatan is going to be going for maybe an early kill on somebody. We'll have to see. And trying to secure some land because this is a very, very tough spot. To the south, it's going to be Tron. Tron is going to be on the Chinese. And yeah, we're seeing that China is obviously very powerful, right? I do like the village being built next to this. In case you get raided, you can hide your villagers in there. To the east, we have the mighty Nanny Yori, another excellent, awesome host in our community, putting in a ton of work in the Discord to keep the Age of Empires action fresh. And, uh, and yeah, Nanny's uh, just a great person, great player. And, uh, you know, French are always a contender, right? So if you get the French, you get those fat guild halls going, you're going to be rolling, rolling, rolling. And what's good about this lobby is, even though you're French, there's a lot of people, like, 
If you're not like a super high level 1v1 player, but you're very good at FFAs, you can use that to your advantage in politics. Be like, hey guys, there's like this Terminators in the lobby. Let's go after them instead. Or like, I'm not as scary. And then you can kind of run under the radar a little bit, right? Xerneum is going to be our olive brother on the Byzantine. So uh, going for an early mill, which means it's probably going to be a Hippodrome build because you don't ever build a mill with Byzantines unless uh, you're not going for Grand Winery. Because uh, Grand Winery counts, you know, will give you more for these berry bushes, right? Yeah, Hippodrome is uh, is a fun landmark too. If you want to do like Mass Horseman, Chatterfax play, it can, it can get some work done for you. It certainly ain't bad. Chinese Three Kingdoms is coming. It's very likely that it is going to be the case. Now, to the Northwest, we do have Ventus. Ventus is hands down the ballsiest player in this game. Uh, picking a Bassid is so risky. You only have two landmarks. All it takes is one bad breach of your walls and your army being out of position to be killed. So I think what you want to do if you are playing a Bassett is wall your town center. And then obviously he's doing the correct thing. He's going to be hiding his Hall of Wisdom back here. Um, maybe even like going up here, but that's so close over to Scatterbrain. Who's going to be eyeing you. And Council Hall coming down from the English. Okay, nothing terribly out of the ordinary there. We do have the House of Wisdom being built in the shadows. Mindwork Palace over here for Nomad. Pretty much the auto take because Aachen Chapel kind of low-key sucks. And looking at the... The Aachen Chapel is good on HRE, but not on the uh, Order of the Dragon. What's up, guys? Just got to minimize real quick. Fix this so I can see what you guys are saying. All right, perfect. All fixed up. No landmark here for Gravity yet. Um, I assume he's going to be aging up soon. Probably going to be going for a very early Song Dynasty. And to the southeast, we do have the Imperial Academy for Anatand, followed up by the Barbecue of the Sun. Is he going to be going water? Ooh, look at this. We actually have a lot of water on the south side of the map. So that's going to be a huge advantage for both Nani Yori as well as Tron. Uh, Anatand is going to scout this though, he's going to see it, and he is coming for the water. So obviously, you know, he's very high level and is going to be scouting. He's hands down the best 1v1 player that we have playing today. Hands down. Um, so we're going to see what he does. I thought you built the School of Cavalry. Uh, did he build the School of Cavalry? I, I would imagine so. It's really good because it gives a permanent buff to all your stables and whatnot. Where's Anatand going with this villager? So Anatand is going really deep for it. Wow, he's coming all the way down here. And currently he's got a fair amount on lumber, so he's doing a little bit of lumberjacking so he can get into the water. Uh, he does have a personal pond with some deep sea fish here. I'm not sure why he's extending all the way down here. I can't help but think that's maybe a little bit of a mistake. Uh, we do have a coastal trade post down in the corner. So it looks like Tron does have a personal trade post, which means you could put a trade post here. So if, like, let's say Tron is able to kill the Chinese here, right? He could use a market here and trade down into his own corner, which is really, really, really good. It's really good. But Nanny Ori already popping off. Nanny's got mad water eco going, uh, has yet to age up, which is fine. If you're going to be going for early fishing, it does delay your age up a bit. And Anatand, is he going to be setting up a dock? How much money or what is he sitting on? What is he doing? Okay, there he goes. All right, so there goes the dock right there. I was, I was going to say, if you don't do it, you're going to be suffering. Ventus going to be getting double docks. Bassa do get cheaper docks too. They cost half as much. So it's certainly nice to get those going. And uh, yeah, everybody's kind of aging up here, finding their place in the world, exploring their personalities. You know, it's all good, man. It's all good. So landmark here for Tron is going to be the Barbecue of the Sun. It's going to be the Northern Bash. And Tron has probably one of the best spawns uh, because he has a natural rock face denying a flank. He's also got water and um, I believe, ooh, you can actually get through here. But you could easily just put like 10 layers of stone walls here and deny. So a corner wonder like right back here would be pretty sweet. Although the naval, you would have to have the naval armada there. And that would actually be good. You could get like bow chads here, bow chads here and defend your wonder in the corner. I don't know if it'll fit there. But the thing is, you could simply lumberjack. You could lumberjack back here and make room for that. So I'm curious if there's going to be early aggression. Uh, we have a 2TC coming out for Nomad. Most players are pretty greedy in this format. Scatterbrain has yet to age up. He's been aging up on one build, but he's going to be going 2TC as well. So looking at Scatterbrain, he does have the resources ready to go 2TC. So pretty standard timing for a 2TC build. About 5 minutes, 45 seconds is very normal for an efficient 2TC. And for Uravity, uh, Uravity does have the Barbican being proxied. And... It's a good proxy because if his main base gets killed, at least he has another landmark he can kind of run to and maybe survive on. It also secures him two fat gold nodes. Although I think that's going to be dragging him into conflict here with old Anatan. Now, is Anatan going to go Castle Age? Uh, doesn't look like it. He's gathering a ton of wood, but no stone. Uh, he's trying to get fishing going. Okay, so Anatan's just trying to get fishing, and wow, he's playing this like a 1v1. Like, he's, he's building double docks, and it's going to be uh, aggroing against uh, old Nanny here. Yeah, it looks like he wants some action. Jean Dark is coming, though, and Jean Dark is going to be coming with her bow, and Nanny is going to be in Mortal Wombat here, but there's going to be a junk in the trunk, 
and it's going to start picking off some of these fishing boats. So that's a very, he's very, being very aggressive here. Very, very aggressive. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be making him a mortal enemy. And the problem with that is, like, he has an enemy to the south, and also up here, Uravity could easily backstab him. Uh, Anatan got a very, very unlucky spawn. So um, I think he should have tried to kill Tron and then move into the corner like a hermit crab. But instead of, you know, now he's antagonizing Nani Yori, and that's probably going to be creating a blood feud, right? Uh, which is not going to go... I mean, sure, he might be able to win 1v1, but yeah, I don't know if this blood feud is worth it. So, you know, uh, FFA is a little bit of a different beast, but he is going to be controlling the water. Demo ship does come out. Doesn't do too much damage. John Dark better watch out. She's getting a little bit beat up here. Uh, yeah, she did get uh, tagged by those arrows. Any other conflicts on the map? Not really. Uh, most people are just going to be kind of chilling. Scatterbrained here is hanging out on the double TC, and that's going to be very strong. There's going to be a mighty English Empire up there, I can assure you. With their free gold, that's right. Uh, Eduardo, we did play in the earlier round, but I did lose. So we did play in today's tournament. You can go back and check it out. It was a really, really good match, actually. Really good match. Byzantines are pretty chill over here. Zerini, I'm just going 2 TC and getting those sweet aqueducts going, so nothing too wild. Uh, and Anatan in the meantime, what is he, is he going to be aging up here? He's switching on to gold a little bit, but man, only being on one TC here is tough. Investing in early military too. I mean, is it really worth it to deny all this? I mean, he would know. It is FFA though, right? Yeah, he's going to have people aging up faster than him. He's investing quite a bit in the military and he's only on one TC. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Now, over at Uravity, he's got a hell of a lot of sheep. My God. He's going to be doing a very late second TC, but that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, he's got plenty of sheep, and I would imagine we'll be ready to age up soon-ish. Nope, not quite. He, of course, is still there. No early castle age yet. I would expect to see somebody in castle, and it's going to be... Whoa! Nomad is going to be burgering someone, guys. All right, so Nomad is going burger palace, which is really risky, in my opinion. Uh, sure, it'll be good for killing one person, but the amount of long-term benefits you get from Regnets is so good. But, um, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a burgering happening. It is burgering time. So I suspect that it's going to be Yuravity who's going to get the burger. Uh, and Yuravity doesn't really have any military. He's being extremely greedy. So, uh, yeah, literally no military whatsoever. He's going to be going castle now himself. So he will speed along to castle. He's got 27 on food, just going absolutely bananas on these sheep right here. And he's pumping all his villagers onto gold, also collecting taxes. So he might be able to get castle age quick enough to fight off Nomad's double aggression here. But yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be getting pretty wild. Nomad's going for it, and hey, I like it. You know, get in there, go hog wild. He could also attack Anatan, but that doesn't make as much sense as attacking Uravity and securing a corner for yourself. So you kill Uravity, and then you build your Imperial landmark in the corner, and then boom, you have a wonder spot. If you kill Anatan, Uravity will then just probably kill you afterwards, right? You need to take out people who are in the better positions, typically speaking. It's obviously easy for me to say that from just this kind of a uh, you know god perspective we have where we can see everything but um is there a naval conflict yeah it looks like uh anatan just kind of trying to control the water man he is a really really a, a water tyrant he's pushing everybody out of the water here but he is being attacked now by some french knights you do see a villager coming down and attempting to wall here so <laughs> look at that tron, tron tried to wall but man he just absolutely gooned that character anatan's gonna pull his military ships up and they should be able to take care of john dark um but yeah he does have the water and uh is he gonna be aging up Nope, just getting a barbecue into the sun, so that will give... Wow, he wasn't even on Song Dynasty. He's going to be massively, massively behind. He's going to be quite behind the other players. Uh, Zeranium in the corner, all peaceful, setting up the Great Walls of Byzantium. Uh, Ventus is going to be going, I believe, Triple TC? Let's see, is it Triple? Yeah, Triple TC from Ventus. That makes sense. Abbasid have an insanely good economy. Uh, way better than the Ayyubids, for example. Um, so yeah, if he gets late game and has a million villagers, the Abbasid can produce very fearsome militaries between their Ghulams and their boot camps and their composite bows. Uh, they're pretty damn good. Up to the northwest, Scatterbrain is looking to be, I would say, a favorite in this game. Um, he's on uh, triple TC right now. He's establishing the beautiful English farming economy. It's kind of like when you release a, you know, a predator somewhere and they don't have a predator of their own. They're just allowed to you know, overpopulate. And I, I feel like uh, he's got a corner. He's playing a good sieve. And we see Uravity. I don't know if he drops, but it looks like he left the game. Uh, weird. That's too bad. Hello, uh, sad times. Oh, did you crash? At this point, it would be too late to restart. So, yeah. Uh, the, the Highlander is going to fall. So that is going to change the paradigm of the game quite a bit. Now, we're going to be seeing who the Hermit Crab is that moves in here. But, yeah, he was looking like to be in good shape. Let's look at his resources. Yeah, he was about to age up there. But, yeah, too bad, man. I did crash. Nah, you got to get off the old Wi-Fi, buddy. 
Got to get you off the old Wi-Fi. But, you know, his base will be, don't worry, your base will be utilized by somebody. The Borg will come and assimilate your base. Down to the south, we have a uh, Mortal Kombat. Anatan fighting in the water pretty heavily. Jean Dark trying to uh, put a little bit of pressure on it, but Nanny has been forced back onto land. Jean Dark actually did die to the boats of Anatan. And um, yeah, that's going to be really good for Anno now. Because now he doesn't have to worry about being just overrun by Uravity, right? Because Uravity was going to probably hit Castle Age and maybe start pressuring. Very good to be seeing the astronomical clock tower coming out. And overall, man, that is a lot of fishing. His food is going to be pretty bonkers. Uh, he's going to be able to overwhelm people very, very easily. But yeah, a lot of strong players remain in the game. One down, six to go. It's actually, uh, there's eight players in this game. So there are seven to go. Yes, yes. <laughs> Damn you, Scottish internet connection. Yeah, no. Yeah, that would have, uh, yeah, you could have definitely put some big pressure on Anno here. But he, oh yeah, somebody's going to die now. Somebody's going to die. Uh, he has built a blacksmith, which means he's going to be getting the riveted arrows upgrade. He's going to be spamming out palace guard and just going balls deep in somebody's base. You're immediately going to be seeing it. And his food is going to be so good that he's going to be able to, yeah, he's got crazy good food. And he's going to be able to just drown people. He's also got a second TC up that I didn't notice earlier. I think this is going to be the end of old Tron. Um, Tron is probably going to get steamrolled here. Also, man, Nanny Ori's getting in and raiding Tron. Yeah, Tron's probably dead. So Tron's going to get 2v1 in a way. Because now Anno is going to come in with the Palace Guard spam. And immediately, is he going to get it? Yeah, he's got the arrow upgrade for diving under TC and the melee attack upgrade for the Palace Guard. So that's going to be tough. Up in the north, we do have Nomad going for Scatterbrain, it looks like. Yeah, we got Proxy Barracks coming into play. Uh, and we do have the uh, Chad at Arms coming with two ranged upgrade against the English. The Scatterbrain does have the White Tower proxied in the corner to be a very cozy position. And uh, yeah, a lot of crossbows are coming out as well. So I think Scatterbrain is going to be more than ready to kind of deal with this threat. The Men at Arms kind of timing here is going to be cute. But at the end of the day, I don't know how good it's going to be because he's going to be spamming out crossbows all freaking day. He's got good English economy. Looks like he's maybe supply blocked right now. He's getting a little bit close to it. But yeah, that is going to be quite crazy. Now, where are the Palace Guard going to go? Byzantines on the other side, basically just Netflix and chilling, just hanging out, you know, doing their thing. Down in the south, Nanny Yori has had a bit of a, a repose from the action. So just, I think for Nanny, what you need to do is you need to just find a way to level up John Dark and, um, you know, maybe get a second TC down. Being on one TC is really haggard. And Anatan isn't going to let you on the water. He, he, is, he is a bully. He's not going to let you there. So Palace Guard coming out. We do see the upgrades up in the top. Do we still see Nomad going for the fight here? Scatterbrained is uh, probably going to be able to push this back. Scatterbrained is an incredibly good 1v1 player too. So if this is just like a standard 1v1, I'm sure he's going to feel very comfortable. He's going to be setting up towers. And oh man, I think he's going to be counter pushing guys. I think Scatterbrained is going to be putting the pressure on, setting up more farms as well. Now down on the south, we do see relics being taken by Xeranium. So the Byzantines do manage to jack a couple relics. Meanwhile, the Abbasid Empire is growing fat and strong. They're not Imperial yet, but we do see Moss coming down on a million archery ranges. Obviously going to be trying for that Golden Age. And yeah, Ventus is uh, is going to be kind of left relatively unimpeded, grabbing a lot of resources, huge stone walls across the map. And now it is Gotham's Reckoning. Oh, man. Oh, this is going to be tough. So we see the Palace Guard coming, uh, and it's going to be time. Two ranged upgrades. Good night, sweet prince. We see, what are all these villagers doing? I think they're going to build a keep. Yeah, they're going to panic build a keep. That's a really good idea if I Tron. Because Anatan is going to come for that bread. And he's a pro player. So, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not going to be easy to hold. I do think the keep will buy him some time. But the fact that they have the ranged armor upgrade, they're just going to start torching all the landmarks and, and, and killing all your tertiary elements on the outskirts of your empire, right? So the palace guard move in. We do see lancers being made. Lancers are a good counter against men at arms. But is it going to be enough? So there is a keep here. Anatan is going after the officials. Man, he is like a bloodhound here. We see all the palace guard creeping out, and he's trying to get his granaries. Oh my god, Anatan's micro. He, he's able to get back here with some palace guard. He's going to kill all these villagers of Tron. And Tron is going to probably diminish the pressure here a little bit, but overall, it's going to be nonstop. We're going to be seeing palace guard. Yeah, they're swarming all over, and the eco is going to be getting hammered pretty hard. Now, up top, we have another fight as well. We do have the mighty, mighty nomad. So will nomad be able to get the job done here against the English? We do see the mangonel, which is great against the archer spam, but there is already a spring ult here. So the spring ult is going to be countering that. Nomad will probably respond with the spring ult of his own. And it's not going to be an easy push. English are one of the toughest cookies in the game to crack. They both have pretty good player scores, so obviously both of them are doing reasonably well. Anatan is taking out the Barbican to the Sun. Meanwhile, he's raiding down to the south as well and has done some respectable eco damage. But good hold by Tron so far. Tron has been able to not die. Uh, he's hanging in there. And uh, yeah, he's alive. 
Now, Nanny needs to get, yeah, more eco going. Nanny needs to get, like, another TC or something, or maybe try and find somewhere to fish. Like, fish here. Because uh, right now, just being on one TC, you're going to fall so far behind everybody else. It's going to be it's gonna be a rough time. Heavy, heavy dueling here. We do see Nomad getting pushed back. Um, his mass crossbows, obviously a very good counter against the men at arms. Manganel shot's going to be turning, and it will get one shot there, but it does miss, and it is juked. And the Springald is going to finish it. Man, good micro here by uh, Scatterbrain. Scatterbrain does get the pick, and Nomad is going to be forced back to the Shadow Realm. His Burger Palace here is certainly going to be probably regretting that, as he's making Gilded Men at Arms. Definitely needs to switch into Horsemen. I think Mass Basic Horsemen here with two ranged armor could really overwhelm this army. But alas, that's not what it's going to be. So Anno's on coming down here. He does kill the Barbican. He kills the town center. We see Tron with a bit of a, a resistance, but Anatan's score is so much higher. And um, yeah, he's got good upgrades. The Palace Guard do okay damage. They got their Guandos, and uh, they're going to be diving the artillery here, trying their best to. So Anatan's going to be sprinting with these speedy men at arms. China showing their uh, chops here in the old FFA. I would imagine he's going to gather some siege of his own. We do have battering rams coming. And this is a good time for Nanny to just consolidate. Like, Nanny needs to just chill out here and just get a good eco and get back in this game. Guildhall is already banking stone, so clearly he's preparing for the Stone Age. And for Byzantium in the corner, I mean, this is a pretty S-tier spot. Byzantines are already Imperials. Uranium is is popping off in terms of his age. He doesn't really have much of a military. Uh, definitely could use some more walls. Um, I believe he's got stone walls on the Inner Empire. But yeah, we'll see how he ends up doing here. Uh, this fight seems to have come to a halt. The English were able to thwart the aggression. But the problem for Nomad is, if Scatterbrain is able to get up to um, Imperial Age... He's probably going to butter the bread of the Order of the Dragon. Like, Imperial English is way better, in my opinion, than Imperial Order of the Dragon. Like, way, way better. So that's going to be tough. Yes, this is the Grand Finals of the tournament. This is the Finals. So if you're just joining, this is it. I mean, unfortunately, I have one crash of the Highlander of your Avity, but aside from that, it's going. So, Guild of Men at Arms chewing away at the, uh, the gatehouse here. I don't know why. I guess they're just trying to clear out a little bit of space. We do see spring alts and archer ranges being built. The Order of the Dragon Archers are amazing against enemy archers because they have a ranged armor upgrade that gives them bonus ranged armor. So very, very good. And Anatand is coming in like a wrecking ball. He is getting his granary economy saturated. He's obviously got all this fishing. His fishing eco is nuts. I love that his fishing eco is literally right behind the guy he's like killing. And uh, we got Palace Guard coming into raid. He farms. That is a nice economy. Building a keep back here would be good because Anno is just going to keep raiding that and giving it the journey. But more and more Palace Guard being spammed. That's pretty much the only unit. He's got 42 of those. And uh, he's Imperial now. Oof, that's going to be tough. Elite Palace Guard timing. So he's got the Palace Guard. And ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be an absolute destruction probably. Um, he can hold under the keep with the Nesta Bees probably. Anatan's going to be trying to snipe the artillery. The Palace Guard are coming in very quick. And if they get on top of it, uh, are they going to? They're Elite now too with 2-2 two -two upgrades, man. That's going to be really tough. He's trying to get past some of them. You can see the Palace Guard going to be taking a, a bit of a long route there. Has to be shooting, but the Palace Guard do close the distance, and I think Tron is going to be in some danger here. As we do see the Clock Tower, Nesta B is getting punished, and uh, yeah, he is looking like a Dark Lord, for sure. Over here, are the English going Imperial yet? Do we see an Imperial landmark? We do see the Barkshire being set up in the back of the map, so Homie knows how to play FFA. He's got a really good natural barrier here, so there's like a choke point to a wonder position with two English landmarks guarding it. That's going to be very good. And when is Old Nomad going to be going Imp? Um, he doesn't have any relics. So Imperial Order of the Dragon with no relics is going to be very, very tough. Anatand is basically just going balls deep in Tron's base now. Tron is going to be dead. And that's going to be insanely powerful. Yeah, dude, Anatand is probably just going to wall this here and start trading uh, cross map here. Like he's got... Oh my god, he's planning it. He's planning it. The big brain. So he's got huge walls coming up on the north side of the map. He knows there's a neutral trade post in the bottom. He's going to kill Tron. Tron is dead. And now he's going to get cross-map trade. Oh, dear God. <laughs> oh, that's not going to be good, buddy. That ain't going to be good. And the other side of the map needs to quickly realize how tyrannical he's going to be. Nomad is coming over with a bunch of villagers. Uh, not sure. Oh, he's trying to proxy his landmark back here. Yeah, he's trying to get the Palace of Swabia. He might be able to get it. Um, but I would imagine... Uh, we're going to be seeing Anatan's forces move up to the north and take them down. Yeah, this is going to get pretty crunk nasty. Plus, like, Nomad made enemies very early on with the English with Scatterbrain by trying to kill him. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a dodgy one for him. It's going to be very dodgy. He's going to be sandwiched between these two players. Uh, aside from that, we have Nanny Ori in the south is also going to be a threat because Nanny finally went 2TC, which is very good. But secondly, Nanny is on Guildhall. 
So a guild hall wonder like right here isn't the worst thing in the world, that's for sure. Not too bad. Nanny's going to be walling up in the south. If Nanny could wall the trade post, that'd be very, very strong. We do see the Palace of Swabia coming. And um, is Anatan going to go? Oh, man. Anatan's just going to go just, like, murder hobo everybody. He's like the guy in the D&D party who just, <laughs> just wants to kill everything. The Dark Lord is rising. So we've already seen, you know, we've seen Osgiliath fall down here. You know, uh, <laughs> the Westfold has fallen over here to uh, disconnect. Uh, it's looking tough. They're going to have to definitely form a bit of an alliance soon, or it's going to get very ugly. Because um, Anatan is probably going to be killing Nomad now. Because Nomad invested so much early in trying to kill the English. And that's a pretty brutal one. England is so hard to kill, guys. It's so hard to kill. So now we're going to be seeing Nomad get the business as well. Just a fully erect army uh, moving in. And we do have some Gilded Land Snakes, which are very good against these guys. But overall, he's moving. But he's got, like, hardened spearmen against elite Palace Guard. Like, the Palace Guard are going to crush them. And I think Nomad's just straight up dead. I mean, Nomad is proxying a landmark in the corner. Look, look, but Anatan sees him trying to proxy landmarks. He saw him run past the walls. Dude, this guy is truly the Dark Lord. And uh, yeah, now he's hunting. I, I don't know if Nomad's going to be able to survive. He's losing pretty much everything. Uh, he does have some units coming down. Scatterbrained, he needs to start politicking with Scatterbrained, but Scatterbrained um, is just going to wall and go for his own wonder position, right? Yeah, so looking like the power players in the game to be so far are going to be Anatan, Scatterbrained. Uh, Zeranium, of course, has a really good situation going on, but Zeranium is also a gold player from what I've heard, so that's going to be a very tall order uh, for him to take on any of the Conqueror players. Uh, obviously, Nanny Yori is not in a bad position. Nanny does have the nice guild hall generating a little bit of stone for you, so over the course of a long game, that's going to be quite sweet. Nanny's eco is popping, and it looks like Nanny is actually going to be doing battle with uh, Zeranium, which isn't a bad idea. If Nandy can take down Zeranium, then, you know, the corner is your oyster. Uh, although he's already Imperial, I think. You know, Nandy's still Castle, actually, so. We will see. So, um, yeah, Nomad's probably dead. His eco is not, not really hanging in there. Uh, he's just going to be a gremlin now. So he's just running Vils, and we do see the Great Wall Gatehouse coming up here for um, Anatan. I'm surprised he didn't build that closer to where he wants to wander, which is obviously going to be here. Oh, dear God, the cross-map trade. The cross-map trade's coming. Oh, man. Is there going to be a last alliance? Is this Sealder and um, <laughs> and the forces of good, are they going to unite against the Dark Lord? Dude, Anatan is always the Dark Lord in all of our events. I, I love that he plays in our events. It's, it's fun to have like one super scary Dark Lord. Makes for very interesting thematic games. It's fun. But um, yeah, Nomad's doing a little bit of scouting, I guess. He's just going to be looking. I suspect that Nomad is probably going to be crying for help at this point. It looks like Nomad did stabilize his base, just barely. He had a couple uh, Gilded Land Snakes come out. I don't know why Anatan hasn't gone to finish him. Uh, I guess he probably assumes that he's on Death's Bed already. Currently, we see 48 Eco. They are Gilded Eco, so that's a little bit better. But overall, yeah, we see Palace Guard chasing these guys down. Uh, the cross-map trade of the gods is going to come. Anatan is securing the middle. You can see the walls coming all the way across. We do also see a Great Wall coming from Nani Yori as well. So Nani is going to be securing uh, his piece of the pie right here. <laughs> the Chinese spy balloons are running down Nomad. That's really good, actually. That's really good. The spy balloons are floating over Nomad. Yeah, they sure are, man. They sure are. Oh, my God. So, yeah. he's no Nomad's trying to find a place to put his Imperial landmark. He's just trying to find a gremlin spot to do it. Maybe he's, he's just going to go for the gold right here. Nomad didn't hear no bell, dude. He's still alive. Um, and that means he could be a player. We'll have to see. Uh, a lot of players probably scheming for a wonder. Let's see. So the only person who has a lot of stone is going to be the Byzantines. And I don't think he's in a position to go wonder right now. The Byzantines uh, do have tower elephants. So it looks like they did go for the Kashyyyk Gulam tower elephant combo. Which is pretty fun. Nandi Ori clearing out the middle a little bit. Doing a little bit of scrapping. Jean Dark is here. And uh, who is going to be the next victim of Anatan? We'll find out. Oh, 146 trade being uncontested. Oh, 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 Nanny. Is Nanny going to come in and try? Anatan does wall this off on the south. So he sees that, and Nanny tried to get in there. But it looks like Anno is going to be able to wall it off. I Nanny is a very, very uh, like good FFA gamer. Like Nanny is going to be calling out to the rest of the map that Anatan is doing this. But the question is, will they answer the call against Sauron? Um, Sauron needs to kill more people, because if he lets the, the men and elves you know, come together and you know tag team him... Uh, it's not going to be great. He needs to go ahead and take out another player here. Look at this. Nomad's coming in. I think he's going to try and wall this. I think Nomad's trying to wall here. Oh my god, this is so haggard. 
Oh, look at that. All right, so those villagers are going to get massacred here, and Anatan is going to wall that. They need to deal with them, though, because, like, dude, 146 cross-map trade is unacceptable, especially on a player of his caliber. He could probably 1v2 people at this point. 1v3, probably not, but they need to unify. Um, Nomad, unfortunately, made enemies with the wrong person early, so I suspect this player might come and kill Nomad, too. We don't really know. And Ventus has got a great empire. Ventus is going to be formidable. A lot of keeps in the base. They're all over the place. Look at that. We got triple keeps going down around the House of Wisdom. All the really good eco upgrades coming out for the Abbasid as well. And the Chinese still chasing down these villagers as well. So we do see them getting chased. And um, yeah. Nanny looks like he might be coming down here to maybe try and deal with Anatan's trade. That's a valiant effort. Um, we're going to see how that goes. We're going to see how that goes. Because this cross map is insane. Currently, Anatan's resources are going to be skyrocketing. If we look at the income per minute, it's 3,000 gold per minute. Ventus is the only other one who's getting that much, but that's only for mining, which is going to be dissipating, right? That's something that's going to fall off here at this point. English is kind of chilling out. Nomad is like the haggard creature in the north. He's, he's having a rough old time. Uh, he's trying to, you can see he's trying to find proxy locations in gold, but every time he leaves his base, his poor villagers are just, just getting eviscerated here, getting eviscerated. Yeah, Byzantine Abbasid Alliance. Yeah, it could be pretty strong, Omar. It definitely could. Um, they both have good armies. And yeah, they could overwhelm Anatand, for sure. Like, any, like, I don't care how good you are. If you have, like, three or four players who are of, like, platinum or higher level coming at you, uh, you know, like, low diamond, high plat, you're going to probably die. Uh, you're going to have a bad time. The question is, is he going to prep for a wonder? We do see, uh, yes, Outpost going. Is he making more traders? He is. So he is just going to be so wealthy. So I think Anatan is going to stop his military conflicts for now. And he's just going to bank wealth and uh, maybe prepare for a wonder is what I suspect is going to happen. Um, no other fighting really elsewhere on the map, dude. Nomad, why is that? Nomad's not, not even mining. He's just going to build Palace of Swabia back here. He's got his land snakes. He's lucky that he didn't come in and get killed here. Where was Nomad when Tron fell? Yeah, I know. Well, Nomad was busy trying to kill Scatterbrain, which isn't a bad idea, but Scatterbrain's a very good 1v1 player, so. And that's part of decision-making in FFA, too. You have to look at the person you're attacking, figure out their skill set, you know, and, and determine if it's going to be worth you going all in to take them out. And the Civ they're playing, there's a lot of variables, right? So, yeah, Nomad can get back in it economically to an extent, but the problem is, since he went with Burger Palace, he's not going to have any, like, passive gold from Relics. So he's very much going to be a potato there. Um, down to the south, we do see the Olive Oil Empire just hanging out. And uh, yeah, we got the Foreign Engineering Company, Sister under the first hill back here. So he's going for the big gulp. Interesting. Uh, not a bad one in FFA. Arguably, the Sister under the first hill might be better than the Golden Horn Tower in FFA. Although, Golden Horn gives you a lot of Castle Age strength and keeps you from dying in Castle Age. So that's going to be tough. That is going to be very tough. All right, aging up is happening. We do see Nomad getting to the Imperial Age. Now there's going to be Gilded Villagers on their way out. Uh, a disgusting amount of trade, by the way. Currently looking at the amount of traders. Let's see, can we check here? Yeah, we can check up here, I believe. He's got 28 traders cross map. Um, I, there's got to be some sort of some sort of business going on here. Yeah, I don't know why Anatan isn't finishing off Nomad. Because Nomad's eventually... The problem is if you leave Nomad alive, he's a good enough player that he's going to be ramming you. Like, so if you're fighting other people, there's going to be rams here. He's going to be building walls on your trade. Like, every person you leave is going to be an issue, right? Um, in the meantime, Nanny's just trying to secure resources. We do see the uh, Guild Hall sitting on 2,500 sun, which is great. Nanny finally goes Imperial with the Red Palace somewhere? Where was that Red Palace built? Uh, was it down in the corner? Um, probably in the main base. We have this, this this and then uh, where is that imperial landmark i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking set up on a hill somewhere um where where did he hide that landmark did anybody see nanny's landmark oh here it is the college of artillery interesting wow not going for red palace that's a bold strategy cotton it does give you culverins which are very good hmm. yeah so scatter is playing very defensively though scatter is just kind of chilling out in the base Scatterbrained here. Doesn't look like they want to get too crazy. Scatter's going to be trying to establish trade of their own. It's not going to be great, but it's still better than nothing, I suppose. Although he's playing English, does he really need that trade? I don't know if he does. We do see the ruins of uh, Nomad's old empire down here, and a lot of trade going for Anatan. Anatan sitting on a casual 5,000 gold a minute. Oh my god. I fear Nomad is uh, ratting and will be... Uh, will be oh, I can't see the last part of your message there. Who's going to wonder first? I don't know. I feel like Anatan might... Like, he's, he's buying stone. He's buying stone already. The stone prices are what? 500. Oh, dude, Anatan wants to close this game out early. Wow. Dude, do not wonder if there's going to be five P 
people coming at you, dude. You gotta kill some more players first. Anatan needs to go steamroll, like, steamroll Nomad at least. If you steamroll Nomad, maybe, but, like, holding against, like, a Conqueror English player and, and you know, several very other good opponents as well, I don't think he's gonna be able to do that. It could be his lack of FFA experience. I don't know how often he plays the FFA format. But um, the fact that he's getting this cross map trade is absolutely insane. He's going to be very close to wandering soon. Yeah, very, very close. So in the middle, we do see a little bit of a squabble. A lot of battle sheep sitting here. And uh, yep, Anatan grabbing resources. We see Ventus expanding the Abbasid Empire. And the Abbasid Empire looking pretty good, actually. This is nice. The Abbasid are actually getting good trade. So check this out. Our boy Ventus, one of our Discord champs, is getting 63 a pop, which is very respectable, and is getting a secondary resource because of the Abbasid. So... That's pretty good. And yeah, the Abbasid Empire is looking really strong. Like, really, really strong. Ventus definitely deserves one of the higher scores here. And uh, yeah, he's getting all his military set up, and he is doing it. Xeranium looks like he's coming for blood. Is he going to be trying to take out Nani Yori? That's a, that's a question there. Uh, can the Byzantines get a wonder? No. Man, the Byzantines have no gold right now. It's all olive oil. So this fight probably wouldn't go super well. But it looks like Xeranium is going to be doing battle with Nanny. I think that's going to be the case. Yeah, he's moving down with a big army. Nanny should be able to fight it off. Nanny's army, last I saw, is pretty good. Yeah, he's got a lot of Arbalists, 46 of those. And uh, plenty of Spears and a veteran Royal Knights. It looks like he's going to be trying to take down Anatan. But the dreaded backstab is coming, guys. Xeranium is moving in. Yeah, he wants it, dude. Oh, he's coming into the base, baby. And meanwhile, Nanny is like... Nanny is like, uh... Is like, you know... He's like Gondor right now. He's trying to stop Mordor. Well, he's more like Rohan. And then you have like D Denethor here who's just like <laughs> throwing people off balconies and, you know, causing havoc. Oh, man. So, yeah, this is going to... Nanny's going to have to pull back with everything. Um, you know, obviously, we do see the middle being taken down. Anatan's getting cross-map trade, though. He doesn't care. He's just laughing all the way to the bank. And, uh, man, oh, man. Yeah, this is a, quite, a, quite a treacherous backstab. The old backstabberoo. It is coming. It is coming. Yeah, I think it, I think if these guys squabble, they're going to get caught in a forever war. And I think then we'll just see a wonder from uh, the Chinese. And where is he going to build the wonder is the question. Probably up in the corner near his trade. Um, he hasn't killed Nomad. Nomad is like still just like trying to stay alive. He does have a decent economy back. His base is uh, a little bit beat up, so certainly could use some repairs. And the farms could be remanned. Look, he builds ugly farms too. Look how ugly these farms are right here. Just absolutely hideous. It's not just me. I've been trying my best to improve on those as well. So Xeranium is going for the backstab here. He's going to do a fair amount of eco damage too. We're going to be seeing uh, Nanny Yori taking a lot. And the Byzantine Empire has moved in, but um, Nanny is going to be coming with Jean d'Arc. And Jean d'Arc is probably going to get enough experience here to level up to Imperial Age. So she's going to become Cannon to Arc and start summoning cannons and all that good stuff. But a ton of damage. Nanny did not micro away those villagers, so Nanny probably just lost like 30 wood villagers, which is not good. Um, looking at Nanny's eco, ooh, Nanny could actually die here. If Xeranium continues the fight uh, and keeps reinforcements coming in, Nanny's bank is awful right now, Jesus, and his supply blocks. You see the houses getting torched, all the wood villagers being taken down. Okay, Nanny is actually legitimately in danger, but it depends if Xeranium continues the fight. If Xeranium doesn't keep reinforcements coming in, Nanny will recover, but if Xeranium does reinforce and gets another attack going, uh, you know, that can be very, very scary, right? Yeah, Landmark is destroyed, and it's getting nice and crunk here. We do see Nomad sharing with Scatterbrain, so once enemies, now friends. Nanny's Arbalist army, though, able to hold back the onslaught of the Byzantine Empire, but Nanny Ori is really in the pits right now. Um, currently, Nanny's sitting on, like, pretty much no eco. 58 eco, barely, barely working at all right now. We do see the, uh... Is this a... Is this a oh my god, he's building a Manganel Tower! That's so funny. So the Byzantines, they get Manganel Towers when they build Stonewall Towers, so it's certainly not terrible. The Elephant here going after the College of Artillery, but yeah, that's a tough one, man. That is a tough one. All right. So we do see the Men-at-Arms getting taken down, and the Stonewall Tower is going to be finishing here, so we're going to be seeing it shooting Manganel shots out. And Nanny could be dead. Um, Nanny's resources are pretty much gone. Uh, and Byzantines might have had a successful backstab because they're reinforcing. Uh, Jean d'Arc is almost dead here. If you kill Jean d'Arc, Nanny is going to be in really, really bad shape. So, like, obviously, Xeranium, uh, maybe not aware Jean d'Arc is there, but if you just cheese Jean d'Arc real quick, yeah, Nanny does lose Jean d'Arc and isn't going to have enough gold to bring Jean d'Arc back. And we're probably going to see this army get slowly overwhelmed. So, Xeranium going for a very brutal kill here. Wow, did not expect the Byzantines to come out, but it makes sense. You typically want to take out your neighbors if you're able to. Situationally, you might want to politic with them. Like when the Dark Lord Anatan is just being the Dark Lord in the corner. Uh, you know, you might want to do that. 
Yeah, I lost the first game. Yeah, I did. It was a really good match, though. Um, I kind of feel like if I really wanted to win, maybe I should have gone with like English or a different, or like Roos or something. I, I feel like the Byzantines are good, but yeah, I don't know. I, I needed a mechanic to get more goals in the late game. That's for sure. Yeah, so Nanny's Toast. Uh, we're going to see this army get worn down by horsemen and elephants. Tower elephants are really good against Arbalists. They have 14 range armor. So these bows are only going to be hitting them for, like, you know, um, barely anything. It's, it's, it's pretty brutal. The gulf going down on some of the elephants. Pretty fun. And uh, Osgiliath has fallen. Yeah, truly. Well, no, Osgiliath already fell. This is, like, straight up, like, the white tower falling. This is, like, Gondor. This is The, the tree has been burned by the orcs. Uh, yeah, so we see the towers coming in. Byzantines overwhelming. And that is going to be it. Nanny is basically gone. 45 eco, the base is going to be taken to the torch, and uh, I would imagine Zeranium, yeah. Showing the Byzantine power, man. They're moving. They're moving in. Alright, so the School of Cavalry is going to be torched. Uh, we do see the College of Artillery in a little bit of danger. Villagers being chased down as well. Uh, Nomad is still alive. How is Nomad's military or eco doing? Nomad's back up to 103 eco. So that's good. So Nomad at least will be... Oh my god, the Dark Lord Sauron is preparing to cast his incantation, which is going to do some foulness. Uh, obviously, you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go with that headcanon. So that was a pretty brutal treachery. Nanny Ori's going to be dying, but like this is not going to be an easy wonderhold for Anno. If he goes, he's got one, two, three, four good players coming at him. These are all the finalists. So each of these players won their earlier pod and is going to be joining here. Yes, yes. So a lot of walls coming. I would imagine it's going to be here in the corner. He's got a million towers coming. Uh, Anatan's gold per minute is insane. It's like three to 5,000 fluctuating depending on when the traders come in. And the Abbasid are already setting up a military infrastructure. So the Abbasid, I think, know what Anatan is up to, and they're going to be preparing to go after him. In the meantime, we do see the guild hall dying. Um, is he going to be letting Nanny live or actually killing him? It seems like Nanny maybe is politicking his way out of this because he has him dead to rights. He's got this, uh, he's got that, and we did see that and that. So I think the Byzantines are going to let Nanny live? What? After all that, you come in with a dreaded backstab, right? And all that, and you let Nanny live. Okay. So maybe I suspect Nanny pleaded and explained the Anachan situation, how Anachan has cross-map trade. That would be my only guess. That would be my only guess. But um, yeah, this is going to be a lot of walls, and he's going to be ready to go. Hey, T, your farm to the uglies? How dare you, David? That is not true at all. I, look, I'm going to find some uglier farms in this game right now. These farms, absolutely hideous. Look at this space here. Just absolutely hideous, all right? Okay, these farms are pretty damn good, but English farms are always pretty. Damn it, come on, guys. You're making me look bad. These farms look good, too. These farms look pretty damn clean. <laughs> All right, maybe my farms are the worst. They're the, me and Nomad have the worst farms. Uh, obviously, Chinese farms are usually going to be pretty clean, but... Yes. Uh, Anatan does have a landmark up there, I believe. Maybe not. That's a, That could be... Yeah, he does have the Imperial Academy nearby. He's also got the, uh, the Great Wall Gatehouse. Yeah, so I don't think he does have any landmarks hidden up there. We'll have to see. Yeah, no in-game chat, sadly. We're not able to see that. So the battle rages on. And, it, okay, it looks like... Is he going to finish off Nanny? It looks like he wants to. He's, like, thinking about it. He did kill the College of Artillery. And now he's going to be knocking down the walls. I don't know why you wouldn't have finished him off, though. Is he just teasing? Yeah, is there any... may have listened to reason. Yeah, he may have. But Nanny is going to be very crippled now. Nanny is, like, just on death's bed. Getting the farms back online. And Anatan, once again, at 25,000 gold. He's been able to... He's spending money on the static defenses, right? So he's upgrading cannon towers. He must be. We do see uh, the Gilded Launch Neck. What are, they, what are their hats? Oh, those are the feathers. It kind of looked like they're wearing Japanese hats. I don't know why Anatan hasn't killed Nomad. Like, that seems like a big misplay to me. Like, a big, big misplay. Absolutely rough. So, yeah, he's torching the walls of Naniyori. So I don't know if, like, Serenium is just toying with his food. Because um, there's really not going to be a whole lot Nanny can do. Nanny's economy is very, very weak at the moment. Nanny's currently sitting at 49 eco, which is rough. Yeah, Bassett have been a very, very calm player. Uh, Ventus is quite powerful and quite rich. Ventus could sustain a massive war. And clearly he knows how to play the Abbasid. Yeah. So he's setting all that up. And up in the north, we do see Scatterbrain trading. It's only 31 a pop, but it's certainly better than nothing. 
Scatterbrain does have enough. Ooh, Scatterbrain is in wonder territory, guys. So Scatterbrain can wonder as well. Sacred Sight's being taken here by Ventus. So we have two players on the wonder docket. We have Scatterbrain and we have, uh, of course, Anatand. And um, aside from that, the Byzantines have been spending a little bit in war. They don't have any gold. So the Byzantines, this is kind of what happened to me last game as well. I had good armies, but I couldn't like uh, you know, really do too much beyond that. Yeah, Zeranium's, uh, I'm not sure what he's up to. Yeah, he's like, he beat up Nanny and then he just left, you know? Nanny's guild hall was collected as well. Jean d'Arc is now Imperial Age. And I suspect one of these lads is gonna wonder soon. But I really, I really, really don't know why he wouldn't just kill Nomad. He could literally kill Nomad in like two minutes. If he just brought a two, like a full army against him, like Nomad's got like some gilded land snakes, that's pretty much it. Like Chinese hand cannoneers and anything else would basically just overwhelm that position. But uh, yeah, I mean, Oh, wow. Look at that. So he's getting these into mass cannon towers. So he's not taking any chances. He's straight up, like, upgrading all these into cannon towers. Wow. Okay, that's going to be a very tough position. Nomad will win this because everybody's going to forget he existed. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be the case. So looking around, what do we got? Yeah, College of Artillery is being repaired. Xerenium is pulled back after successfully defeating the forces of Nanny. But Nanny has uh, used some politics, it would appear, to stay in this game. Hey, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Will. Yeah, these these FFA tournaments are really fun. We'll do them more often. I should do them at least like once every two weeks or something. Once a week, maybe, if we're feeling spicy. Uh, a lot of Nest of Bees being built. Nest of Bees are really good on the defense. You saw how good your Avity was with those last game. Uh, tower's still being uh, developed. And um, yeah, Anatan is straight up just buying hard buying stone. He's just hard buying stone at 500 to pop, which is insane because he's got cross map trade at 146. Truly disgusting. Sacred Sites being fought over a little bit. Scatterbrained being very conservative here. Just trading for 34 pop, which uh, is what Uravity did last game and it worked well for him. So maybe I need to not underestimate small amounts of trade. It can certainly, uh, certainly do it. So over here, do we see fighting anymore? Not really. No, nope. looks like the elephants have retreated back. Nanny has the opportunity to get the eco going once again. Nanny is coming back online, 65 eco. So that's uh, that's certainly not terrible. A couple farms here could be re-equipped. And we're gonna be seeing Anatan go for a wonder once he's fully secured here. And he might go for a Chad wonder. He might go for it. Uh, you know, one where, and the thing is he can outbuild anybody because China is builds buildings faster. So China is gonna be able to wonder race you very quickly. So if somebody else pops out a wonder, there's a chance if he has enough villagers up there that he's gonna be able to counter them and do that. We don't really see the English developing a wonder position, even though Scatterbrain does have the tools to build a wonder right now. He does. Oh, we're not seeing him, you know, prepping for one, right? We're not seeing it. Now, down to the southeast, we do have the old uh, horseman and Ghulam. The Byzantine army, are they going to be heading over? Yeah, they're securing sacred sites. Um, sacred sites, we have one right here, one right here. I don't know if the players... Okay, never mind. Anatan has his own pet sacred site, so... They're not going to be able to uh, get him on the counter sacred, which is like a very common defense against wonders. Yeah, Ventus' score is pretty insane. I don't even know how it's that high. I mean, I guess his bank is really good. Uh, I don't think Ventus has much of a military, but as soon as there is a fight, Ventus is going to... Oh, wow, he's making cannons. He might force the wonder out of Anatan. I think there's an alliance forming against Anatan right now. I think that Nomad and Ventus are maybe scheming it, but the problem is Scatterbrained is going to counter wonder them both. Yeah, it's a tricky situation to be in. Man, Anatan getting the Dark Lord position all set up. These are all cannon towers, too. With Nest of Bees and Hand Cannoneers, he's got plenty of military infrastructure here. The only problem is his landmarks are a little bit haggard. He doesn't have a landmark back by his wonder. That's his one, like, the one tell that he doesn't play a lot of FFA, right? So Ventus has got a disgusting bank for sure. Because Ventus is trading in the middle, too. He's got this trade going at 63 a pop. Uh, and it looks like the Byzantines might attack Ventus. I'm not sure where they're going. Uh, he's trying to neutralize the sacred site, maybe. He's like moving through the Abbasid base, but he's not attacking. So clearly, is he trying to get across to help attack Anno? I'm not sure if that's going to be what's going down here. We do, of course, see all the granaries being set up. They're, uh, he's pulling bills off granaries, actually. He's going to be jumping on the gold over here. And yeah, he's got 34 villagers. I don't know if that's enough for a pure wonder race. Uh, cannon towers have been upgraded on the front. He's probably saving up for the wonder right now. I think Anatan suspects he's going to be getting attacked here. Yeah, he is. Okay, so the battle is on. And the Abbasid are going to be coming cross map to attack him. They get higher scores due to their unique upgrades. That makes sense. Yeah, good testing there. And uh, he might just be coming in to steal relics. I'm not sure. But Anatan's going to need to muster an army. And definitely get enough stone for a wonder right now. 
He's got his trade going, but the root is a little bit haggard. He definitely screwed that up a little bit. Doesn't have a gatehouse here. And now we're going to be seeing green. Look at this. Zeridium is here with like a haggard army. Dude, this is where Anatan is going to have to suffer for his sins. He didn't kill Nomad. Now he has to deal with an entire Order of the Dragon army as well, right? Otherwise, his hold would have been pretty easy, but now he's going to have to deal with multiple threats. They realize he has cross-map trade, and if he had just killed Nomad, this would be a massively easier hold. He would just be de dealing with a 2v1, which for him would probably not be too hard, but 3v1 is going to be hard, and even Anatan is, can bleed here, that's for sure. Uh, he's buying a little bit of stone. He's going to move his relics back here, I would wager. Uh, we do see the Abbasid cannons here. Anno's going to need to get some military. He's only got 55 pop right now. He does have his hand cannon shoot again, but I would imagine Horseman will be coming in shortly. Town center, some landmarks being sniped out. The Byzantines are trying to waddle through the middle of the map, but it's not going to be super effective. Nanny Yori is going to do what? I don't think Nanny is going to help too much with this push because Nanny got beat up really badly. So yeah, now the, the war is on. The Alliance of Elves has come, yeah. So Ventus in this analogy can be the Elves for sure. Up at the top, we do see Nomad coming in. I'm telling you, dude, not killing Nomad was such a colossal mistake. It was such a mistake. And I think he's going to pay for that. Um, Palace Guard come in, clean up the cannons. And it doesn't look like they're committing too hard to the fight. Oh, Nanny shutting down the trade in the bottom. All right. So Nanny has shut down the trade on the bottom. So Anatan's trade is going to be offline. I was wrong. I thought Nanny would maybe just bide this time to get strong. But Nanny actually comes in. Nanny's always kind of a team player and does move down here. And uh, it's already escalating very quickly. I mean, Anatan is getting 3v1. He's got the nest of bees shooting away, but that's a lot of rams. And this is exactly what we were talking about, right? A lot of cannon towers. And now everybody knows that Wonder is on the table. We even see the Byzantine Empire coming in. Oh, they're going to probably be steamrolled by the defenders here. But Anachan, he doesn't even have the Wonder yet, dudes. Yeah, he's buying stone. He's just like, he's like going for it. You've got to just plop that down and go for the win at this point. Uh, it ain't going to be easy, but we'll see if you can. So up top, we got the cannon towers and uh, the nest of bees spam. He does not have his last landmark back there. As far as everything goes down here, his palace guard holding back the Byzantines. Scatterbrain is not going to help. I think Scatterbrain is going to go for a counter wonder at some point. We'll have to see. Uh, and is Anno going to go for a wonder of his own? Or is he going to politic and be like, hey guys, I am not building a wonder. You shut down my trade. Let's chill out. It could be that. It could be that. Like he could be trying to politic saying like, I'm not doing anything anymore. I'm not trading. Leave me be. And maybe the other players won't fully commit to him. Like, the Abbasid are not fully committing. They're building armies, like, slowly, but they're not going too hard on it. And we do see the Spirit Way. It's going to be taken down here, uh, I would imagine, in the north. It seems like Nomad is pushing pretty hard. The Nesta Bees should be able to take down the... Uh, oh, my God, Nesta Bees. And I love that their walls are, like, auto-repairing here. It's so, so useful. That's very, very useful. So the relics are being taken back to the back. The pagodas will still give you the goodies that you're looking for. Uh, as far as landmarks, Nanny was able to shut those goodies down, but the fact that Anno is not building a wonder means that... Uh, it, I like that, actually. You know, I think myself included would have probably panicked and built a wonder there, but he's probably trying to, like, explain to them that he's not wondering. You know, hey, I don't have a wonder. Like, I've been, you know, building a lot of whatever. I don't know. I don't know how he can even politic his way out of this, but he's, he should really go kill Nomad if he can. You see a lot of rams coming in the top side. Uh, a little bit stuck up on the trees, but those are going to be taken down. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It kind of looks like Ventus wants blood here. Is he gonna? Is he gonna do for it? Is he gonna go for it? I mean, he only has ten thousand gold, guys. So he spent a lot on these stone towers and everything, and now he's got to deal with this Order of the Dragon army. Yeah, and I was probably gonna die here. I, th I think he's gonna have trouble holding. He does have some landmarks hidden up here, I believe. Does he have any? Yeah, I know he has one up here. Let's see. Ooh, Anatan does not have any landmarks hidden up here even. That's not, is this his? No, that's, oh, I, I thought that was his. That's actually um, belongs to the other player. So he could just get landmarks sniped here, guys. Yeah, that's dead. You know, all of his landmarks are down here. He better put some respect on it. I think he's gonna go try and kill Nomad now. Which he could annihilate Nomad 1v1 because Nomad's army is just land snakes against mass nest of bees, right? So you're gonna have a bad time, but. He's going to need to fight in the south, too. Um, he's getting pressured. I don't know what the Byzantines are up to. Byzantines are getting good trade now. Nice. So the Byzantine memes are trading in the middle for 48 a pop. If they were a little bit more on point, maybe they could move it further on back. No, it looks like he's moved it back about as far as it's going to go. So that's fine. But the Abbasid are moving in, and Nomad is um, going to get attacked here by Anatan. Anno has... He's got... Are there really no landmarks up here? They're not likely to be overcommitting, basically only some that you can afford while banking. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely valid. Anatan might move in and try and kill Nomad here. Nomad's got a good army though, and he's a solid player as well. 
Down in his base, he's getting hammered pretty good. I mean, he better watch out, dude. He could lose all of his landmarks. There's not that many left, to be honest. Um, Anachan's building a wonder. What? He's going for it? Oh, this is not going to go well for him, guys. He's got 600 gold right now. Oh, man. I almost, like, wish I could tell him. I'm like, dude, watch out for your landmarks, brother. You're... He's got to delete all of his food eco right now and go, like, hard in military. Like, delete all these villagers and try and fight these these engagements here. Because, dude, you're going to die. He's just going to die, die on landmarks. What is he doing? Oh, man. I feel like he could have politicked his way out of this, maybe. But he's just going for it. He's going for broke, and now he has the wonder. So he's just going for broke. Wow. Desperation wonder. Uh, so the Great Wall Gatehouse is down here. I believe it's back here yeah so he's got that back here he's getting what gold he can now everybody's going to be pouring in after him and i if he's here's the thing if anachan had built a landmark back here i would think he would have a chance but with no landmark back here i think he's dead like it's too janky dude it's too janky so yeah he's going to be losing the barbican uh he's going to be losing all of his landmarks here and the dark lord is going to fall i think he's just quitting and wanted to make it quicker maybe i don't know He's been cross-map trading for a long time. Dude, I don't know why. He had Nomad dead. He could have straight up killed him. Um, definitely had that. And then without Nomad, I think he easily holds here. But, um, you know, now he's going to get swarmed. His palace guard are coming down. There's a million ramps in his base. He's going to be tasting the wrath of our, our Haggard Discord <laughs> as they swarm him. The Velociraptors are taking down the T-Rex right now. Oh, man. And yeah, Anatan just dead, dude. I, I I think he's realizing right now that his landmarks are not very well placed for a wonder. And then maybe Scatterbrain will counter wonder. We'll have to see. There's still a lot of players left. But the Dark Lord is for sure going to fall here. All of his landmarks are... Like, you see, he's trying to repair this. He's realizing right now the error of his ways. As all of his landmarks are being karate chopped. And um, yeah, he's moving down with his army, but... Man, yeah. Obviously, insanely good play, but the FFA awareness, he needs to just be aware of, like, his landmark situation. In FFA, it's very important. So, um, yeah. Very good play by the lobby. The lobby adapted very well, and um, he built that wonder, and now he's paying for it, building houses in the back. He's very well entrenched here, but yeah. He, he did not protect his landmarks, and there's four armies rampaging around. Great Wall Gatehouse is going to go down, and down goes the Dark Lord. He did not even get to defend his wonder. Man. Well played, Duanna. Well played, man. You just got... You had to build a, la build a landmark back here. And then you're all good. But now, you know, you're going to pay the price. So, we'll see who's going to be next on the docket. Um, Nomad is back in this game. Who would have thought that Nomad would uh, be alive at this point? Yeah, wild stuff. Um, oh, Nanny with the trade, though. How good of a trade situation is it? Okay, it's not that good. Now, are the Byzantines going to backstab Nani Yori now is the question. We see them gathering an army here as well. And uh, it's go time, man. He can't. The troll soul is not paid. Yeah. yeah the troll soul is not paid. Yeah. Yeah, he played well. I mean, dude, Anno, if, he, if Anno had killed Nomad and built a landmark back here, I think he wins the game. Like a landmark back here. He kills Nomad. Um, I think he can then hold... Especially considering the English player wasn't helping. It would have just been these three. And I think with his micro, he could have held. GG, well played. All right, guys. So, looking around here. Now the gremlins are going to be trying to loot his old empire. <laughs> so all the all the vermin tide is going to be descending on the scraps. They're going to be coming for the goodies. And um, we do see three relics back here, too. So, I mean, man, if nobody can get those relics, that's going to be really, really good for getting back in the game. The English player has been banking like an absolute raid boss. Oh my god. 75,000, 52, and 36. Jesus. Uh, Scatterbrained has been absolutely focused. I don't think anything about him is scatterbrained. And I think Ventus is going to go to war with him now. So we see Ventus sending the Ghulams in, and a lot of the villagers are going to get butchered here before they can escape. And Cannoneers putting him to the torch. And uh, Nomad probably just going to be biding his time. Nomad's probably going to get in and try and loot and see what he can find. Look, Jean d'Arc is even uh, scouting as well. So the Marks woman is looking for the relics. So they're going to be both looking for those relics here. The English player does lose a lot of wood eco, but it's not a huge deal. They're at 162 eco right now, so they can definitely afford to cut things down. Nomad does have the option of trade as well, correct? No, but Nanny is hogging the trade. I love it. So Nanny is walling off the trade here. Very, very good FFA awareness. I love it. Beautiful. This has been a really, really good game so far. Really good game. So Scatterbrained up top here is going to be battling it out with Ventus. Is he going to wonder in response? Uh, I don't think so. I think he's just going to muster an army and fight. Yeah, he's got Spring Ultimate at arms coming out. 
He should be able to fight all day. Um, English armies are very good late game. Uh, it depends on what Nomad's going to be up to also. So Nomad is just trying to get back on his feet, taking whatever gold he can. We do see Jean Dark is here, and Jean Dark wants some of those relics. Yeah, walls being hammered down. We do see Anatan's uh, Enclave of the Emperor here. So there it is. It's going to be hanging. And uh, Byzantine's looking very, very sauce too. Looking at their bank. Let's go ahead and look at all the players' banks. So not income per minute, but current resources. So the only player who has stone for a wonder is Hom Scatterbrained. Aside from that, uh, we don't see anyone else really in wonder territory. Ventus does have 47,000 gold, though. That is absolutely insane. And the walls are going to be rebuilt as well. Ventus looks to be coming with a big army. A lot of bombards, a lot of ghoulums, hand cannoneers. Just pure quality army. Meanwhile, in the south, this would be a good army to Wololo, too. If you can get some priests down here and Wololo these guys, that's a great army. Like Chinese hand cannoneers, that's the bees. Sign me up for that, man. Sign me up for that. Yeah, this is like the battle in the first age, or not the well, not the first. Age. Well, when Sauron falls to the at the uh, the last alliance, right? You know, Sauron might have fallen, but the ring is still out there, and the the realms of men and elves and dwarves are going to be squabbling. Uh, we are going to be seeing Nomad grabbing these relics, likely. Although it looks like the Byzantines want a little piece of that as well. I'm not sure what they're doing up here. Maybe maybe just kind of scouting. But yeah, now we have Mortal Kombat. It's going to be the English battling it out. Uh, will we see a wonder attempt here? We don't see any... Okay, he deleted all of his traders and uh, just to get military supplies. So we see the traders being wiped out. I suspect he's going to be trying to kill Ventus now. And it's very possible if the English player gets in and is able to find his House of Wisdom and his other tricks and traps like that. I mean, he could definitely take him out. So we've got a big fight going down here. It is going to be between Scatterbrained and Ventus. And pretty much nobody else is in wonder contention right now. So there's not anybody who's cackling super hard. Uh, Nanny, though, does have Guildhall and could maybe build something. Uh, trade for Nanny is going to be 46, which is okay. Looks like a little bit of squabbling here. But this is really the epicenter of combat. That we're, That's the end of the second age. That's right. Yeah, first age is like insanity. That's what like Balrog's running around and, you know. It's like the age of uh, that seriously high fantasy stuff in Tolkien, right? Uh, but yeah, fight rages on English versus the uh, versus the uh, the old uh, Abbasid. A very rare sighting in our games. Ventus is going to be dropping some big cannon shots. Hand cannoneers potentially could get jumped here, but uh, Scatterbrain's got pretty good micro. Should be able to avoid that. We'll have to see. And are they going to be continuing the conflict? That's the question. Are both of these players going to be going full bore into one another and just having a massive squabble? Also, are we going to be seeing the Byzantine War Machine gear back up? Because if Byzantines want to get a Wonder Win, it would behoove them to kill Nanny Yorick. So going down here and killing Nanny, securing cross-map trade for yourself, because then the Byzantines could secure cross-map trade, would be potentially a very good play. Nomad is, is ever the scrapper, dude. He was basically on death's bed, right? But he's finding a way. Look at this. The Byzantines are just raiding Nomad. What is he doing? I love it. So Zeranium is up here with a bunch of horsemen just raiding Nomad's shit from across the map. That is hilarious. And uh, the English look like they want blood. Yeah, they got a pretty good army here. No bombard cannons, though, so I'm not sure what kind of momentum they're going to be able to make. Okay, they do have some bombards back. So they're going to go straight for the landmarks. Uh-oh, you better watch out. That House of Wisdom could be in danger here, ladies and gentlemen. Could be in danger. The English army is gathering, and uh, they're going to be pissed. I don't know why you're making camel riders other than for camel support. But camel riders are pretty trash uh, against infantry. They do provide the camel support, though, so they give the armor. I think you just want to mix in a couple. I think that many is probably a little bit haggard. But the English army is just gadding these guys down. They're doing a lot of damage. There's no attack speed buff for the English. Scatterbrain definitely needs to get a tower set up here to help a little bit. That would be a very, very good play. But we will see, my friends. We will see. We got old uh, old Nomad. Uh, I don't know where all his food eco went. They're, they're up to no good. And the landmark here is being destroyed, or the wonder. So it seems like uh, Zeranium is holding a grudge against that. As far as this fighting goes, pretty even little squabble. Both sides, you know, taking casualties. We'll see who's going to be able to reinforce better. The English English players are allergic to horsemen, I've noticed. Uh, although I think at the highest level, you often see English players mix in a lot of horsemen in their late game armies. But yeah, men at arms are obviously quite good. But mixing in some horsemen against hand cannon ear spam and uh, allowing you to raid is going to be very good too. So Ventus's eco is starting to diminish. He has no more gold, so he will run out before the English will. So if this becomes a forever war, it will for sure favor the English. But we'll see if it becomes a forever war. A little bit sloppy with some of the men at arms letting him overextend to their doom, but we'll see if it ends up mattering. It might not. Um, Nanny is doing what? Nanny's bringing a big army down here, setting up a keep to secure the trade. We do see some random villagers of Zeranium in Nanny's base, so maybe they have a bit of a non-aggression pact. I'm not sure what their situation is. Who knows? And uh, yeah, it's raging on, man. 
The Abasta do have the defender's advantage. Nice cavalry flank. Going to be able to take down any of the siege. It is going to be Lancer's own. Lancer's sure as hell ain't cheap. And England can do this all day. Their farm economy is pretty nuts. He's not really entrenched for a wonder. Um, probably deleting this market and building your wonder back here and then just walling across those trees would be the right play. And will he fight it? Is the English player going to keep going? The one thing the English player is not doing, which I would like to see, would be like a keep or some forward infrastructure here to really give you that pushing power. Because um, he's not getting that attack buff, which is kind of Bronze Odia. Like most high level English players would always do that. You would bring, because like 20% attack speed on hand cannons is such a massive damage multiplier, and he's not getting it. And the Abbasid are actually able to push him back a little bit, obviously because of the uh, home field advantage there. As far as other fights go. Not too much. The business teams are just raiding. It kind of looks like. <clears throat> Improved Torch. Oh, they have a Scout. So they're bringing a Scout with them to get the Improved Torch damage. That's kind of cool. Okay. That's fun. So we're going to see where they end up going. And the uh, Forces of Ventus actually managed to push back the English. Okay. And it looks like he's going to be... Is he going to continue pushing the English? Or is he just going to kind of, uh, you know, look for a ceasefire? That's the question. Middle of the map. Extremely cross claustrophobic here. Extremely claustrophobic. Yeah, he's just, it's like, look, moving through this middle is just a circus. Aventus has got so much there. And yeah, the fight continues here, but the English are going to get the momentum back now as well. Sacred Sight being taken on the far side by old uh, Nomad. Nomad heard no bell whatsoever. The Order of the Dragon lives. Just barely, but they live. And he's getting trade now. He's got some markets in the corner too. Uh, and on the bottom, it looks like he's going to be clashing with Danny. So they're going to meet each other. And, oh, Joan of Arc's going to die. Oh, Joan of Arc goes down. Oh, it feels bad. Granted, at this point, you know, you could probably afford to resurrect her, but the Order of the Dragon does have some Gilded Land Snakes here, but I think that the French army has enough Arbalists that they're going to be able to clean this up, but not before John Dark does die. And, man, Xeranium just kind of trolling around, just raiding and, you know, shutting down poor Nomad. Like, Nomad's getting kind of bullied up this game, isn't he? Like, he's, like, definitely not a big threat, but he's getting raided, he's being attacked by Nanny, and he's being attacked as well by the raids of the Bizzle Names. Looks like there's going to be a Wolo Low coming here. He should probably just jump in one of these towers. Very well played. Good play, Nomad. He jumps in that tower there. A lot of traders are going to get hunted, and I would imagine the Order of the Dragon is going to be sending down some troops to try and salvage that position soon. Dear God. Oh, my God. How many Mangonels is that? That is 18 Mangonels. Talk about a hard counter against the English army. Jesus. If those things start shooting, I mean, this English army is going to just fold up like a piece of paper. Uh, but, you know, I think Scatterbrain is going to be responding with a bunch of uh, spring holds, right? We're going to see them probably getting tuned out here. And this is like English players being allergic to um, horsemen is, uh, is a problem for them. Yeah, because then they're going to be struggling to deal with this type of an army, right? Yeah, we do have a Discord. Join in. That's where all this is coordinated. So looking at Nomad's resources, he's uh, a little bit poor still. So Nomad's definitely not super strong. He's got a lot of his horsemen coming down to battle the Byzantine horsemen. They should be able to win that just because they have so much more HP than these elite horsemen. Although, let's see. Wait, why did the Order of the Dragon horsemen have the same amount of... Oh, they probably don't have biology yet. Okay, so they need to get biology. Yeah, he doesn't have all of his upgrades. I was wondering what was going on there. So the Dark Lord of Mangonels has assembled, and we're going to be seeing the Mass Spring Alts being made soon. Nope, he's making more Bombards. Bombards can certainly do the trick, and uh, the Forever War continues. Scatterbrained is running a little bit low on gold, actually. Ventus actually beating him on gold, so I don't know, maybe old Ventus can win this fight. We're going to have to see. This Duel of Fates up in the top continues, as the Abbasid showing that their economy is certainly no joke. It is not a joke at all. Turn and I were in the same pod round. Yeah. Yeah, Uravity just barely got a wonder off. It was, it was almost dead, too. It was on deathbed. So what is Nanny up to? Nanny is banking stone. Okay. The Byzantines are trading, uh, not cross-map, but half-map trade, which is pretty good. It's going to get you about 50. We have the Mangonels of the Gods that are not shooting at the moment. So a little bit of Bronze Odia Micro here from Ventus. Come on, Ventus, shoot him! Oh, shoot! You're just wasting so much! Ventus, no! He's losing so many mangoes. What are you doing? Oh, he's trying to ram his opponent with his mangonels. The dreaded potato micro. Oh, God, no. That's so bad. He could have killed like half these hand cannoneers. It happens, you know. He's obviously fighting a very... I mean, I believe Scatterbrain is a high conquer player. So this is not an easy fight. He's, he's probably being taxed pretty heavily, so... So they're pulling back right now, and back in the middle we have the business dude. What if, what if a gold, a player in gold league won this tournament? That would be, that would be so epic. That would be so happy. Zeranium would have to get like an honorary conqueror title if he gets there. So yeah, unfortunate trade with the Mankinels, but just the fact that Ventus is so damn rich is going to allow him to keep trading. 
The English Eco is starting to diminish. Um, he's down to about 900. His food is still very good, though, so he can make longbows and spears and all that sort of stuff all day. Yeah, he gets a nice trade there. English player is going to be running back to his base. The Abbasid production uh, machine is doing very, very well. And Nomad and Nanny are just kind of randomly fighting. I, I don't know what's going on here. Clearly, Nanny has the trade. Um, Nomad's going to be trying to get trade down here, too. Like, trade here to here would be Nomad's power fantasy. That would be like 90 to 100 trade. If Nomad got a trade post right here and just went cross map, that's where it's at, baby. That's where the sauce is at. Come on, Zeranium. Said you could be conquer. Fight, boy, fight. I know, he's trying. So, hand cannoneers moving up, mowing down the English defenders. English uh, are losing this fight. If if Ventus just micros well and continues this push and keeps farming the English, Scatterbrain is going to lose this. Scatterbrain, I think, is realizing this. He's looking at his gold bank. His gold is basically at zero. So he's going to be switching into longbows. And we could see the end of the English if the Abbasid want to finish them. But you can't let the English live because Ventus is going to have a hard time replenishing this gold, whereas the English won't. So you need to really capitalize on your victory here. Ventus needs to go pedal to the metal and try and finish off the English, which is very possible, actually. It's very possible. The English are, uh, are running out of resources. Ventus is not. The Abbasid have an insane food economy, by the way. They have the 15% from the um, Fertile Crescents, I believe is what it's called. They have a unique upgrade to the House of Wisdom, so their food gathering is really, really good. Yeah, Ventus is grinding into the English army. English are officially out of gold just about. No, they have about 1,300, so they're selling food. Looks like the English player was selling a little bit of food to get back in this game. Manganel's doing some nice damage. A lot of archers in the army. Uh, but the English defenders able to form a stalwart defense up at the walls. Manganel's now coming out. England spending pretty much everything it has. And uh, Ventus going to be retreating back. Ventus needs to get some, like, culverins and, some, uh, and be better with the artillery. If Ventus was able to uh, secure the artillery with culverin play, uh, he would probably defeat the English pretty handedly. Ventus and Zeranium are two of my pupils. Both are gold, but FFA vets. Yeah, they're both doing great. I mean, the fact that Ventus is fighting a Conqueror 3 player as a gold player in 1v1 is very, very impressive, right? It just goes to show, the FFA is a bit of a different different beast at times. Typically, Conqueror players will win um, more often, but it doesn't mean that somebody who's like lower ranks can't win these matches. So we do see the artillery advantage starting to go into the English, and this is what could cost Ventus. If Scatterbrain starts to play better with the artillery and just keeps winning those trades, then that could be the Abbasid getting pushed back, you know? As far as this goes, I, I do not know why. Zeranium is just raiding Nomad, which is so funny. He's literally just hunting down traders and getting bounty off them. So every trader he kills is going to be a little bit. Let's see. He's got 24,000 gold, which ain't bad, but not enough stone. <clears throat> A lot of Gilded Spearmen chasing those bad boys down. Um, Manny Yori is moving up into Nomad as well. Nomad does have three relics, and his trade is only 33, so not that good. Nomad's getting trolled pretty hard, though. This rating has got to be pretty obnoxious. I don't know. I would say Sauron is still the English in the north because the English have a corner wonder spot. So that makes him a little bit more... It's more Mount Doomy, you know what I'm saying? So will the fight continue? The walls have been breached. A big opening here. Looking at Ventus's bank, Ventus is sitting pretty good, but wood is going to become a bit of an issue soon. Gold is at 12,000, and like I said, the English can just keep getting gold very easily. Ooh, nice mango shot right there. That was a really good shot. Right into that minute arm blob. Honestly, I have no predictions. I don't know who's going to win this. I have no idea. Zeranium could probably just chill. I, if I were Zeranium, I'd probably just chill in bank and let Nomad and Nanny fight, because clearly these two have a little bit of a feud with one another. I don't know what the circumstances are, but the Order of the Dragon Army is pretty fat. That is a huge Order Army. Wow. It's mostly spears, though, I think. No, it's actually got some hand cannons, some at arms, and lion snakes in there. So that's gonna just crush this French army. So we see Nanuori's hordes gonna be running, uh, getting butchered by the land snakes. Jean d'Arc gonna be fleeing for the hills, realizing the cause is lost. She retreats as her uh, French soldiers are chased down and slaughtered on the retreat. In the meantime, Zeranium still trading in the middle. 55 trade is very, very good. It's very, very good. Uh, you could Lumberjack further and go up to like 70 trade if you Lumberjack and created some space back there. It wouldn't be a terrible idea. He is farming Nomad, yeah. In some ways, he's farming the uh, traders, which do give gold, so it's very funny. It's very hilarious. So this Forever War is, is definitely changing the dynamic of the game. Finally, we got Culverins, yes. But the question is, do you have good micro with the culverins? So Ventus needs to use the culves to snipe all these artillery. It will basically one-shot them. It's um, 
Let's see, so the Culverin is going to do 160 damage, so yeah, it'll, it'll almost one-shot these. I'm not sure if it will, let's see, so. These things have 168 HP, and Culverin's hit for, yeah, 162, so it's like a two-shot. The Culvs do get popped, but not before they do some good damage, uh, able to take out some of the artillery here, but it seems like the English player is getting the momentum. And man, if the Abbasid Empire falls, that is going to be a wild power shift in this game, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be a wild one. See the mangoes coming. And finally, the English player is building towers. And you can see when he starts doing this, he starts winning. When the English player starts setting up towers in the front, he starts to take over the battles because of the attack speed buff. And the Abbasid are most likely out of gold, or very close to it. Wood's almost out. Um, we're going to be seeing rams coming in in droves. And guys, the Abbasid are in a little bit of danger. They do have their keeps here, um, but the House of Wisdom is here. TC, I believe, is down here with triple keeps guarding it, but the English trebuchets could get their clutches on that. All right. So this is going to be a big power shift in this game. It's going to be a big power shift, 100%. See the men at arms and the hand cannoneers, the Abbasid for uh, forming a bit of a defense here, but the old English getting that good momentum. A lot of longbows, a lot of Strelbora. Of course, we know how efficient the English longbowmen were in history. And they're going to continue showing why. As they mow down these Gulams and these various other units, a lot of Culverins being mixed in. So Culverins and Mangos would be a really good army comp for him. It should, in theory, hard counter this army, but it depends on the micro here. But the English are making a lot of ground. They're making a lot of ground. Uh, Zeranium on the backside. Is anybody buying stone? So Scatterbrain is the only one who has good stone right now. Uh, Nanny Ori has 3,000, but Nanny also is Guildhall banking it, so... Nanny could also drop a wonder. Uh, looks like Nomad and Nanny are fighting. Nomad's gonna be trying to shut down the trade here. Wow, Nomad's actually gonna be going for an attack on Nanny's lands. I did not expect this. We're gonna be seeing her Valkyn go down here. That's a tough loss. Her Valkyns are hundreds of gold. <clears throat> and if Nanny loses this trade, that's gonna feel pretty bad for Nanny. Nomad looks like it, they want blood though. Is Nomad gonna be sending reinforcements down there? We do see forward infrastructure, so it's going to be horsemen and barracks, and uh, is he making knights? Yeah, he's making the elite gilded knights. The fight rages on in the English lands. Uh, the Abbasid have lost a little bit of ground, uh, and the Abbasid are running out of wood, which is going to be a problem. They won't be able to make a lot of their core units anymore. The gold is only at 4,500. Is he still getting trade? If the Abbasid trade got shut down, that would be pretty devastating. It looks like the trade did get cut uh, in favor of army. Yeah, I think he's only got a couple traders going, delivering 40 a pop. So if the English player just continues this War of Attrition, I think they will win it. Yeah, Nomad wants the cross-map trade. I don't blame them. That's certainly pretty big. Really good use of the Revolquins from the French. Those things are devastating against, like, mass infantry-based armies. One of them does go down to the spring all focus fire, but he's got plenty of those. And, um, yeah, the Abbasid are for sure going to lose this forever war, I think. I think the English... This is what the English are best at. I think the Abbasid had a window to win. Like, if Ventus was also a Conqueror 3 player with the same amount of resources... Uh, and all of that. I think he could have beaten the English earlier with the artillery advantage he had with the 18 mangonels. You mix some culverins in and you could just kind of squash the English armies over and over. But it's hard to say. So per Nanny, Nomad and Nanny have finally reached an agreement. Okay. So it seems they, well, I don't know about the, it doesn't look like much of an agreement here, guys. It kind of looks like, uh, kind of looks like Nanny hunting. However, we are two minutes behind, so uh, perhaps that is the case. So he's going to be torching those down. Meanwhile, on the other side, the English army moves in, and we do see the Abbasid beginning to fall. Look at this! Oh my god, Zeridium! Oh, he's such a troll! Oh my god, so Zeridium rolls up in Nomad's base, just all dirty, listening to some Ying Yang twins, just running over all these bad boys. Wow, okay, so he gets up in those villagers. He's actually going for the Palace of Swabia? Oh my god, he's such a troll! So N Nomad's eco got pounded there. He lost a lot of villagers, and his army's coming back, but the Swabia does have emergency repairs, so it should be okay. He has the torch damage buff from the scouts, which is hilarious. So this is actually really funny, dude. What a villain. Uh, emergency repairs kick in. It probably is going to save that, but the torch damage uh, is... That's actually a really cool combo. i got to utilize that more. Like, torch damage buff on the uh, on the horseman with the... Oh, is he going to get it? And he's gulping. He's gulping, and down goes the Palace of Swabia. That is going to be so annoying. Wow. Nomad is just getting reamed on so many fronts. Now, as far as this fight goes, uh, we see Ventus is really, really bare on resources. He's having a bad time. He does have one mangonel. We see the English pouring in with waves and waves of units. Dude, look at the longbows! With that volley fire ability? Damn, they're anti-artillery longbows! Look at them just melting those. Men at arms are on their way, and we see the mangonels coming up to try and counter them. Ventus is like with one desperate last stand here, but the men at arms are gonna bum rush those. 
probably be able to give him the dirty. Dude, those English longbows were just causing all sorts of havoc. Dude, Zeranium is so such a troll here. He just like rolls into Ventus's base, or excuse me, into uh, Nomad's base every couple minutes. <laughs> Nomad has like been suffering this whole game. Anatan bullied him super hard. You know, it's just been nonstop bullying. So the English men at arms get on top of the artillery. That's a pretty colossal loss there. Um, Ventus struggling to micro the artillery there a little bit, but playing very well. I mean, this is a very tough opponent to play against. And he's holding on like a Chad, but um, he is at his last draw here, guys. He is running out of resources. And the English players just got waves and waves of reinforcements coming, and uh, it's not going to stop. Looking at the English bank, Scatterbrain looking pretty good on food and wood, which is what you need to sustain these fights. A lot of the Ghulams getting poked down. Bombards are now in position, and uh, they're going to be retreating back and gathering up and just continuing to farm. And what is Nomad going to be doing? Nomad probably wants to go after the, uh, the forces of Zeranium, but you can't. Zeranium is gathering another raiding force. So he's got his torches and scouts. He's going to be going up there. And is Nomad going to be attacking the English in the corner? I don't know. Maybe. I don't think he can afford to. Uh, he's letting Nomad trade here. So Nomad's getting some trade. It's only 39, though. Nanny secures the dank trade, though. Nanny gets, like, that sweet corner trade. 46 a pop. That's a hell of a lot of Ghulams, boys. Definitely need some hand cannoneers with some crossbows to wear them down. I mean, the, the bows can do it. It just takes 100 years. English men at arms are pretty tanky, but they have way less HP. The Ghulams, of course, have more HP but less armor, and they do more damage than English men at arms. So. Dude, look at the longbows just countering. Oh, my God. He just counters the mangonels with his longbows. It's insane. Absolutely insane. So looking at Zeranium's bank, somebody in chat wants to know. It's pretty damn good. 43,000. I wonder what the price of stone is right now. Uh, Stone is currently at, uh, for something that I can't see it on the dead market, so let's see if I can find it here. We're going to see where the trade is going. It should be at the far end of the Empire. Um, where is it? Where is your trade? Where are you going, Cotton Eye Joe? I don't know. We'll, we'll check in a minute. So, he's gathering up on the English border. Are the English going to go wonder? I don't think so. He could have called for peace with um, Ventus. Ventus is so rich, but... His bank is pretty heavily diminished, although he's gotten it back. He switched on to uh, wood quite a bit. They could they could end up 2v1-ing here. So Nomad's going to be going for the English up in the top corner. My guess is that my star uh, Wonders People Ventus has turned the lobby against Orange, maybe. Yeah, Orange is going to have a bit of a tough hold here, that's for sure. In the meantime, the Byzantines will probably keep raiding, which is really funny. Uh, I wonder if the Byzantines are going to attack, or are they just going to chill and be kind of semi-AFK in the corner? Yeah, man, it's crazy. If Anatan had just killed Nomad earlier, it'd be such a different game. It'd be such a different game. Yeah, and the English player definitely is not going to be able to handle a 2v1 here. Uh, against, like, a full order army plus a full army of the um, of the other player of the uh, of the Abbasid. That's going to be far too much to handle. Uh, meanwhile, in the south, I'm surprised. I feel like maybe Scatterbrained isn't politicking enough. You know, he, he, could say, he, could, he could try and argue that there's a French player on the bottom. You know, banking. I'm not sure how that's going to go. You do see the armies of uh, Nomad getting uh, pounded here a little bit. Nomad's bank sucks. It majorly sucks. He's not going to be able to replenish his armies as he loses them. Oh, Zeridium! Come on, Zeridium. Go raid Nomad again for the memes. Let's go. We got to see the raid. We got to see that. So, yeah, that army gets squashed, but now we see the Abbasid getting in. They're building battering rams on their opponent's border, and the English player should be able to react to this. He does get attacked here, and we are going to be seeing uh, Nomad probably... Like, look at Nomad's bank, guys. Where are, you, where are you going with this? Come on, go raid Nomad again. It's hilarious. <laughs> is he going to try and raid into the English place? That ain't going to go well for you, buddy. This is like his move he does every couple minutes. Uh, okay. So he moves a couple of horsemen literally into the army here. They're going to get massacred. The Abbasid are ramming down the top of the base. And Nanny is probably going to be having some wonder play at some point here. If nobody touches Nanny, Nanny might actually find a way to win this. I mean, there's enough stone in here almost. We're at, let's see, 5,700, give or take? Yeah, 5,700. All right. I don't know what that random haggard-ass horseman raid was trying to accomplish. He's literally got, like, a couple back there. Homs easily chases off Nomad, but you're going to have to go deal with the uh, Abbasid in the back of your base now, so... He's going to need to rebuild these walls and rotate that way and uh, go deal with it. Because that raid is not going to be fun. It ain't going to be fun. He's still trading. Respectable amount of trade. Meanwhile, on the bottom, walls getting deleted here by Teal. Okay, so what's the purpose of this? Is Nanny going to backstab the forces of Zeranium 
and then maybe go for a wonder play? I don't think so. That wall is being rebuilt. We do see the Abbasid getting into the base, but we have the White Tower and Barkshire here as well. So that's a pretty stalwart position to attack into. Those keeps will provide you a lot of staying power. A Nomad's coming back with another army. Where did he even get the resources from? He's literally only has 28 on food. So it looks like he's gonna move in and the Abbasid army is gonna get taken down. Uh, likely because of the static defenses. Barkshire Palace is also picking off a lot of these men at arms, so they'll they'll be going down for sure. Uh, Nomad's moving up here, and Zerenium is just kind of banking, dude. Are we going to be seeing the dreaded gold player win this? He's making more horsemen and just doing his periodic raids, which has been doing some work. Uh, he's splitting up his army, which is smart, and he goes deal with these two kind of two-pronged attacks here. We do see the Bombard Cannon getting a little bit of work in there. Definitely makes sense to take down the corner player, though. It definitely does. The corner players, they gotta go. So a lot of elite longbowmen torching away here. And yeah, that's a lot of DPS, man. Those longbows hitting. But if some of the land snakes get into melee with them, it's gonna be a, a tough one for them, actually. Barkshire Palace, though, doing good. Uh, a couple battering rams are trolling away. Looks like there were some cannon emplacements, and the, uh, the Abbasid have been forced back. I think the English player will hold this. He's got enough longbows and good enough military that I think he's gonna be a-okay. I wonder about his politics, though. I wonder. There's going to be a little political action coming in from the English. Clearly, you don't want this to continue. He's the only one who has enough stone to do anything. His trade is being harassed in the back. A couple spearmen are nearby. Definitely needs to rebuild some of the walls if he can. Nanny, though. Look at this. Nanny Yori backstabbing Ventus. Not a bad idea. Ventus is, uh, you know, busy in war. Okay. So Nanny rolls out and attacks into Ventus here. Which is going to take a ton of pressure off of uh, off of uh, Scatterbrain. Which means Scatterbrain, if he wants to, could probably roll in and easily kill Nomad. Like, easily. Nomad's armies uh, just get perpetually crushed by the late game English forces. And there's a random relic there. Oh, it looks like the English player had a couple relics. But, yeah, the fact that Nanny moved out and attacked into the middle and killed a bunch of buildings is probably going to turn the Abbas's attention elsewhere. They're not going to be looking to focus the English anywhere up in the north. Yeah. Order of the Dragon is going to uh, be getting pushed back now by a mass amount of longbows. And even though the longbows don't do a ton of damage, I mean, even if it's only one damage, it's enough. There's enough of them that they can wear down those targets. He's got the walls rebuilt, needs to get his farms back online, get those relics re-secured, and uh, call it a good old day here. So here comes the old English moving up, and Order of the Dragon losing that fight. No surprises. Wow, big fight in the middle as well. What the hell is happening? Oh my god, we got Zerinium! Backstabbing into Nana Yori. This game is getting crunk. It is getting absolutely crazy. Micro conflicts all over the map. Uh, and the Abbasid might actually dogpile in on Nana Yori as well in that too. But we'll see if the uh, if the old Byzantines are going to have as much success as they had earlier. They let Nanny Nanny Yori Nanny Yori live earlier, which could have ended up being a mistake. Nanny might have grown too strong for the uh, for the old uh, for the old Byzantines. We're going to have to find out. We got Chatterfax coming in with almost 500 HP. Absolute raid bosses. And the English player is probably just going to steamroll over and kill Nomad. He should. Uh, the Abbasid, however, look like they still want a little bit of action. I don't know. We're going to see. If the Abbasid do not help, though, Nomad is probably going to be dying. So now, this war is probably going to be a forever war. I think these two are going to fight. I don't know if there will be any peace at this point. We do see a lot of cataphracts charging in. John Dark in a little bit of danger. Definitely don't want to lose her. She gives a lot of nice buffs to your uh, troops and whatnot. Although this one, I believe, has the Valor's Inspiration. No, Strength of Heaven. That's right. So that's a little bit different there. Uh, Rebalquin's getting trashed, and honestly, it kind of looks like the elephants of the Byzantine Empire, the mercenaries, are going to win this fight. We'll have to see. A couple random archers poking away here, and the English just crushing Nomad's armies. So Nomad being sent back to the old uh, to the old pits once again, but Nomad does have good trade. He's got 50 trade, so I suppose that's what's keeping him back in the fight. And the English player is just being a turtle, which is pretty smart. Like, just sit in your base, don't overextend, you know, let people waste their resources upon your walls and uh, and go from there. Just a random culver and shooting a tower here. But let's watch the Forever War. Dude, these elephants are just jacked. They're carrying this hard. Um, and let's look at the bank of Nanny. Nanny does have a very good bank, so they are going to be, fight for, be able to fight for a long time, but so too does Zerinium. Zerinium's bank is even better, actually. 59.48, can spam those units. And also olive oil, right? You're going to be able to get olive oil all freaking day, all night. So 60,000 food, Nanny Yori sitting at 36. Gold for them is relatively equal, but the, the food economy for the Byzantines is probably going to be a lot better. Yeah, they have a really... Whoa, wait. Did the Byzantines just delete all of their food eco to go all in? Oh my god, Byzantines are 174 military. They're going all in to kill Nanny here. 
Wow. So, I mean, in theory, they should be able to beat Nanny. If Nanny doesn't, like, match that military might. And keep in mind, there's no Red Palace here. So this is not going to be, like, some crazy good landmark. Nanny Yori with some good cannon micro, able to trade well into the enemy artillery. But the elephants are still going, and this is so much pressure. There's so much pressure coming in. Yep, looks like a couple cannons do get taken down. The English uh, back to their forever war here with Ventus. So Ventus has been able to rebuild quite a bit since then. And uh, Nomad probably needs to be selfish for a little while and just try and build up bank. But the problem for uh, Zeranium is Zeranium could run out of food and, and resources. Like, And then if you go all in and it fails and your opponent isn't all in, uh, you're going to have a bad time. So most of the olive oil has been spent. The elephants are raid bossing in the front line. Look how many bombards there are, though. They need to be targeting the enemy bombard cannons. It looks like Zeranium is not targeting them too much, although he does end up killing them right there. So he gets the job done. Yeah, this military is fat. 170 military. Uh, looking at Nanny's bank, he is hemorrhaging resources pretty fast, having to kind of fight this perpetual wave of pressure. We now have some chair sea phones coming in, so those would be Byzantine battering flamethrowers. So they'll be able to wear those down. We see the Revolvements in the front line going. Nanny with a million spring alls. Very well played. Zerinium needs to grab some units and go over here and deal with the spring alls. But he is targeting. Okay, spring alls getting popped by bombard cannons. Not the most cost effective trading in the world, but. Certainly better than nothing. Uh, flamethrowers are online. We see the Chad Varangian guard gulping some of that sweet Jesus juice as they keep advancing in. A couple horsemen trying to dive the artillery. Uh, but yeah, the bombard cannon's doing well, and Nanny Ori could be in danger. I mean, the resources are running out. Food, wood is almost out. So only 3,000 wood left. Uh, the bank of Zeranium is just chungus. It is colossal. So he's going to be able to keep pouring these huge armies in. Meanwhile, we do see the Spring Alts doing a very good job. So Nanny Ori definitely seems to have slightly better micro in this engagement overall. But I think the brute force of the Byzantine Empire is probably going to be getting it done. And he's not going to have enough wood to replace the, those anti-siege. And Nanny, let's look at Nanny's situation. Only 3,000 wood, that's what she said. And uh, the elephants are still just jacked. They absorb missiles really well. Like Elephants are excellent in that situation. The English player just chilling in the corner, which is smart. I think Nomad realized, he's like, why am I helping, you know, Ventus? Let me go in the corner and chill out as well. The so Jean d'Arc has fallen. The French are losing ground. Nanny Ori's military is 96. Looking at the Byzantine military, it is just colossal. It is 160 right now. Those elephants are big. They're pissed. Bombard cannons are rolling up, and we're going to start seeing landmarks being compromised here relatively soon. Uh, College of Artillery did fall, I think, did it? I, I could have sworn it was around here. Yeah, we see the School of Cavalry, we see this. Uh, College of Artillery has fallen, and then the last landmark is the Guild Hall, which is still collecting stone. It has a fair amount of stone, actually. But the Byzantines, this is uh, pretty interesting. The fact that he's going all in like this and having such success. Yeah, he's moving, he's grooving, man. And cannoneers of Nanny. Nanny falling back into the entrenchment of his own base. But the elephants are doing a ton of damage. Uh, they fight pretty well in melee, but they also have crossbows on top, so they can do a fair amount of damage from the top of their mighty war beasts. Ground is being lost up by Nanny, slowly but surely. Villagers are being pulled. Nanny Ori's uh, food bank. Yeah, Nanny's probably going to die here. Only 3,000 food left. Um, the bank of the Byzantines was just so big that they were able to just, you know, afford this war. It's kind of interesting to see that, right? Like, uh, yeah, just the bankroll and the perpetual warfare. It's very fun. English have not gotten their relics back online. A little bit bronze Odia there, but I'm sure they will. And what's going on here? We see Nomad rolling and coming to the help of aid of Nanny. Interesting. I'm not sure why you would do that. Um, if I were Nomad, I would want Nanny to die. Because then what that means is you get Nanny's cross-map trade. I don't know what's going through Nomad's mind right now. Like, why would you help Nanny? Why? Doesn't make any sense to me. But Zeranium's going to keep the push going, and Nanny Ori is uh, sitting at 800 food right now. So shouldn't be too much going. Good quality army coming with Chera Sea phones and the whole picture, the full Monty. He does have a couple troops at the gatehouse here, not going to be able to get through. But yeah, I, I don't know why Nomad would do that. It's a very potato play, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe it's just because he's... I don't know. Yeah, because, like, dude, let let him die. You get the cross-map trade, right? And then Nomad has this whole side of the map to himself. There's no reason to save Nanny here, like, whatsoever, if you're playing smart. Uh, nonetheless, we do see the Tower Elephants butchering through. Nanny's uh, going to start running out of, you know, production at this point. He's not going to be able to produce too much more. Uh, he's getting a lot of artillery, but, you know, again, everything's running very low for him, and the Byzantine pressure is really, really adding up. And he's coming through the gatehouse? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, he is moving in there. 
Uh, meanwhile, we have this forever war here between the English and the uh, and the old, uh, not Byzantines, but the English and the Abbasid. Nomad want to help Sandy because he was bugging him half the game. I don't. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, I guess. Okay. You know what? That 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 is the one angle I could see. Nomad has been getting raided by Zerinium the entire game. Um, Nomad's base was just constantly getting trolled. So I think that that explains a little bit of it to me. Because it's just, from a tactical perspective, it doesn't make sense. This is like uh, a classic, classic case of uh, a blood feud outshining an actual intelligent play. Uh, so he's, he's going he's gonna to lose that. I mean, and Naniori would be dead if it weren't for this intervention. The intervention might save him. We'll have to see. He might still be able to fight off that Order of the Dragon Army. He's going straight for the last landmark, and Naniori already claimed the stone. If he just gets the last landmark, that's going to seal the deal. So the Bombard Cannons are moving. Nani's base is pretty much in shambles. And uh, Nomad is not going too hard, though. It's just like one army. So if the Byzantines gather their forces and just fight this Order of the Dragon Army, they can continue their onslaught and, you know, do their thing. We do see some uh, Chad... Shatterfrax battling away here, tearing through some of the artillery. Bombard Cannon's going to knock down the defensive keeps. Uh, but a lot of horsemen coming in to help. There are a couple of and I in there as well. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's just, uh, you know, they're just doing it. This is personal. It sure looks like it. To me, it doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. You know, I like, dude, it's such a foolish play for Nomad. If he if he just lets him die, he gets cross-map trade and he has a chance of winning the game. With Nanny alive, you don't get cross-map trade. You have another person that can backstab you at any point. It's just... Uh, you know, I, I thought he would know better. You know, Nomad's one of our veterans. Uh, down here, we do see Naniori stabilizing, but very, very close to death. The Byzantines will probably finish off the Order of the Dragon here and then push back in and continue. But they really need to continue. Uh, Zerinium's bank is running out, actually. Okay, so that was kind of Zerinium's potentially last hoorah. He has no gold anymore, and now he's rebuilding villagers, it looks like. He's got a lot of horsemen coming. He could still finish off Nani if he just moves in. Uh, it's very possible. I don't think Nomad's going to come in with any more. The Forever War up at the top is there. And, uh, yeah, the English look to be winning it, I guess. Looking at the bank of both players. Uh, Scatterbrained looking pretty good economically. And Ventus is looking even better. Wow. So Ventus is Ecos. He's been trading nonstop pretty much this entire time. You see Nanny doing a little bit of counter raiding here. A lot of archers coming out. Order of the Dragon Boys will get worn down. Nanny got pretty heavily crippled by that fighting. Um, he's currently still has 101 eco though, so he might be able to rebuild. Let's we'll see. He's getting his TC back online, and um, I don't know. Is Nomad going to come back down here? Here he comes. Nomad is known for getting into blood feuds uh, due to endless salt. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Well, it, it's going to be his downfall. He, Nomad's chances of winning the game are slipping rapidly. Um, because if Nomad had just let the cross map trade happen, then he would he would actually be a contender. Like Nomad would have 140 trade, the same as what Anaten had, if Nanny dies. You know, but instead of he's I don't know why he's helping Nanny. That's so strange. I mean, Zerinium is all the way across the map. He's really not a huge threat to you. Uh, over here, yep. The Forever War continues. I'm sure these players are just both pouring sweat on their keyboards, just so standing in a pool of sweat and salt. Uh, those cannons thumping away the defenses. It looks like the Abbasid are doing a little bit of a split push. Very, very troll. You gotta love to see it. A couple English defenders gonna be sallying forth to deal with that. In the meantime, at the bottom, we see the Abbasid or the Byzantine army gathering. And uh, he didn't rewall this. There is a little bit of a raid going into his base here. So if he doesn't notice that, that's gonna feel pretty bad. A couple gilded, chatted arms are in his base and they're causing havoc. Uh, Nanny Ori's bank, pretty much non existent. Looking at Zerinium's bank, it's still okay. He's got it's a couple thousand food left here and there, but probably going to see these men at arms going down to the TCs. I'll continue running back. We're not sure. But yeah, he really wants to kill Nanny. He's going for it, man. Zerinium is also known to blood feud and avoid wonders. Oh, really? We got some blood feuds, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. You know, playing Age of Empires FFA, I thought it taught me a lot about Dune Spice Wars and vice versa. Like, how to not be the biggest nail to get hammered down and, you know, only go for the, the win when you really have the power. It's, um, it's really fun. It's really fun. By the way, I wanted to ask you guys, while we have a little bit of downtime in the action, what do you guys, have you guys heard about the game Solium Infernium, I think is what it's called? I've been recommended that game by, like, seven or eight people, and, um, apparently it has some really good, like, FFA shenanigans and other things that you can do. So I'd be curious to see what, um, you guys have to say about that. Nice Culverin usage as well. Uh, Nomad is torching the middle. Wow, okay. So Nomad is torching the middle here. He's actually killing all of Ventus's buildings. He's got some raiders at the back of the base. He's just kind of trolling away at Old Green. Green is here. 
he should definitely down. keep the pressure up if he can, but I think he needs to get his economy back online. You can see the olive fields are being rebuilt, and um, yeah, the Palpatine school is making nest of bees. Makes that, no, that makes sense. Up top here, the English able to snipe all the culverins, uh, but not before the culverins get the English bombards. Did they? No, they did not. The English bombards were able to escape, so. I don't know if the English will win this forever war, man. I mean, Vences' eco is pretty jacked also. The Ambassador are getting 2,700 food a minute, and the English are getting uh, 34, so pretty comparable. Someone described me as extremely mean multiplayer betrayal game. That sounds fun. Daybox says, I've been playing it. Uh, it's it's slow turn-based, but definitely made for a wild FFA backstabbery. How slow are we talking, though? Like, is it going to be like uh, like Age of Wonders? Like, is it like a Paradox game? I'd be curious about that. All right. So, once again, hand cannoneers blasted away and uh, really melting the Abbasid army. The English bombard cannons are coming a little bit unsupported here, but they are going to be able to knock down some of the markets, I guess, which is cute. And uh, Nomad just clearing out the middle of the map. He's kind of he's kind of being the algae here. He's moving in, torching down all these buildings. And over on the west, Nomad is going to be ramming in. So he's he's trolling into the old Byzantine base pretty well. The Byzantine player has not reacted to this. Uh, looks like he's continuing his conflict with Nanny, but doesn't have the stopping power he had earlier. Nanny is back online, does have 2,000 food a minute again, so is it going to be able to make some military? But Nomad's little trolling back here, actually not bad. Um, that's going to be pretty obnoxious. He does have some units that he needs to send in, but man, he was so close to killing Nanny, but then the Nomad intervention, huh? Horsemen swarming, uh, probably going to get wrecked by these for Balkwin. Nanny Yori fighting like an absolute chad. The English player looks to have gotten into the base and is causing a lot of havoc here for Ventus. Ventus is also losing a lot of infrastructure on in the middle of the map, so we see quite a bit going down here. Yeah, quite a bit. Up in the north, what do we got? Yeah, bombard cannons killing uh, a lot of uh, buildings, but not doing too much lethal damage. This could be the English player's time. His military supply is sitting at 111, Ventus probably far less. 53 so the English military is a lot better and the trade is now offline so the gravy train of gold is going to be gone and Ventus is now being kind of backstabbed a little bit by by uh Nomad no Nomad looks like he's going for Xeranium again I love it this is so haggard oh my god and he gets that landmark in the back Xeranium I think is struggling to micro on two fronts here he needs to go back and clear out Nomad which is what he's going to be doing but now Nomad is coming in cross map to raid man imagine if uh Nomad had that cross map trade though oh he would be so powerful he, he could definitely win the game. If he got cross map and just built like a wonder, like in the corner here, or like maybe like up in his base, like right here, there could be some shenanigans for sure. So the English got the bombards. They have their towers. Upgrading some cannon towers here would be actually a really good play for Scatterbrain. It seems as if um, Ventus is not really making too much anti uh, build, building anymore. It's mainly mangoes and culverins. English army's moving up. Keeps are uh, definitely good targets. If the bombards, like knocking down the keeps is like good permanent damage, right? But it looks like he's sniping the enemy artillery where he can. Now the cannon's gonna be switching into the barracks here and Ventus looks like he's on death's bed. Um, if somebody does not intervene soon, I think Scatterbrained is gonna get the kill here. We do see the uh, battering ram setting up shop. And yeah, he's getting into the base, man. Is there any even Ventus are likely? Yeah, he's getting, he's getting full villain here. I, 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 though the, the decision making is haggard, I love the hag the evilness of Nomad here. It's just so funny. Just the blood feud. He's going all the way across the map to go after this guy. <laughs> the horseman raiding though was so troll. I bet you that was so frustrating. Like, he kept looking back. I understand it. I understand it. I respect it. You know? <laughs> so England is going for the landmarks. Uh, they're trying to work their way in, just farming the enemy armies. Uh, Ventus is, is building what he can, but um, his army is very, very weak now. It's very, very weak. Yeah. Okay, so the base is being plowed. The uh, units pouring out or dying as they come out of the barracks. Certainly not good. English uh, does have a well, more or less a full army here with five bombards. He's going to be going for the House of Wisdom. I don't know if he knows where it is, but yeah, he's killing quite a bit. The Abbasid trying to form a resistance. They're trying to form a pocket of units instead of trickling in, which is smart. So trying to get a critical mass to push back the English player. But the English player is finally building his network of towers, so he's going to be getting just superior armies. And his army also has more gold than, uh, than the Abbasid army does. We see a lot of horsemen, we see a lot of archers. The English army, I guess, has a lot of longbows, but a shit ton of hand cannoneers and men-at-arms as well. And fighting the choke points like this, absolute disaster. You're going to have such a bad time. Um, they're just getting mowed down by the attack speed hand cannoneers, all those different units. And Ventus also losing a little bit of infrastructure in the middle, so he's losing production all over the place. 
So Zeranium able to fend off the attack. Nani Yori also coming in for vengeance. So we could see a 2v1 here. Nomad doesn't really have good supply lines though. Uh, he's running from all the way across the map, but it looks like Nanny is out for blood. Nanny wants revenge. Nanny was so close to being dead. Uh, Zeranium, my game is lagging and freezing. Oh, he crashed. Oh, that's too bad, Will. That's too bad. It is what it is. You gotta upgrade your computers, boys. You gotta do it. Or get off the Wi-Fi. Zeranium is down from a crash. Yeah, that's too bad. I mean, he certainly wasn't in a winning position anymore, to be fair. Um, his bank is pretty pretty dead. His eco is pretty dead. Nanny was probably going to be able to get him with the help of Nomad, but it is a shame that he crashed. But um, it is what it is. Now the battle rages on here. Back to the action. There will now be four players left in the game. There will be four players left. The Abbasid, though, are potentially in a situation where they could be going down here. Green mods, are there any special rules? No special rules. You just joined the lobby. Zeranium, you did really well. You were so close to killing Nanny. You were so close, but then the uh, the blood feud from across the map came and got you, man. You play, you did the Byzantines proud, my friend. You did them very proud. Let's see how this fight actually goes. So we see a lot of Revolquins. Manganel shooting in as well. Nandiori's army doing pretty well in this fight, but we do know that he's going to be crashing here in a second. And uh, yeah, longbows of the English just gaining ground. They're not losing really anything. Their bombards are still in good shape, just kind of demolishing... He forces a Ventus. Ventus is basically toast. I think he's going to be out of this game. Nomad is preparing a backstab, which is a good call, because um, he's going to need Ventus' help. If you are scatterbrained here, I think you need to go all in to kill kill the uh, Abbasid. Because every time you pull back to deal with this, you know, um, it's just giving him so much time to recover and breathe. So that will probably be the end here. I'll do some fast forwarding so we can get to the crash. Uh, and yeah, he fends off Nanny Yuri's attack, and then it looks like he's going to be crashing shortly after this. Now back up in the base, we do see Nomad. Nomad jacking the relics. That's maybe all he wanted. The Wololo's going down as well. So Nomad comes in and jacks the relics. GG. Nice. So Nomad is going to be up to Penta Relic now. With Tithe Barns, that's pretty good. And the English, of course, going to fend him off. Now I would imagine the English player will go back down soon to attack. Uh, but Nomad makes some good progress. He's able to get through those. We're fast forwarding up to the live state of the game. Let's, let's get to the live point here. He's still in the game as of now. But there's the disconnect right there. Damn shame, Jimmy. Damn shame. And now the Abbasid War Machine is coming as well. But I don't think Nomad is really committing to this fight. I think he just wanted the relics. I think he just wanted the relics. Yes, yes. All right. So uh, we're not quite live yet. Wall's going to get rebuilt. The English going to go battle the Abbasid here. He's been he's been duking it out here. Nanny Ori going to go scavenging uh, and looking for the goodies. And yeah, the English corner player, man, he's been fighting like an absolute beast this entire game. He's been hanging in there. Like 2v1, 3v1 at some points. It's an absolute beast. Uh, and the Abbasid army should be thwarted here with a little bit of micro. Oh my god, those mango shots. Jesus. Okay, that that was really dodgy there. And he's being attacked on the other side. He does manage to rewall, which is going to be keeping Nomad at bay for a minute. Allowing him to fight here. But they're going after the corner English player pretty hard. Which again, makes sense. Man, he was so close to killing Ventus. There's been so many plays in this game where people have just been on death's bed. It's a shame we've had two disconnects, but... Yeah, Nanny is definitely looking to be in a good position. Nanny is, has really good FFA instincts and is probably going to be able to slap down a wonder potentially. Like, if we do see the death here of Scatterbrained to a 2v1, although I feel like he's going to be able to hold for a long time. Nomad's economy, though, is more or less back online. He's got his farms. He's got all the goodies going. And the Abbasid are... Um, yeah, not sitting on a whole lot. Not sitting on a whole lot. Nomad's been a wild card this game. He's kind of just been doing his own thing. We're about to be caught up to the live state of the game. Nomad did save Ventus. And it looks like Scatterbrained is going to be poking away here. His hand cannon army, scooting and shooting, doing big damage. But the Gilded Land Snakes also doing some good work. Sorry, we're just fast forwarding to catch up to the live game. Shots in the dark. Too bad there's no Mongol. Too. Guys, can you imagine if there was a Mongol player? Oh my god, look at the feasting they would have. I'm surprised we didn't have a single Mongol player. Pretty wild. Scatterbrain fighting like an absolute beast here. We do see him uh, pulling back into his base. Nomad got his two relics. If you're a Nomad, I think you've got to let your opponents kill each other, man. Instead of like, people keep intervening and saving people. I think that's like some Bronzodia play, honestly. I think you've got to just let them like take one another out. Because they keep saving one another. And, oh, is he going to get the wall up? And the wall does get completed. It cannot be... Uh, oh, he better repair that wall if he can. It's got 33 HP. He's moving into his base here. I mean, could we see Nomad getting some danger here? The French... Like, the French player cackling in the corner definitely is something that you need to use politically. 
Nanny's back up to a fair amount of eco. He does have enough stone to wonder, does he? He does not. So it looks like he did collect some stone earlier. And uh, yeah, he's going to be forced back to his base. Every time he goes out to kill someone, he gets poked on the other side, which has got to be pretty frustrating, I would imagine. But look, if you're in the corner uh, and you're the English, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So Ventus is duking it out, going after the old uh, infrastructure here. His eco is not going to be good enough to sustain another war, although he does have 10,000 food again. The Abbasid food economy is very respectable. Uh, this will probably re be rewalled for the English. Looking at Scatterbrained, uh, he needs to build some houses. That's for sure. His wood economy is pretty much uh, non-existent. He does have 20,000, though, so it's not terrible. The White Tower is going to stand firm and help fend off some of the attackers here. And it uh, looks like he does garrison all of his villagers. English army coming back across. And uh, will the English go for the kill on the Abbasid? We see the House of Wisdom. We see the main TC over here. No, that's not it. The main TC is it. Where is it? Is it around here somewhere? Okay. So keep taking tabs of all the locations. Yeah, Nanny's getting cross map trade soon, um, which is going to be extremely foul. So Nanny definitely could be a favorite to win this if they play their cards right. Okay, now finally, Nomad's making a good tactical play. He's securing the cross map trade. I was getting a little bit sad. I was like, come on, Nomad. There were so many times where he could just secure massive power. And imagine if he hadn't helped Nanny. Nanny would be dead and this player would have disconnected and Nomad could have just traded while these two just fought each other. You know. Yeah. This whole game has been an object lesson in killing people when you have a chance. 100% true. China's becoming the new meta. They're one of the strongest and everyone fears Japan, Jushi, and Otto way more. Yeah. That, that's that's very good uh, very good insight there. You better build some houses, homie. He's going to need some houses. He's got a bunch of houses being built back here. Uh, probably going to move in. Good play from Ventus, though. Ventus is playing exceptionally well. Fighting a Conk 3 player and, you know, keeping him on his back foot. And even though he was on the brink of losing a couple times, you know, he's, he's doing very well for himself. So Scatterbrain is going to get those houses up finally. Uh, he's building one at a time. So that's going to take a minute. Now we're going to have a Mortal Kombat between these two players. Yeah, English is, England is for sure a proper target, but so are the French. A French player with guild hall is always a target, in my opinion. Um, you know, if you leave them to their own devices, they're going to have, you know, 25, 30,000 stone. They're going to wander and have like 12 keeps around it, you know. So yeah, they're they're usually a valid target. So we're going to be seeing a fight between Nanny and, um, and Nomad. Nomad probably regretting saving Nanny earlier now, although I don't know if he was actually saving him. Did he know he was saving him? It's hard to say. But the English player should get its War Machine back online and just steamroll straight back into the base here. Ventus lost so much. He does have 13,000, but his wood is very low. His gold is very low. Hopefully the English player doesn't get too passive now, you know, fearing maybe uh, the 2v1. Although he probably doesn't know what's going down on the south side of the map. Uh, a lot of Nanny's army does lose. He mainly had a horseman there, so the uh, gilded chads were able to fight those bad boys off. No mercy for the corner English. Yeah, that's fair. Corner English is very, very strong. We are going to be seeing siege workshops being rebuilt here. The English do have the walls back online and they are being repaired. And the English army... Oh, they're going to go kill Nomad now. The one thing I think, I feel like Scatterbrained is not politicking. That's one thing that I think our community does very well is that we have a lot of good politicians. But it um, looks like he's going to go kill Nomad. One, two... Wow, are all his landmarks like right next to each other? Two, three, and... Um, I believe that... Oh, it's up here. Okay. So he's going to go for the kill on Nomad. But like every time he leaves, he should really just go focus on um, on the Abbasid and try and finish him off. Because these two are fought, you know, caught up in a war down here as well. Yeah. The Forever Wars continue to an extent. Um, the Abbasid, I, I don't know, maybe Ventus, Ventus probably needs to chill out here. Take this time to rebuild a little bit. We do see the English army coming in and this could be the end of uh, Nomad. Depending on how quickly the Abbasid attack, it, it's going to determine a lot. So Nomad's immediately going to be panicking and building units at home, but Order of the Dragon does not muster army super quickly. So he's going to get the three landmarks. We're going to see the Town Hall going down, and he's going to go looking with his men-at-arms for the Swabia, which is up here. Does he know it's up there? So let's look at Scatterbrain's vision. Uh, he does not know it's up there, but he's probably going to find it. Yeah, he's scouting right now. He's looking. And Scatterbrain is, is going to go for the throw, which you have to do here. You have to try and get the kill. So that's down. We're going to see this falling, and um, he's raiding into the farms. So Nomad's going to get karate chopped here, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. He could potentially die. It depends on how the English do it. He's going to go torch that down. We see the mine work going down, and he's pulling back his troopers here. He's going to consolidate his army. So that's two landmarks down. The base is under attack, though, for the English, but they should be able to fight on two fronts. 
Uh, it shouldn't be too hard for them. Yeah, he needs to get those men-at-arms taken down that landmark there. So that's going to be one, two, and three down. And the armies of uh, Nomad are probably going to get taken out by the Hand Cannoneer Legion. He needs to just get that last landmark up north, and then he wins. I mean, Nomad's basically dead at that point, right? So he knows where the last landmark is. Nomad's going to start mustering an army here very quickly. The Bombards are going for it. This could be it. This could be the end of old Nomad. He's going to probably try and panic repair some landmarks. He's got an army coming here, but the English are going for his landmark. Emergency repair is activated a little bit too early, maybe. I'm not sure. Here comes the Bombards. He just needs to protect the four Bombards and he wins. Um, is he going to be able to, though? Tough question. There's a lot of HRE boys there. And we do see the Bombards scooting and shooting a little bit, trying to get away. Big shots going down. Emergency repair is pretty clutch. And will this be the end of Nomad? A couple more Bombard shots. Is he going to get them? Oh, he kind of he screws up his micro there a little bit. Because the English base is heavily besieged. Heavily besieged. And man, it looks like it's just barely going to hold. So Nomad's going to survive by the hair of his chinny chin chin. And he just barely survives that. Wow, that was close. And now the English just need to defend their base. They lost their town center. He's probably so frustrated with this 2v1, I would imagine. But he's playing well. The English player is still very much a contender. Like, everybody here is being backstabbed and hit in some way or other, right? Everybody's getting it. Uh, so will the English go? I think that's going to change Nomad's trajectory. So that could have been a fatal blunder by the English, right? Like, attacking Nomad like that. Because now he's got two enemies again. Whereas he, he was kind of down to one because it looks like Nanny Yori and Nomad were going to duke it out. But Nanny might go and attack Nomad now too. Yeah. So Nanny is going to cruise up maybe or is Nanny just going to chill and be, do what French players typically do. The English is going to go for it again. They're sending a massive legion over there. But, you know, Nomad's armies aren't terrible anymore. He's able to get some units here. Uh, his food eco, wow, he's got four food eco. That's pretty rough. And here comes the English attackers. They're going to get wrecked by the Gilded Land Snakes. Land snakes are such a hard counter against the English men at arm blob. You guys will probably see this in effect right now. So Red Army is coming. Uh, the Ambassador gathering with a lot of bombards. Here they come. Uh, landmarks are being repaired. Are they? Yeah, he's repairing them very slowly. Very, very slowly. See, man, if English, if he just would make some horsemen, he could go in and just probably snipe the landmarks too. But English players just don't know how to make horsemen, man. I'm telling you, it's like against the law. It's it's outlawed in the land for them to make horsemen. You call a three-hour game? It could be. This is a wild one, dude. Uh, Nanny's going to be cruising in and backstabbing Nomad's trade. So Nomad's going to lose his trade now, which is very smart for Nanny because when Nomad eventually comes back, you want them to be a little bit gold starved, right? The elite men-at-arms are here, gathered up to fight the Ghulams. Ghulams are pretty giga-chad, though. They, uh, they, they definitely will win that trade. So the English are under siege, and now we're going to be seeing Nanny arrive to shut down Nomad's trading uh, gravy train. Nomad's eco is so haggard. Oh, man. I, like, I guess it's all in trade, right? Yeah, it must all be in trade. So Nanny has arrived, and Nanny is going where? Is Nanny going to Nomad's base for the snipe? I would love... I think that would be such a good play. If you snipe Nomad out, dude, that's just a power play. But the English Chad has been defending in the corner. Scatterbrain is, is just going for it. Nanny is marching up to Nomad's base, I think. Oh, man. Nomad could be in serious danger. Because he's going to be clashing with the English player here in a second. We do see the White Tower going down. It's not being repaired. Uh, and the, you know, the, the Ambassador are going to get pushed back here. Yeah, they get they get rushed. And now we see Nanny going north with a big army. Surprised he's not allocating a couple units to just start butchering the trade. But it, where, is he, where is he moving to? I'm curious. It's a good quality army. Yeah, it's a good quality army. That's for sure. Trebuchet is getting into the English base. Uh, we do have the dreaded... Uh, <laughs> The double bombard back here, it's pretty troll. The Barkshire Palace will be able to kill the bombards though. It's it's pretty mean landmark. He's going for Nomad's base. I'm really curious if Scatterbrained is politicking. We do see walls being built around the last landmark here to try and be a little bit safer. The English player is gonna be rerouting their forces to deal with this. A couple villagers trying to torch down the bombard cannons as well. But Nomad is gonna get it, I think. This is very smart. This is very, very smart by Nanny. You take advantage of the chaos and you finish off the Nomad. Now, has Nanny scouted? Uh, so we're looking at Nomad's vision. Let's look at Nanny Yori. Nanny does not know where all the landmarks are. So it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of, you know, an exploratory uh, mission here. If Nanny comes to help Nomad, that would be so weird. Uh, that would just be like the strangest thing ever. Like he's moving and he's coming up to the English player in the corner. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think you, Nomad's attacking into Nanny's army. No, they're working together. No, uh, we we're wrong. I, I I don't get this. This is weird. The, the players are playing so strange this game. 
I mean, sure, the English guy in the corner is strong, but like he's he's been like getting attacked nonstop, and he's not going to be in any sort of a position to uh, wonder threat. This is very weird. This is very weird. No, Nomad's going to live. This is a. Yeah, I, I disagree with this decision. I think it's kind of a uh, either maybe it's because they. Uh, yeah, it's just doesn't doesn't make any sense. Why you wouldn't backstack Nomad? Nomad is like tr trolling your trade. You were just fighting him. Because if you're if you're nanny, you kill Nomad and then you just wander in the corner while these two are fighting and you win. It's a super easy win. The players are making. I have to say, even though they're making some good plays, the players in this final lobby are making some very potato decisions, in my opinion. Very potato. Uh. Because Nanny has an easy win in the pocket. Okay, finally, maybe Nanny saw some reason here. It's going to be moving in to kill Nomad. You kill Nomad, you wonder, and you just win. Like, what the hell are they going to do against you? Like, they're both just so beat up and so taxed. And Nomad's a free kill. You get in and kill Nomad. All right. So Nanny's moving in now to attack Nomad. So finally, they saw some light. I was getting a little bit concerned. I was like, what have been people been, uh, you know doing today he attacks into nomad but is he going to be able to follow through and get the kill is the problem he took too long if he just moved straight into nomad's base maybe but now the land snakes are going to butcher his army here and um yeah homs is under big attack up here you see the bombards are being uh, torched down and uh yeah the rebalquins are going to massacre this army jesus christ that's a lot of damage god damn but nanny's not going to be able to probably finish the job i think nomad will find a way to stabilize but Nomad's economy has got to be in the pits of hell, right? It's got to be in the pits of hell. Um, looking at it now, it's got 188 food, so he can't, like, barely make anything. He did manage to save two cannons, too, which is good. Um, is Nanny going to be able to reinforce? Zeranium says, yep, I should have killed Nanny knowing him. I got coerced. You can't let people politic you, dude. You got you to gotta put your foot down, and you got to go for the kill. Because Zeranium, you had Nanny dead to rights. Like, twice almost. And you let him live. You can't let people live. Uh, the only time you let someone live is a, if there's an imminent threat of a wonder. That's the only time you do it. Otherwise, it's like typically a mistake. All right, so Nomad is getting his army massacred here. Jesus, those Rebalquins are just mowing down this Order army. Nomad is getting a fair amount of food still. I don't know where he's getting it from, but he does manage to snipe the cannons in the back. But Nanny really, really doing a crippling amount of damage, which maybe allows the English to go in and kill Ventus. Uh, we'll have to see. But yeah, the Rebalquin's doing great work. And also, Jeanne d'Arc can summon cannons, which is very good. So she can summon in cannon reinforcements. And Nanny does not have another army to reinforce with, so it's basically just farming Nomad's armies over and over. Nomad does not have the town center. Um, his eco is at 48. He's got a good military, though. He's holding very well. Nomad's doing great work. <laughs> Nanny is a mad scorn. There's been a lot of tre treachery this game, for sure. There's been a fair amount. Uh, I don't think these two are going to be friends anymore. I'm very happy, though, that Nanny made the right choice and attacked Nomad. Because that was the correct play. You know, that was the correct play. So, shout out to Nanny. That, finally, he, he saw it. He saw the state of the game. He saw landmarks being destroyed, and he made the right choice. So, well played to Nanny there. Well played. Uh, but Nomad, what is Nomad going to do now? Is Nomad going to attack back into the corner against Orange? Is he going to save Ventus over and over again? I mean, it kind of looks like it. He's moving here. I mean, Nanny Yori is down to the south. Nanny is making what? A uh, horseman-based army? Could definitely do some good raiding. No, he's going to go south. Maybe try and secure sacred sites. Getting a sacred site for Nomad would be good. That's, you know, a fair amount of gold per minute. And I would imagine the English army has the biggest hate boner you've ever seen. They've just been getting teamed this entire game in the corner. Which makes sense. Corner English usually need to go. That's, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Yeah. Uh, it may have just ignited another Sob Dentoff. Yeah, I think so, Sai. I think so. I think that Nanny and, and, uh, and Nomad are gonna just be, like, spite, spite attacking each other again. Oh my god, this is the most haggard FFA ever. It's been pretty great, though. I've been really enjoying this one. Um, so why is the English player sparing the Abbasid? I feel like they could kill them. The Abbasid eco is actually pretty damn good, so it'd probably be another long war. Maybe the English player just wants a breather after all that fighting to re-secure. Nomad's going to be heading down to the south. I'm looking to fight Nanny. Oh my god, I love it. They're just like having the most haggard fights. I don't know who's going to win this, guys. I have no idea. Um, I have no predictions. Guildhall has 8,000, so Nanny could wonder. We have Ventus over here just taking stuff, taking wood. That's what she said. And uh, maybe he's, maybe he's going to attack Nanny's trade. Who knows? The English player reestablishing walls all over the empire and is ready to go. I believe the English player could drop a wonder. No, he doesn't have anywhere near the stone anymore. He had to spend it on static defenses and things like that. 
English might realize Nomad's out of base again. I know, that'd be really funny if he went for Nomad again. But the Abbasid will just counterattack him every time that happens, right? So where's Nomad going? He's coming down here. What? I feel like, are we going to run out of wood on this map? No, there's plenty of wood over here. Okay, so we're not going to have any issues there. Naniori with the good cross map. Naniori has cross map trade, guys. So Nani is the cackle monster right now, pretty hard. Nomad's death is his win con. Yeah, if, if Nomad dies, although the Abbasid are no joke either, man. If you kill the Abbasid as, as um, Scatterbrained, then then you really, really are just have that whole corner up there. Because Nomad uh, is going to be fighting Nani, I think, now. We'll have to see. Nomad's army is just kind of probing, maybe looking for an opening. I don't know why it has so many spring alts. Oh, it's a deal with the Rebalquin spam. That's what it is. The French army is moving out. It's going to be attacking Ventus's uh, tertiary production out here. And I think the English player... <laughs> this English player has a hate boner for Nomad, it seems. Nomad's trying to panic build walls. I think Nomad gets home in time. But, oh man, if Nanny intercepts Nomad's army, Nomad could be straight up dead here. Uh, Nomad's bank is pretty okay. He's going to be able to make it, but all of his army's tied up down here. Oh my god, if Nanny goes west and intercepts Nomad's army, holy shit. That would just be brutal, right, as the English invaders arrive. So we're going to be seeing the men at arms maybe go up here. No, they're not. Okay, he's going to go for the main town center again. So Nomad is waddling back home to his base. The Abbasid are taking a breather. And um, but we're going to be seeing Scatterbrain get again and trying to get him again. Uh, Roos is a very good FFA sieve, but, you know, not having stone walls, is, it can be a little bit rough in Castle Age. Um, we see one landmark going down, and we're going to see the TC going down as well. The defending soldiers getting pounded, and uh, he did delete a lot of his units here. So Nomad's losing landmarks here, but only three Bombards. Okay, that's going to be another one. Is he going to be able to get him? This last landmark is going to be super entrenched. I've played against Nomad quite a bit. Nomad's really good at defending. Uh, like panic building walls, all that sort of thing. He's excellent at that. So we're going to see if he can get it. So these landmarks are getting taken down. There are plenty of walls over here. And the English archer is going to be pulling over. Burgrave Palace is down for the count. Mine work is down. TC is down. A couple uh, bills, or excuse me, men at arms are torching that. The knights are about to arrive. So we're going to see how well he can defend those. He knocks down the walls there. He needs to get his men at arms in on that. And Nomad's eco is getting hammered pretty good. But the Abbasid basically take that as an opportunity to get in and get him. And once again, I think he's going to be foiled. <laughs> oh my god, he gets in, but the cannons are compromised. Nomad with the snipe. You got to get those men at arms up there, buddy. Oh my god, and these Chad Giga Knights are just swarming him. But the men at arms are going to go for it. Nomad able to get a lot of his army back here. In the meantime, Nani Yori taking the opportunity to clear out the middle, probably preparing for a wonder. And he's got the torches on it. Oh my God, there must be so much pent up frustration in this. Is Nomad repairing landmarks? He is not, uh, he is not. We have a lot of gilded land snakes coming in. The uh, Palace of Swabia is getting torched. Is there more English reinforcements? No, England is having to defend here in their base. Oh my God, the English dude and the emergency repairs I think are gonna save him with the gilded boys coming in, villagers being pulled. Um, man, his hate boner for Nomad is pretty strong. <laughs> he definitely has a hate boner for Nomad. He keeps trying to kill him real quick. Yeah, dude, there's a lot of hate boners this game, to be fair. There's a whole bunch. So Ventus loses a lot in the middle, but uh, Ventus is getting landmarks. It looks like the TC was killed once again. The English player almost finishing off Nomad. Nomad's eco is just, just I guess, mostly food. His trade is still being allowed to go. If the English player just made some horsemen, man, he could do a lot of work. Yeah, this is going to be rebuilt, obviously, by Nomad. Uh, the English army dealing with the invading Abbasid. The Abbasid player, how's he doing on gold? So many people are just being allowed to trade, like Free Willy. Nani Ori clearing out the middle there. And this is very smart because all of that infrastructure would be used to kill Nani Ori at some point. We got culverins in there, Rebalquins, and uh, yeah, the buildings are being taken down, man. They are going down. Down, down to Party Town. The constant fight is happening up in the English. Uh, this could be a three-hour FFA. I don't know. This could. This is a grand final, so there's a little bit of money on the line, so players are going to play a little bit harder, I would imagine. Although, I don't know. The blood feuds have still been happening. you think if there was a cash prize on the line, the blood feuds would be less likely, but yeah, man. <laughs> Nomad's base has just been getting it over and over. He's building walls to try and prevent himself from being sniped. Is he going to go after the Abbasid? He might just turn and hate boner the Abbasid. Nani Yori uh, still pushing up in the middle, just removing the infrastructure. Where is Nani going to build the wonder? Where would it be? In the corner here? I mean, uh, it's uh, probably closer to landmarks. Yeah, it could probably be right here. 
This looks like this is the spot. Um, how much stone do we have? 10,000 stone in the guild hall. And Nomad is now going to be moving into Hate Boner the English. <laughs> Ventus and Nomad are the greatest of unintentional allies. They really are. They really are. Uh, Relic, please implement public chat for observers. I know. I wish we could see. I wish we could see the chat. That'd be so fun. But sadly, we can't. All right, Jean Dark. Jean Dark's going for the kill on Nomad now. Nomad's just getting hammered from every angle. Jean Dark using some Jesus juice there, but Nomad is ready, dude. Look how many spring holds he has. He saw how badly he was getting shreks by those those freaking uh, Rebalquins earlier. So now it's Culverin in time. Looks like he's gonna take the fight, but not before he takes a lot of damage. Culverin's getting popped, and um, the English are probably just like, I'm sick of this shit, dude. I'm just gonna hang out in my base. Let, let the boys fight. Culverin trading, but the spring old numbers were enough, and uh, Jean d'Arc is going to die again. Andy Ori does a slip up in the micro there, gets caught, and the Gilded Land Snake's doing great work, but yeah, I don't know, man. Why not cut off his trade, you know? If he's if you're attacking Nomad, why not go kill his trade? That's what I don't get. Are we going to be in a situation where people are going to be running out of wood? You see a million bombards. The English are just hanging in there like champs. Still plenty of wood around their base. Looks like there is a little bit of wood to be had. They're uh, lumberjacking in the back. Most of the farms are back online. I would imagine he's going to start making bills again once his TC is back online. Nanny Ori, though, for sure could steamroll. Nanny's got that sweet cross map trade. I wonder if Nanny, like, backstabs Ventus, too. That's an idea, but I feel like Ventus would defend very well. Nomad, of course, is, is very, very stalwart here. Nomad's hanging in there like an absolute chad. And is going to be setting up his huge stone walls around us. <laughs> Talk about being cautious, huh? That's 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 something. Gilded Land Snakes uh, looking like they're going to be eyeing the English. The English like corner is just a straight up war zone. It's just been desolation, uh, pillaging, just absolute constant conflict. Yes. It's like the Viking invasion all over again. Hmm. But Nanny's got that sweet cross map trade, like I said. Also, the French generate gold, passive gold from active traders, yeah. And John Dark does get that too. Nanny Ori getting a decent army, and is Nanny going to be going to... Oh, it looks like Nanny might have accidentally walled themselves out of their trade. It seems like some of the traders are taking a bit of a strange route. But yeah, like, all, all the power, like, if the English player would just, like, raid the trade of Ventus, he probably would have been able to kill him, like, 100 years ago. Uh, allowing them to just trade nonstop has, has certainly kept them in the game. And where are the English now? I think Scatterbrain is, is maybe going to hate Boner from the north now. Yeah, so here it comes. How does the wood look for the English? I think they're okay on wood. English don't really need wood too much, but they have 15,000. Yeah. English food economy is really good. So he's going to go after Ventus here. And I think uh, we're going to see a clash in the middle. So as long as Scatterbrain just focuses on Ventus, he should win eventually. I don't know how long it's going to take, because it seems like Nanny and Nomad are going to be duking it out now. Up in the north, we look, we see the English army aggressing, knocking down the gatehouse here. So we're going to be seeing the stone gate fall, fall and he will move in from there. Ventus uh, trying to rebuild infrastructure, but doesn't have that much, actually. He's still got a lot, but not, not as much as he would like. Bit of a clash in the middle, uh, as our Discord calls it, a dent off. And uh, they are going to be doing it. Do it. English will prepare to move into the Abbasid base. I wonder if... I really, really wonder if Ventus has been calling for help like this game. Like, hey, I'm about to die to Scatterbrain. Help me. I'm too weak, Palpatine. You know, whatever. The Men at Arms do. Oh, that's going to be such a loss. That's so many bombards. That's like 600 gold to pop, right, if those all die. The English player has gotten into the base. Is he going to be building towers? He is. Markets are destroyed, so that's going to be cutting trade off. Uh, 63,000 food for the English and for the Abbasid. They've rebuilt their bank pretty well, but it does go quickly. The wood and the gold are really the limiting factors on what you're going to be running with. English men at arms here definitely need to get some of those bad boys. To, they're trying to snipe with the cannons, obviously. He's trying to snipe the English, but uh, the English player has good micro, and he runs back and lures the cannons to their doom. So Ventus, just a couple rough trades like that. He does lose a lot, but again, he's fighting a very uphill battle here versus a very, very good player. So it ain't easy. It ain't easy. Bit of a scrap in the middle. These two are fighting for it. Um, Nanny, Nanny could shut down that trade over there, man. Just send out like 15 horsemen, and that will cripple Nomad. Nomad is heavily relying on trade right now. Without that trade, Nomad is just dead in the water, right? And Nanny's economy is exponentially better than Nomad, so in a sustained fight, Nanny should get it. Two hours and still no blacksmith upgrades on who? Who has no blacksmith upgrades? I'm looking. Hold on. Oh my god, Nanny! Nanny doesn't have blacksmith upgrades! 
Nanny! Nanny's playing very well. Just need to get those Blacksmith upgrades, you know? That's uh, certainly a tough one. Uh, so the English players just surge again, but the Abbasid defenders are at the ready. They got a lot, and uh, we'll see if they're going to win this fight. The English don't have their OP attack speed yet. We do see buildings getting torched down. Bombards are going to be... Look how well he's screening. So the English player moving his army in front of the cavalry to keep the artillery from getting dove, man. MLG plays all day, every day. Now, some of them do get caught, and the Longbows are going to be trying to get on top of them and save them. And they do manage to rally in front. And now I think we have our new Forever War. Um, they're going to be going at it once again. The English player trading pretty evenly, but making knights. I'm not a big fan of knights of Imperial Age. I find that Horseman Sam is more cost effective, and then you put your gold in like hand cannoneers and men at arms and things like that. But yeah, Nanny is just giving the dirty to um, to Nomad here. Looks like Nanny's Nanny's a strong, independent French French woman here. He he does not need any blacksmith upgrades. Okay, it looks like he started to get them now. So he was maybe just missing one. So he moves into old uh, Nomad's base. If he kills Nomad, that is the best play. If Nomad dies, you wonder, and you got two beat up players in the north to deal with, right? Dude, they're a, they're a ball chads. They're doing such such good damage. Look at this army just getting mowed down. Because Rabal chads have a ton of melee armor, uh, so they're very tough to kill up close. And at range. I mean, they're just overall pretty tough to kill. Usually horsemen are, well, no, horsemen, I guess, bring alts and mangoes, things like that, or what do the trick. This army is sauce. Um, Nomad is looking like he's pretty dead. I mean, he's got 900 wood and 100 something gold. His trade is barely going. And if Nanny just keeps pedal to the metal, um, we're also probably going to be seeing Ventus struggle. But Ventus will last a while longer, for sure. Where is Wang? I don't know if Wang played today. You know, we did it during the work week, so a lot of people, um, you know, unless they had the day off or they work, you know, different schedules, it's tough for them to make. A lot of hand cannoneers coming in, so Ventus' army is pretty good quality still, but Ventus is almost out of gold. 1700 right here <clears throat> as the battle rages on. And we see Nanny going for the tactical finish of Nomad. Maybe gonna get it. Yeah, Nomad does not have the spring alds, nor does he have the wood. He's got two on wood right now, which is brutal. Um, Nanny's got, yeah, those are Balkwins and that siege advantage is pretty good. He does have the Jesus juice here, though. The prelates are gonna be providing the power of Christ to these soldiers. We'll see if it saves them. They have their uh, the thoughts and prayers are with their soldiers, so we'll see if it works. Just like real life. On the other side, we have the elite gulams, and the uh, they're changing their Facebook profile pictures in support of this crisis. Bombard, spring alts, culverins, even though they're not designed to kill infantry in that kind of numbers, they can still kill quite a few, quite a few infantry as well. Yeah, if Professor Pwn was here, this game would have been over a long time ago. Yeah, the Golden Shogun would have swept over the realm with the tide of golden, uh, golden power. Nanny, Nanny does have very rough supply lines, but in many ways is farming this army. Oh, don't lose John Dark. Okay, John Dark does maneuver. The artillery needs to pull back and get a little bit of milk right now because they're going to potentially get compromised here. I don't know how Nomad's even affording to send shit out. Like, his economy is just, like, barely alive here. And the English are preparing for round 10. Round 500 fight. He's, he always goes for three bombards. He never brings more than three. If he had brought, like, seven bombards here, he probably would have killed Nomad earlier. But Nanny Micro's back. Nanny might need better supply lines, although it's not too bad. Arbalists will also be really good here because of their um, anti men at arm and anti-melee profiles. Like, going mass arbs would probably be the way. But Nomad, with some good consolidating of uh, the military here, is able to advance. And, uh, you know, the players need to do some tertiary raiding, man. Nomad could be shut out of this game so easily if he just got his trade. I, and I'm, I know Nanny knows he's trading over there. They made, like, a deal early as well. All right, so back up top, the English are going to be uh, grinding into the uh, Ventus once more. Ventus sitting at 76 military, the English player probably sitting at a little more. Yeah, 115. His army looks bigger. Uh, no tower from the English, though? Okay, there are some towers coming up finally, and uh, the battle is on, so they're going to be clashing here. Bombard's moving into Ventus's land as Nanny does resurge, but Nanny lost most of that artillery corps, which is not good. Not good at all. Where are the horsemen? Yeah, where are the horsemen at? None of these players are using horsemen except Ventus. He's really the only one. Scatterbrain moves across, intercepts here. English army should win this fight. Longbows are actually exceptionally good against hand cannoneers. They, they do pretty well. Uh, but two cannons are going to go down here. Hand cannoneer legion mowing down the men-at-arms in the front very, very well. Scatterbrain could be getting tired. I don't know where he lives. I think he might live in Eastern Europe. Um, so it could be getting a little bit late for him. So perhaps fatigue is set again, and this is where the uh, the gold champs can uh, can come back and fight, right? When the Conqueror players, the old crusty Conqueror Millennials, get tired, you can come back and uh, try and push. 
Scatterbrain's eco's okay. He's got good food and good wood. Ventus's eco uh, is looking great. It's actually very nice. He, he's being allowed to keep this uh, this trade. I mean, we got like Utopia over here. Everybody's like trading and being happy together. Naniori has moved back into Nomad's land. Uh, the forever war continues. Nomad's uh, eco, dude, he's like sustaining with like barely like 500 wood in the bank. Like it's just nonstop, nonstop. All right, so here comes Megan Ells to counter the Bob of Hand Cannoneers. That's going to be very good. Surprised we're not seeing more ramp signing. We haven't seen too much ramp signing today. Like, if the English player just set up like 12 siege workshops here and built like 15 rams and then like just charged, I feel like he could overwhelm Ventus. I feel like he does. Nanny does have cross map trade. Yeah, Nanny's going balls deep on the cross map trade. So Nanny's definitely looking to be a favorite right now, but we'll have to see. The English player may eventually win this fight. Oh, that's going to do some damage. Oh, blast that blob of hand cannoneers. And pulls back. And is there going to be a keep getting set up? It doesn't look like it. English Tower is not built close enough, man. A little bit of a weird misplay here from such a high-level player. Definitely need to see more towers up in the front. All right. So, once again, they just bash into one another. Not a whole lot of progress being made. Nanny, though, seems to be taking some ground against Nomad. Slowly but surely, the Rebalquins and the Artillery Advantage is making a big difference in these fights. Is Nomad supply blocked again? He's not. Nomad sitting on 1700. Very, very... If Nomad takes one more bad fight and loses decisively against his French army, he's going to just have a terrible time. Nanny Ori moving up the Rebalquins, which is good. Um, TC going to get popped. The other TC will probably follow shortly after. He pulls back in. But yeah, Nanny seems to be winning this conflict. Obviously, with cross-map trade, Nomad shouldn't have too many chances. All right. So Bombards and Mangonels blasted away. I think the English might have finally gotten some uh, killing momentum here with those three mangonels uh, dealing with most of the handgunners, actually. It's very nice. And look at the bank, though, of Ventus. Ventus's gold bank is pretty good still. He's got a good passive gold from that trade. Abbasid have a lot of trade upgrades, actually. They can get, like, better trade, and they can bring back a secondary resource. There's lots of things that they do very, very well. So they're rolling, rolling, rolling. And we are going to see the Minework Palace going down here. The French army is looking a little bit too Giga Chad. Um, are we going to be seeing horseman spam? We do see a culverin coming out. The culverin on the western flank is good, but man, that that order army gets massacred by Rebalquins. They're such a good counter against him, right? Like HRE loves to spam those juicy infantry. Oh man, John de Arc just killing those culverins. Look at that. She hits pretty hard, right? She's like a siege man. She does 42 damage. I guess it's not too insane. But that landmark's going to go down here. We do see the Culverins forming ranks here. Nanny Yori does not quite get the Burger Palace, but is getting close. Reinforcements coming from across the map. Uh, Nomad barely has anything. Jean d'Arc is going to come in and try and take down these uh, these cannons here. Unfortunately, though, the Rebalquins do get popped in the face, and so too do the cannons. Nomad losing a lot of stuff. Nomad's bank. Let's look. He's currently very poor. He's got, like, no gold left. He's going to have to start making spears is not going to be fun and uh, the French do run out of artillery here though so they might not be able to get through the walls on the last landmark but Nanny is basically farming this uh, player right now and the English player finally making ground he's setting up a forward tower which is good so well played to Scatterbrain he's corrected that mistake and then uh, there's going to be some heavy wondering it's 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 wonder well dude we're going to be listening to some uh, oasis here in a minute you guys remember oasis they were, yeah, it's weird. I guess they were more popular in the uh, in the UK, right? In Europe and stuff. They were pretty popular in the US. I remember hearing Wonderwall on the radio and like um, Champagne Supernova and like some of those songs. Yeah. But uh, definitely more popular in the UK. So cannons are going to be cleaning out the periphery. Meanwhile, he's just sniping a lot of the troops here. He's got his archer legions. Um, some basic, honestly, static cannon towers would be really good. If you put a little bit of stone into this and just made a cannon placement, and uh, that would give you a really sustainable spot. Good horseman sniping by Ventus. He's hunting down the cannons, but if the cannons sit under the longbows, they should be more or less safe. And the English uh, do have that infinite gold cheat code, right? Which is very, very good. So Nanny's got their Balkans coming up. Nanny not investing in forward supply lines. Uh, Nanny could, honestly. Nanny could go up here and... Uh, what is the stone being used for? Is there... Oh, yeah. The French entrenchments. Let's go, baby. So we see keeps, keeps, uh, keeps. And where are the other keeps at? I guess... I guess that was... Is that it, really? There should be more keeps, right? Where's Nanny Yori Stone at? The Guild Hall is currently sitting on uh, 14,000. Okay, that's where it is. So it's going to be ready to go. I can see Nanny wondering after this. Yeah, Nanny's push did stall, yes, but it's going to come back for round 10. And if Nanny sees Ventus die, then I think Nanny wonders. Like, because Nomad is very weak right now. He's very beat up. Um, but shout out to Nomad for lasting this long, dude. He has lasted all freaking day. 
Uh, he's, he's been on death's bad three or four times, and uh, yeah, it's been pretty impressive. So here they come. The bombards of Great England for the Queen being chased down by the horsemen and the ghoulams. But he's getting danger close. I mean, you can see how much ground the Abbasid have lost, right? And the Abbasid's eco is looking very good still. They're, they're holding on incredibly well. But those bombards clearing out quite a bit, and the English army just uptrading super hard into this war. Super hard. Yeah, the Guildhall production was cut in half, but despite that, you know, it's still very good. I mean, he just collected. Okay, he just collected. Nani Yori probably prepping for a wonder. I'm going to wait for Scatterbrain to get in there and finish off Ventus, which I think is going to happen soon. Ventus is struggling in a lot of these trades, although the Culverin plays might be able to buy him some time. Uh, Nanny also pressuring Nomad, which is good. Keeping Nomad weak so that when you drop your inevitable wonder is, is a great play. So Nomad trying to outflank. He's trying to get on the Culverins, obviously. And their Vulcans are going to be chasing him down. A couple of those bad boys do try and juke across, but they're going to get the dirty here from the Revulcans pretty hard. The English army pulling their cannons back, or no, they got culverned. Okay, so the English culverins, or the Abbasid culverins, were able to melt them. Very, very nice. We did see the keep almost getting torn down. House of Wisdom is visible. Uh, English players are going to be calling in more. Uh, yeah, why are they not Ramsteining more? Oh no, do we have a crash? No, not like this. Not like this. Am I crashed, or are they crashed? Okay, hopefully we didn't crash. Oh, thank the Dark Gods. Okay. I was like, I was like, dude, if we crash after this sweaty of a final, I would be so sad. Like, if the players crashed. Not me, because I could just rejoin the game, but... So yeah, once again, Nanny Ori with a victorious engagement over Nomad. Nomad's very tattered, you know. He's just kind of working with his haggard trade. Pwned, you don't laugh at that, bro. Don't you laugh at that. Why would you laugh at that? He's setting up a lot of towers. Where are the battering ram spam, by the way? You gotta be spamming those rams. No, we're good. We're good. We're, it was close. And Homs has left the game? What? Did he crash too? No way. So Scatterbrained, he either left because he was sick of that shit or he just, or he crashed. I think his internet faltered. Oh my god. The internet claiming three players here today. Let me check in Discord. Oh my god. That's so rough, dude. Oh, after all that, he crashed. Oh, no, we're, we're not restarting, dude. We're in it. Internet is part of it. When you're joining these events, internet is part of it. you got to have your internet in check, man. All right, the internet has claimed three. The crash is his finals. I know, it's been very unfortunate. He crashed, I know. He's in Belarus. It's 3.30 a.m. for him. <laughs> maybe, maybe he just left. I don't know if he crashed or he, he left. Because for him, it's 3.30 in the morning is what Chad is telling me. So he might need to just go to bed. It's a shame, though, because he was in a good position to win this. Um, now Nanny Yori's going to wonder. Oh, Nanny with the wonder. This is the most haggard finals ever, but I love it. Whatever. He might have left, too, guys. He might have left. I have no idea. He very, very well could have left. Got to have a tech team on standby. Yeah. All right, guys. So now it is a 2v1. It's going to be Ventus, who's basically palpatining on deathbed. Nanny Ori looking like they might win. Yeah, Nanny's got Nanny's got the, the schemes going, right? Like, Nomad is just like... <laughs> Nomad's got like two units coming at you right now. And Ventus is going to reroute down here. But like, Ventus is like... Been grinding with the English for a hundred years. Oh, this isn't an Applebee's gift card. This is like a straight up gift card, yeah. He definitely crashed. Uh, let's see if he did. Hang on, I'm gonna check in Discord. Uh, did he crash? I don't know. Tried too hard, my game crashed. Xeranium's game crashed, yeah. I don't know if, um... Hang on, I'm just checking Discord. Uh, what's his name, Scatterbrand? Sorry, I'm getting tired myself. Did you crash? Damn shame too, dude. He was playing so well. He was playing so incredibly well. Yeah, Nanny, I think, has got this game in the bag. Like, who the hell is going to kill Nanny here? I mean, the Abbasid has a good force, but they're they're having to make battering rams. And Nomad might be able to try some weird, sneaky tactics. But I think Nanny's got this one. Like, Nanny, how much excess stone does Nanny have? Not too much, but building keeps around here. Definitely, yeah, yeah, this is good. Like, build so no boats can land here. But someone could try a sneaky, like, landing force with trebuchets here. That's what the dreaded allied treks would do, you know. Nomad is just so beat up, dude. 
He is just like, he has been just getting absolutely ravaged this game. <laughs> but he lives, baby, he lives. All right, so I'm gonna minimize it a second. We do see clearing out the infrastructure here and uh, checking Scatterbrain. I don't know if he crashed, what a shame. What a shame, man. Imagine if Nanny crashes and we just have a haggard battle between Nomad and Ventus. That would be pretty funny, actually. Uh, nice engagement there. The Gilded Knights do take down the uh, the big boys. It's for all the marbles, baby. Nanny's Nanny's coming for the dub. Now, what does the angle look like? It's not that far, but the Abassa don't have the forward infrastructure. And they have 25,000 wood. They should definitely set up right here. Because the forward infrastructure is going to cost him quite a bit. Nomad didn't hear no bell, though. He's trying, dude. He's like the Homer Simpson meme. <clears throat> oh, his internet died. So, Gunhound, you're telling me that Scatterbrain's internet just straight up died? What a shame, dude. What a shame. Yeah, he was playing well. Uh, Terran, you're gonna jinx it now. N Nanny, Nanny's internet is next. Everyone's internet is gonna die to just lengthen the game to the maximum amount. Yeah, it could be. All right, so Rams are knocking on Heaven's door. Meanwhile, we do see the Jean d'Arc, the markswoman, controlling the lands. Nomad just with like eight units on the battlefield right now, trying to help. But the Abbasid do have some decent power. And dude, isn't it crazy that Xerenium has literally had Nanny Ori on death's bed twice and didn't finish the job? Yeah, that, and the, it's just how that molded the fate. You know, it's like some cataclysmic event in history. One defining moment has led to this. And now the great French are back in business. Down on the south side, Nomad's probably going to try and push down here with what little Ramstein he can do. Nomad's eco is pretty, pretty janky. Yeah, I mean, he's got good food per minute. His wood's back online too, and a little bit of gold from trade, so I guess it could be worse. Uh, turn scatter. Could have run, uh, uh, could have run a foul of, yeah. Oh, really? Interesting. That's a, that's a, that's tough. Yeah, Scatterbrain was looking really good. I, I honestly had him as a potential winner. He had 6,000 stone at the bank. If he could have killed Ventus, and then they could have... They would have had to deal with Nanny's Wonder. But if they dealt with Nanny's Wonder, then we would have probably seen a victory from the English. So he was really a contender in this game. But now I think Nanny's got a pretty solid defense here. Do we see any villagers? I think we're going to see the dock. Oh, hold up. Hold up, guys. Hear me out. You build f four docks here. You fully upgrade a navy. You get like 12 warships. You kill the wonder, bro. Oh my god. That is so powerful. If Nomad realizes that that is possible, this is totally winnable. I did not notice that. Because Nanny's going to be probably more grinding here with the forces of the Abbasid. For now. But Nomad could easily do that. We see a couple rams coming. Look, the rams are helping. Ventus's rams are going to knock down the walls here. I'm telling you, this is a, this is the forbidden play. Right here, this is the forbidden tech. We got Jean's elite champions here. They're going to come and meet their doom. Trying to take down a battering ram. Nomad even using his haggard villager daggers to try and kill them. We'll see if it gets the job done. And uh, yeah, I'm telling you, go navy. Don't mess with anything else. Go full navy here. That's the way. If you get a couple big warships out, like, you know, 12 of them, they, like you're going to be able to potentially knock down Notre Dame pretty well. Looking at the Wonder Tracker, though, he's probably probably making some good progress here. Let's see. Currently sitting at 9 minutes and 30 seconds. The Abbasid player uh, got pushed back pretty damn hard. So that means that Nanny's going to be able to focus most of his efforts on a Nomad here. But it's time, dude. <laughs> the firm hand of Lukashenko batted him down his prime. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Do they, they have, so they have internet curfews, huh, in Belarus? Hmm. MG, thanks for becoming a channel member. Thank you, thank you. And uh, we do see the Elite Royal Knights getting speared down, trickling in, taking some big L's as they move in. Greatly appreciate that, MG. Thank you for supporting the multiplayer tournament in our Age of Empires community. Helps a lot. Helps me pay the old prize pool for today as well. Looks like Nanny's going to be collecting that one, though. Uh, Nomad does have some supply lines, I think. Yeah, he's got, like, some production here. So he's able to make some units, and he's honestly trading pretty well into Nanny. Um... The Abbasid army is going to be pouring back in, but oh, Nanny walls him out at the last second. Oh, the MLG walls. Okay, there's more openings here as well. There's more as well. So the wall's coming up here, and we do have the old siege workshops producing, but I don't see either of these guys making too much ground. Nanny Yori's just too chad. He's here with 
just a big, big, good quality army. The Abbasid, like, were caught in such a grind forever, too. It was rough. Imagine reconnect mechanic was in there, three players come back. All of a sudden, yeah, like, your Avity appears, like, at his, like, TC up here. That would be really funny. Yeah, reconnect mechanic would be really good. I would love that. That would be super nice for our events. Although, disconnects aren't very common, honestly. Um, we don't really have too many disconnects. It's not, like, a common thing. A couple of Bassett Horsemen moving in, but I think I think Nomad's kind of just, like, out of steam. Nandy Ori's defending on both sides very well. Uh, we see a couple of Gilded Land Snakes moving in, some Gilded Spears. I don't see him doing too much here, man. It's going to be a bit of an issue for them. He's trying to set up, and Nandy's going to keep chasing him back to the shadows. Nomad needs to get on the water here. If Nomad can get on water and build some warships, dude, he could totally stop this wonder. But that's easier said than done. Nandy's pretty privy to this, but I, th I think it's possible, honestly. Like, Nomad could also do a trebuchet drop, like, uh, go here and land here and eat the tower shots for a second and get, like, 12 trebs. You know, that could be the case. Nanny, for the most part, winning the fight against the Abbasid. The Abbasid retreating with all their siege engines, so... Nanny's army is very strong, and look at all the Jean's elite champions. How cool is that? What do they actually do differently than regular men-at-arms, the Jean's champions? So, they do bonus for a spearman, that's what it is. Which is pretty cool. So not only are they men at arms, but they're also good at killing spearmen, which makes sense. They're going to be protecting the French cavalry. Nandiori with a good hold here. We see there are Balkwins blasting away. A very sweaty two and a half hour game. This game has been incredibly sweaty. Um, and yeah, is he gonna is he gonna be able to get that naval play going? He needs to go navy. Nomad needs to go. Nomad has he scouted? Uh, does he know? Yeah, Nomad knows there's water here, and he knows the wonders here. So if his old the gears in his old head are turning, uh, he should think he should be aware that there's a chance of that, right? He's trying to get this up, building some spring alds. Spring alds will be okay against the Rebalquins spam. I, Nanny actually has sh been showing me how good the Rebalquins can be. Granted, it's easier to make Rebalquins look good when you have cross map trade because they're really expensive, so you can actually afford to mix them into your armies. But over here on the top, the Abbasid Haggard Legion is here. Nine trebuchets, not going to be able to get through this wall. And uh, Nanny's probably all in now. Not quite all in. Uh, doesn't have any wood or gold allocations, but still has 38. But the military's got to be very, very big. So Nomad grinding forth, and the Wonder Tracker is setting at 5 minutes and 56 seconds. Not too long, guys. Not too long at all, as the old Spring on Towers continue to poke away. We need to get these European connections figured out. If, Nan if Nanny's West Virginia internet can handle this. I know they have no excuses. Uh, to be fair, it's just... Um, yeah, Zeranium... Where were you at, Zerinium? Are you in Europe as well? I don't think I've like ever just dis I've disconnected maybe twice in FFA games over like four years or three years, whatever, however long the game's been out. It's not very Yeah. The servers are usually pretty stable. It just comes down to the individual's internet. Sometimes it's when people their game crash if they have a weak computer and they end up playing in a really laggy FFA. That can definitely crash people as well. Yeah. So Nanny's chilling out here. And the Abbasid are getting a little sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. No, they're not going to be able to reach quite from there. They're trying to weasel their way around here, which I love. So they're going to knock down these walls, and then they're going to come through here. Uh, and man, Nanny's been cross-map trading for so long. That's been so good and tasty. Yeah, very, very good indeed. So Manganel's shooting away. A little bit of progress is being had. We do see Nanny's army is faltering slightly. Uh, the naval play, though, not being done by Nomad is a huge mistake. He's trying to do the traditional siege, which, like, look, if you're sieging a French player, although there's not very many keeps here, actually, this is kind of a weird weakness. Surprised we didn't see a delete on these and, like, build a bunch of keeps right here, because um, that's clearly where Nomad would attack from, but not the end of the world. Um, the Trebs are coming, man. Yeah, villagers are uh, going to be trying to wall these out. I do like the sneaky sneaky here. This is very good. Oh, but the backside flank is easily going to shut those down. Gulams are pretty good DPS, but you'll get outtraded by a more diverse army that has like hand cannons and revolquins and all that good stuff like that. So you're in Europe, says Zeranium. Got it, got it. Hey, he knocks down another wall there. Gatehouse getting popped in the face, but the traps are not going to be long for this world. Nomad's still stuck at the gate. Three minutes. Man, get the boats. Get the boats, dude. I'm telling you, Nomad. I know you're not watching the stream, which I greatly appreciate, but you got to get that going, man. You got to get it going. This has been a really good game, though. Despite the disconnect, so many players have been, like, close to death this game. Like, so many players have just been, like, on the precipice of death, and they, they just come back. It's, it's absolutely wild. All right. <laughs> kind of weird. No, Nanny hosting on his West Virginia internet is killing... No, it doesn't work that way. See, in Age of Empires, we have servers. So the players will connect to a server um, to play. So, so clearly, that is going to be uh, pretty okay. 
So it does, it's not a peer-to-peer -peer connection like Total War. I know we're all used to suffering on this channel and playing Total War games, but that's not how it works here. So a lot of Manganels, but unfortunately Nomad gets caught out and the men at arms get on top of them. Uh, he's going to be making more mangoes. Nomad needs to play water. Okay, he's finally playing water, but he has no upgrades. That probably needed to start a long time ago uh, for that to work. The yeah, Abbasid push on the flank does get compromised, but they make a little bit of progress. You know, they punch their way in, and he's got bombards coming, but not much of an army to support it, which is a bit of a problem. And Nomad is able to clean up that army, and uh, what are we going to be getting? Karax? A Karak with no upgrades, though. It doesn't have any armored hull. No swivel cannons. Um, you know, you need to get all those if you can. Okay, Nomad's finally figuring it out at the two-minute mark. Is it going to be enough? Probably a little bit too late. But the boat here will be able to help uh, fight on land. We see the Gilded Men at Chads on their way in. Bombard Cannon trying a little sneaky flank here, but they're going to have a bad time. At this point, you just snipe whatever you can. Like, snipe some artillery. Just trying to help. Rewalled. Very, very good. And uh, Ventus loses the RD. Yeah, those Bombards don't make it too far. They don't make it too far, guys. And looking here, looks like it's a cleanup. The boats were the right play. If he had done it down here earlier, like, that would have been a potential GG. He could have won that. The Wonder Tracker is sitting at two minutes, so we can do a little fast-forwarding, actually, since the game is slightly ahead of us by about 30 seconds. Uh, Nomad does get his boats here, but he's only got two. Uh, he did not build more boats. Man, this would have been such a clean win for him. Uh, Nomad could have easily killed that Wonder, because look at the opening here. He can straight up shoot it from there. So if he had, like, 12, 10, 12 boats, he kills this, and then he just kills the Wonder. Uh, looking at the base here, we do see Naniori losing a landmark. The College of Artillery does go down. Wonder Trick uh, trackers at a minute and 16 seconds. We're about to catch up to the live state of the game. And here we are, we're live. He's got him in the choke point, but Naniori, congratulations, man. Doing very well. Good FFA instincts, good scheming this game. Nani played uh, very well. Very good, very good survival and politicking to, you know, Nani basically pleaded for mercy and was granted the mercy by another player and then capitalized on that politicking to win the game, right? Which is very good. Like, that's, that's incredible. Like, myself, I probably wouldn't have pleaded for mercy. I would have probably just tried to fight to the death and just, you know, and then I would have lost the game. But in this case, Nanny was able to politic earlier and have a very good defense, too, on top of that. So shout out to Nanny. Yeah, the boats, the boats are there. We see the Abbasid trying to push in the back, but not quite able to get in. 26 seconds is going to be the end of the road. And the Abbasid player with good pressure, mind you, but not quite able to get in there. Nanny's Wonder, wait, Nanny's Wonder is under attack from what? Oh, there was a wild boat. Okay, so there was a boat there that was able to uh, get in range. Yeah, walls being secured, ramps being built. Six seconds. GG, well played. Nanny Ori is our victor in today's FFA tournament. Gonna be winning that sweet $50 cash prize. So uh, hopefully, you know, take 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 your take your brother Sai out for dinner. Go have a nice, you know, grab a beer, have a dinner with your brother Sai. You know, enjoy the spoils of victory. That wasn't even a, fr a corner spawn, though. That wasn't even a good spawn um, from Nanny. So... Jesus Christ, that game. Let's look at the kills. Um, yeah, Scatterbrain killed the most, hands down. Uh, Ventus was pretty close, but Scatterbrain was like Helm's Deeping back there. Never show mercy. The first rule of any FFA. I oh, know. GG, well played. Great game. GG, Nanny. Applebee's, here we come, baby. Applebee should sponsor us, you know. They should. Uh huh. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, he, he, he did disconnect here as well. Let's see what he said. No, my internet died. No. Oh, he's talking about it. GG, guys. Super fun. We'll have another one next week. I'll do one on a weekend, though, because I know it was tough for a lot of people to make it today, but I'm still happy we got 32 players to show up. That's, like, great. But if we could get 64, that's the sweet spot, because then we can have eight player pods and have it truly be sweaty. All right, guys. Take care of yourselves. I appreciate you all. Congratulations to Nanny Yori. Absolute beast mode. And we'll see you on the other side. I'm going to go hang out with my smoking hot wife and watch Dune. We're going to go see Dune tonight. So pumped for that. Got a little bit of a boner for that. Very excited. And uh, that's it. Adios. Dovi Zenya. <laughs> Nomad says that was pain. I know, Nomad. You were really getting it pretty rough there, dude. All right. Take care of yourself, guys. See you next time. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. Adios. Yeah, Anatan also could have won that game. If Anatan had just killed Nomad when he had him dead, and then he wondered, he probably would have won. And if he had hit a landmark, but he didn't do that. So, you know, mistakes were made, and they were capitalized on. All right, guys. See you later. Adios. It was really fun. You want the Dean scream? There you go. All right, guys. See you around. Take care of yourselves. 
And that's going to be it for tonight. And make sure to drop a like on the stream on the way out. It really does help a lot. GG. See you guys.